Block 1. This is an audiobook by Zephyr Odin Audiobook. Zephyr Audiobook. Zephyr Prime Audiobook. Join my Discord. Link below. Also visit my other YouTube channel. Share, like and subscribe. Please support the author, artist, translator, editor and publisher so that they can provide us more of these stories. Let's help them. Audiobook. Villainous and Grimo I by White Sculptor. A peculiar occurrence happened in the goddess Arya realm. Inside such a vast, almost infinite place, mainly white rooms could be found where only servants lived while working for long periods of time. In one of these, there was a peculiar, lazy subordinate who was assigned with a dose of work too great for one to manage alone. This happened very frequently as the goddess made her servants overwork themselves, without giving any assistance whatsoever due to being lazy herself. This soul is proving to be incredibly hard. Tougher than expected, the being exasperated harshly. I'm already late again. How come this girl's soul has brought something so troublesome attached? Upon the conflicted situation, he scratched his head while reaching a quick and simple solution. Well, whatever really, don't want to be reprimanded by the goddess Arya again for being late with my daily quota. Sometimes I receive threats about my soul getting extinguished. He looked at the big white gate next to the table in front of him, where the soul was placed on. Their system shall handle it in my place. This way I'll be able to finish in time and if necessary. I can always blame another god for whatever happens. Knowing the goddess had natural enemies, the man smiled to himself unknowingly at the consequences this would bring to the world of Artana, pushing the soul into the reincarnation portal. System working, inspecting first soul. 50% reincarnate detected. 100% conferring two random skills to it. Success. Inspecting the attached soul. 50% curse detected. Error. Splitting souls before reincarnation. Error. Soul size has increased significantly. Looking for an alternate option. Success. Creating an item from the system library. Success. Sealing the second soul into it. Success. Implementing the first soul into a vessel. Success. Iris. Sealing new vessel's memories related to the second soul. Success. Sealing the item into the vessel. Success. A voice barely audible popped in the baby's mind waking her up from the darkness. System. The title reincarnated has been received. A familiar sound reached her tiny ears. A crying one along with a loud old man's voice. It's a girl. The village doctor declared while holding her in his hands after having evaluated the gender and cleaning the baby's face with a piece of white clothing drenching it in red. While the face is entirely cleaned, a soft sensation rubbed softly on the baby's eyelids, and upon the removal of the bloody clothing, the eyes opened. Who are you? Why are you touching me? I can't seem to be able to let my voice go. The old white-haired man with a similarly toned beard cleaned the rest of the body, and then placed her on the mother's chest. The blonde-haired woman looked exhausted but happy while staring at the baby with two soft brown eyes. She then opened her pinkish lips to voice an unexpected compliment. You're so beautiful my little baby. Quite similar to me. What's going on? Now I'm facing a woman. Who's this person calling someone a baby? The brown-haired husband looked at the newborn daughter, through similar toned eyes next to the wife while adding. Indeed, she has a little blonde hair like you. Rosalind my love, congrats on becoming a mother. He smiled at her while passing his hand softly on the wife's right cheek who in response leaned the face comfortably with a smile while responding. Thank you, and congrats on becoming a dad. They traded a smile and then a soft kiss rewarding one another with some love. The man then adjusted his position and noticed something peculiar. He then lowered his head to confirm some suspicions while fixing the gaze on the baby's face doing a thorough inspection. Hmm? Strangely our baby has green eyes. Haven't seen anyone with such a color before? Other than the almighty saintess of course. How peculiar must be from a very old generation from one of us. He traded some looks with the doctor who became slightly interested and then with the wife who made a surprised expression before speaking. Do you think so honey? I don't really remember my grandparents having green eyes unless it was their parents whom I didn't meet. I'm not too sure either. Upon the couple's responses, the doctor decided to add an extra something to relax them. There's nothing wrong with her eyesight. 
and having green eyes, the same as the saintess must be a good omen. The two of them nodded and then all the nine eyes gazed upon the baby which allowed the parents to feel pride from such words. Father. Mother. Then who is the person holding me? Some baby doctor or something? Where the heck am I? What the hell is going on? The baby thought clueless and confused with the current situation while the soul fitted inside the tiny body merging with it completely. It further gave her the ability to feel and use the five senses fully, as much as a baby can use them at least. Both hands slowly passed in front of her eyes involuntarily as they moved randomly. Are these my hands? They are so small. I can't really control them. Ah, it's like they're moving on their own. Are they perhaps? I can't seem to get a grasp of the movement of the body properly. She attempted to move the different parts of the body failing miserably. Nothing does what I want it to. And why am I a baby? Was I given another life? I don't even remember dying on my past one. Just what happened? How did I end up in this crazy situation? Rosalind touched the baby cheek softly with a finger while making a kind smile attempting to calm my body who seemed to be agitated along with a soft sweet tone. There, there, everything is all right my dear baby. The father held the mother's other hand with a similar expression to match hers. I suppose these truly are my parents. My new parents? They look rather happy. The last thing I remember was me trying to enter the attic of my old house. And then, I don't know. The baby eyes moved from the beautiful mother's light tan skin towards the darker one of the fur there while fighting her fuzzy mind. Can't seem to remember the rest. It feels hazy whenever I try. I guess something happened where I ended up dying perhaps. Maybe I went into the attic and fell hurting myself somewhere. Instead of that, perhaps got kidnapped into this world? Maybe my soul alone was transferred here? She then noticed a shelf with very few but familiar items on it further away near the wall, situated opposite of the parents' bed. Maybe someone used magic from the stories of my books. And I ended up here as a baby. I really have no clue. Since I have different parents, it means I didn't go back to the past, nor traveled somewhere in time. I was just born again. The doctor noticed that the mother and the child's condition were fine interrupting the little one thoughts. Everything's done on my side. Your wife just needs to rest now Luke. The old man picked his bag while speaking with a serious yet amiable tone, giving some peace of mind to the baby. I'm glad this time round there were no casualties. Back then in my past life, my mother died soon after giving birth to me. It was horrible. My noble father hated me for it, ending up marrying a vile noble woman whose children turned out to take after her. As a result, I was mistreated by them every day. In ways that I rather not think further so that I don't remind myself of them. Thank you so much, Doctor. The further replied happily with a big smile while using a finger passing it softly on Rosalind's cheek giving her some warmth, comfort, and happiness. Seems like this man truly is a baby doctor. Thank you for the help, I suppose. You welcome Luke. Now be a good dad. I'll be taking the dirty clothes, you can handle the sheets. The doctor smiled and then gazed upon the woman after hearing her voice. Thank you very much Dr. Vincent. I'm truly grateful for everything. Rosalind started tearing up happily placing her right hand in front of her mouth unable to add any other word. Take good care of yourself, Rosa. I'll be taking my leave now, still have some appointments to do. We'll see each other at the potion shop in some months. The old man changed the shift of his gaze, this time towards the baby father. All right boss. We'll meet you as soon as possible. Luke replied eagerly to go back to work while looking at the newborn attentively. The doctor grinned cheerfully, waved goodbye, and left with big steps. Seems like they work for this old man Vincent a baby doctor. At some potion shop, whatever that may be. Rosalind. The father looks at the wife with sparkling eyes causing the woman to grow in confusion. As she was not expecting such behavior from him. Yes, Luke, what's wrong? Nothing is. But, what are you naming her? The man's eyes became full of expectation upon noticing a small smile from the wife, making a kind smile of his own. Hum, I wonder which name should I take? Since we compromised, I'd name the baby if it was a boy and you'd name otherwise. After some time passed with the husband looking at both and the mother at the baby's A's she came up with a decision. Hey Luke, I've decided on a name for our daughter. 
I'll call her Iris. The mother smiled while holding her comfortably, without thinking too much as the name insisted on replacing all others inside Rosalind's mind. How is that possible? What are the odds she picks the name I had in my past life? It's hard to believe this is a coincidence. Maybe it's the work of whoever made me a baby. Does this perhaps mean that someone did bring me here? That's an adorable name honey. A calm tone resumed it from the man, soothing the wife and especially the baby who seemed rather energetic. A bit more time passed and Iris started growing tired, fighting to keep her eyes open. I'm starting to feel rather sleepy. I estimate babies don't have much stamina to start with. Not as I had much back then on my past life, always being starved by my family, makes me sad just thinking about it. They looked in my direction while appreciating me, as my body decided to give it a rest. Iris looks comfortable in your arms dear. Indeed Luke. She looks so adorable. System working. Register complete. Sending information into the baby's mind. Welcome to the world of Artana. You have been gifted with two random skills from the goddess library. Your mana will be sealed till the human ceremony at the age of seven. Enjoy your new life. The baby suddenly became a tad more energetic surprising both parents. Wait who are you? Skills? Goddess? Mana? Sealed? Where am I? Is this a new world or my old one? Second life in a new place perhaps? Hello? Can you hear me? Hi. Hey. No use not getting any answer. Almost as she was about to give up the last thought tree started before she fell asleep. Hello? Anyone listening? Was worth a try. Too bad it didn't work. What do I do now? I suppose I can't do anything as I am now. I'll have to wait till I grow up. Saintess perspective. Around the same time, in a different place inside a church, a twenty-year-old green-haired woman can be found in bed asleep. In the church since ancient times, four ranks are used to show and differentiate the authority of the people who serve the goddess. Starting from the lowest ones, the priests, then bishops, archbishops, and the pope has the highest one. This woman, however, hosts a unique title. She's ranked higher as the kingdom's one and only saintess. Famous for possessing the blessed skill oracle, inherited from her mother the former owner of this title and class. This skill is known through the entire kingdom as a future vision granter through her dreams, however, it is not perfect since not all of them become true. And like any other day, this woman was having a nightmare, people dying peasants and nobles alike, eight million people within the Lumen Kingdom being massacred, an army with green flags, a vast one of countless black armored enemies. She woke up screaming and a priest who guarded the door outside barges inside yelling, Saintess, I heard some noise, is there an intruder? Are you okay? He gazed worriedly at the bed then everywhere else just in case. Ah, the Saintess looked around realizing everything was only just a nightmare. After some panting, she became calm rending up looking at the source of the voice finding a priest inspecting the room. The woman after regaining some air by breathing slowly ended up declaring fearfully. I, I've, I had a possible premonition. I understand Saintess, I'll wait for you outside. Comprehending that there was no enemy, the man moved outside closing the door, while the woman got up, changed clothes. From a white silk pajama to a long white cloth robe making her look like a nun. I sure hope it was a nightmare and not a premonition, otherwise, may the goddess drop by her realm to save us all. A fearful expression could be seen painted on her face as it could be a devastating future. After a while, the two of them head to the Pope's office. Once they arrive, the priest opens the door after knocking twice shouting loudly. Your Holiness, it seems something unexpected has happened. What happened priest? The Pope startled raised from the chair looking at the man and the saintess who barged into the room. Yes, the saintess woke up from one of those special dreams and, the priest looks at her expectantly without knowing what it was about. I probably had a bad premonition in my dreams. In them, our kingdom being attacked, eventually destroyed somewhere in the future. The woman looked at the floor with both hands still trembling. Our lumen kingdom will, is it the work of some demon lord or maybe a beast king? The Pope questioned worriedly trying to know more of it, as any additional information could make a big difference. At the very least, I believe it to be an invasion from a force with a great number wearing black armors. The priest while uneased commented, 
If the Saint Test dream is indeed true, then it could be the army of the demon race. They are known from their dark red armors. The Pope agreed with a small reply while putting the pieces together. That's quite possible. The old man then placed a hand on the chin, adding his own suggestion. It may be the armies of the beasts to the south. It wouldn't be a surprise as they've tried to invade us multiple times over the centuries. Yes, I'm not fully sure but I believe that happened not so long ago. The priest declared unsure, faintly remembering something about it in the archives. To that a calm yet sad tone left the Pope's mouth. Since our kingdom is located in the center of all the territories, protecting it is truly arduous. Perhaps even the kingdom located to the east past the great mountains. Their forces have been increasing for the past years. I believe the ogres wouldn't attempt to cross the mountains while fighting the golems. It would be incredibly hard. We'll need more information to prepare the church and the Lumen kingdom for what's to come. Go tell the other priests to investigate about the black armors. The priest bowed lightly and left the room. Well, we don't have enough information as it is. So for now if you may Saint Tess, take a seat and tell me all the details of your dream. Of course, she took a seat and started explaining every piece of it. Iris' perspective. A year passed since Iris's birth and the Saint Tess vision, which allowed the knowledge about the dream to spread even to the most remote churches of the kingdom. Located close to the southeast border of the Astia village, there is a small house, and in it lives Iris with her parents. Hey honey. While I was working in the village, a priest friend of mine told me about something important. Rosalind replied with a curious expression while watching me crawl on the floor of the living room towards her leg. Oh, what did he say, Luke? The father responded anxiously with a soft tone to not make the wife fret. It seems the saintess of our Lumen kingdom had a premonition that it would be destroyed in the future. The saintess? Who's that? Which kingdom is that? That's not the one I lived in my past life, and I've studied all of them, from all the books I read in that big library of my past father. I focused my best on this new piece of information, after all, I gathered as many as possible during the past year. That's terrible, especially since our saintess dreams tend to happen, so for just this one time, I hope it was only a nightmare. Rosalind expressed a worried expression as she looked at me using her leg to help me get up from the floor. Yeah, she usually doesn't fail, but I think that we should be fine nonetheless. You think so, honey? Yes, after all, we do live pretty far in the southeast side of the kingdom. I do hope so. I can't imagine anything happening to us Luke, especially towards our beloved daughter. Did I perhaps get reincarnated into a different world after all? I pondered deeply as a lot of things pointed that way, but not all of them since magic apparently existed in this world too. Don't worry love, I'll make sure to protect us. Luke hugged Rosalind making her feel secure, who was now holding me in the arms after picking my body up from the floor. My parents sure are lovely to one another, it really does make me happy. Honey come here. Luke winked at his wife with wild thoughts. Rosalind followed Luke while placing me in the nearest wooden cradle and then goes closer to him smiling. Ah! There they go again under the sheets, they're sure carefree. Faint kissing and moaning sounds could be heard for a while, and a while later. Ah! Ah! Yes, right there. Ah! Luke. Oh Rosalind. You feel pretty tight. I miss you every time. Ah! Luke. Don't say those things. You make me embarrassed, and the baby could hear. Don't worry honey. Here, Luke started striking harder disabling her of plausible thoughts. She's just a baby it's perfectly okay. Oh. Ah. Not like this, so rough. Rosalind who's below crossed her legs on Luke's back. You feel so good, honey, Luke stated with a passionate voice making her blush deeply. Ah. It's getting bigger allowing it to reach even deeper. If this keeps up. I'll. I. I'm. See coming. Rosalind. I love you. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. What am I hearing from these pervert parents? And what did father mean by that? Not like anyone's going to explain things to me. I've grown used to it. But I still wish I could talk with someone. I can barely say words with this body. It just doesn't keep up with me. Sometimes parents read books to me. I was able to see some words in it and the language seems to be the same one. I'll at least already know how to write and read. 
as well as math which will save me some time from learning. I've had the chance to learn etiquette from my past life, just hope it's the same in this world or close to it. I'll sadly have to keep on waiting till I grow up some more before I can do interesting things. Six long years pass and I'm now seven years old living in a different room which is the closest one to the house exit. The room is nothing special. It's medium sized with a wardrobe where my clothes are stored. A bed big enough for three of my figure to fit next to each other's. It has a small window on the white wall glued to my bed which is directed north enabling me to see who approaches the house entrance, and has a view to the green plains outside. There's a black curtain that I usually leave open as I enjoy to stare at the stars while I fall asleep, and it also helps me wake up with the sunlight. The floor is made of wood, oak type I believe that's what father once mentioned to me. Everything else is white the walls and the ceiling. The continuous sound of birds chirping at my window wakes me up. Is it morning? I rub my eyes and look around opening them slowly. I get up and as I do, I accidentally push my cloth doll down. It has been the gift I received for one of my birthdays. It is black ears and by that, I mean black stripes carefully stitched to the small head of it. A white bunny doll of sorts, with a black little nose and two similar brown buttons for eyes, and above them, on the forehead, it has a little grey bump. It falls and a small noise echoes through the room. Right after, I hear a voice. Hey Iris are you awake? Hum. I wonder what's going on. If you are come have breakfast with us, before your dad goes to work. I pick my doll and lay it on my bed. I put the white linens on top of it all the way to the neck and let it rest in my place. I stretch my arms upwards while yawning then I put on some normal clothes and put my pyjamas on top of the bed folded as best as I can. All right. I'm ready. I go to the door and open it. Two voices in unison echoed loudly in front of me. Happy seventh birthday Iris. Tears run down my face. Ah. I had totally forgotten about it. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Mom. I smiled greatly with all my heart bursting with joy. My parents hugged me tightly, and I hugged them back the best I could as my arms aren't long enough and didn't go around them allowing my hands to meet each other. These past seven years have been the best years I've ever lived. We have a surprise for you baby girl, mom said while happiness radiated from her. A surprise? I wonder what it could be. I giggled childishly acting like a big baby making them smile. Iris don't move. I see my mother taking a black cloth thing that slowly resembles a black bandana of sorts. Okay, mom. I smile as she places it around my eyes softly while dad holds my hair in a ponytail. My parents have been truly kind to me, and I've recovered a lot from that. Even though I've lived my past life till my 15 years, I'm still acting a bit like a soft child for their sake. I'm afraid they wouldn't cope with the fact I've reincarnated. And well I'm also their only child even though they've been trying for a long time to have more but it just didn't work out so far. Can you see anything Iris? Mother questions me happily with a big smile which I'm unable to notice. I can't see anything mum. I giggled while stretching my arms trying to find something to grab. Yes, my dear daughter it's a blindfold. Rosalind laughed happily. Come we have a surprise for you. I felt my hand being grabbed softly. Come, Iris. I heard dad's voice as he releases my blonde hair making it fall naturally to the sides. After we walk what feels like the outside of the house, and a bit further than that, I hear mother's voice. All right, here we are. Remove the blindfold, honey, leave it to me, replied Luke with a smile that I couldn't notice. Dad then whispers in my ear, are you ready baby girl? I nod in agreement making dad remove my blindfold, with the sunlight directly hitting my eyes, I open them carefully and when I do I'm unable to contain myself instantly letting out a smile. Happy birthday Iris, a lot of people from the nearest village where dad works were here to celebrate my birthday, as today it is a special one which I don't remember the reason why. Thank you, everyone, I smile kindly at them while blushing from all the attention I'm getting. One of the men patted the back of my dad, would you look at that, such a lovely young girl. It sure doesn't look like her father. The man joked at Luke teasing him as per usual. The man's wife joined the conversation and said, 
Well that's true but she does look up after her mother, they're both beauties. At their comments, I replied. We might not be alike but dad's the best father in the world. Suddenly I'm grabbed and lifted, ending up flying in the air. When I looked down, I saw my dad, he raised me a bit higher and started spinning me around while smiling happily. Seems like he enjoyed me protecting him. I match his smile without feeling sick from the spinning. When dad placed me back on the floor, the woman who complimented me and my mother approached and presented a gift box making me look curiously at it. Here dear, a little gift from the two of us hope you'll enjoy it. She smiled while extending the gift box in her hands. It's a heavy box. I replied while looking at her. Thank you though. Can I open it? You're very welcome and of course my dear, go for it. After opening the box, I pick the rectangular shaped item inside and take it out of the box. A nostalgic scent was picked by my nose, the scent of a book. I looked at it and read its title out loud. The Tales of Artana. Hey what's Artana? Iris. You can read? The lady that gifted me the book asked. Yes? I reply naturally forgetting that I haven't been taught beyond the basics of the words my parents would read at night. Most peasants generally don't learn reading till a lot of years later, if they learn at all. Seems like your parents have been teaching you rightfully. I look at my parents and see their surprised faces. I look at the lady who gave me the book and speak, is that your daughter? Yes, William please bring Elise closer for a minute. All right. Olivia. The man brought his daughter closer a black haired girl with black eyes like her parents. Say hi to Iris dear, she's seven years old today, three years younger than you. Hello Iris, she says shyly. Hi Elise, I reply smiling, did you like the gift? I picked it when I was shopping with my parents in the village. Yes, I love books, I reply with a big smile. You probably still can't read books too well without the help of your parents but I hope you like it when you do. Thank you. I reply happily, and we smile at each other. If one day you drop by the village, I'm usually playing by the garden that surrounds the fountain with other kids. Sure. If the chance occurs we'll meet. A voice pops into my mind. System, mana has been unsealed, skills status, and system library can now be used. That sure was a fun party, Rosalind said excitedly despite being tired of standing the whole day. Yes, it was very fun, I replied with a happy smile. After seven years you finally decide to talk? So, my dear daughter, is there anything else we should know aside from you being able to read? My dad asked. Ah, I placed my hands on my lap and started rubbing my thumbs at one another. It's obvious to us that you're trying to hide something from us but we're your parents you can trust in us baby girl. We're here for you. I see my mom kneel in front of me grabbing my hands with hers softly. I may be able to fully read and also write and do the math. My hands started trembling due to feeling anxious. My parents shouted, what? How? I stared at them surprised and fearful from their shout. Dad hid his face with his hand and started laughing. To think we had given birth to a prodigy Luke, mother said proudly with her eyes beaming with excitement. She must have been blessed by the goddess like some people are. Exactly. Since you already know so much we could start teaching you swordsmanship and magic instead. It is normal for the goddess to bless individuals with titles or skills, others with statuses, and some die without knowing what they were blessed with. Though natural talents can also be given and in your case perhaps you can simply learn things faster. Dad added. I've heard from time to time since I was born parents talking with one another about a thing called magic and mana. As I grew older they'd always kept quiet about it. I guess they were waiting for something. Why now? What do you mean daughter? You and father wouldn't tell me anything before so why do you want me to learn magic now? Oh, that's because only at the age of seven the system allows us to use mana, and skills. It locks it so that accidents don't happen. I suppose it was that message from earlier. Right, Iris imagine what would it be like if a baby would accidentally shoot a fireball and burn the house down with him in it. That's dangerous. I replied after thinking about the problems it could bring. Exactly. Not like that would be a problem since we humans don't start with any skills, but if the possibility exists it would refrain from such problems. We humans don't. I've always remembered myself of the two skills the system told me about. 
I'd be happy to learn both things nonetheless, if dad and mother would like to teach me. I smile innocently. We'd be more than happy, they shouted in unison. Seems like I'll have a lot of fun ahead after seven years of not doing much, for now you can go play in your room. We have a lot of cleaning to do from the birthday party. All right, mother. I head to my room and close the door behind me laying on the bed facing the ceiling. I say lowly, status skill, notice. Ten mana has been deducted. System, the title mana has been received. Notice, mana has been unlocked in status. Notice, wisdom has been unlocked in status. Notice, titles have been unlocked in status. A yellow screen with black letters appears in front of the girl after all the messages voiced in her mind. Status, mana, 1020 wisdom, 1 titles, reincarnated, mana. Skills, status, system library. Those were a lot of messages but altogether basically mean that I used this mana thing. 10 mana, so I can use status one more time. I'm not sure what wisdom is but it seems I have one of it. Use wisdom one, I wait for a while after trying to use it mentally. Doesn't seem to do anything. Let's check the rest. Titles reincarnated since this is my second life it makes sense and mana from using it I guess. Use title reincarnated, a moment goes by and nothing. I try something different. Use title mana. Doesn't seem to work. I guess titles aren't usable either. Skills status and system library. Since status worked earlier let's try to focus on the skill system library. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. My eyes forcefully close while I hear voices in my head. System, the title mana exhaust has been received. System, the title health has been received. Notice. Health has been unlocked in status. Notice, stamina has been unlocked in status. After 30 minutes I regain control of my body. What happened? Was it perhaps hitting zero of mana? Mana exhaust title. It felt like my body got very tired. I stretch my end and bend them a few times. Then I do the same with my legs. Seems to be working better now. Also I don't feel weird anymore. It should have recovered that mana thing by now no? Seeing as I haven't suffered any injuries it should be fine, I take a look around my body just in case not finding anything strange with it. Let's check it, status, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, status, health, 75 75, mana, 2030 stamina, 7, wisdom, 3 titles, reincarnated, mana, mana exhaust, health, skills, status, system library, is that my health, what happens if it reaches zero, do I die, do I faint, do I get sick, I'll have to ask parents in a bit for more details, they should be able to tell me, unless it works differently for them which would be strange in a way, seems like my mana and wisdom increased, it looks like they raised at the same time, Perhaps they influence each other, seeing as I got health and stamina at the same time the way I got mana and wisdom at the same time too. It kind of makes sense. I seem to have received a new title mana exhaust when I emptied my mana I believe, and title health, not sure about this one though. For now let's try the other skill. This time I have left over mana, system library, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, system library. World of Atana I, Fishing I, Baking I, Cooking I, I guess I have to choose one, I was quite the fond reader in my past life, if these are books then I'll have a lot of fun from here onwards, let's try the first one, World of Atana I, notice, 50 mana has been deducted, after almost 2 hours I regain control of my body, seems like I hit zero mana again, I didn't expect for it to cost that much. What in the hell was that amount even? Now I'm extra curious about what I was about to see. I won't give up. I'll repeat everything again if I must. Open status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, health, 6060, mana, 9100 stamina, 7, wisdom, 10 titles, reincarnated, mana, mana exhaust, health, skills, status, system library. Wait my health decreased? My mana increased a lot. Was it the mana exhaust? Or was it the health title? I'm lacking information. I could get it from the library. I smile proudly after making a big discovery. This time around I should have enough mana, system library. 
Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System Library, World of Atana I, Fishing I, Baking I, Cooking I. Now I want the first book, The World of Atana I. I look at it and then touch it with my index finger. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. World of Atana I, Author Name, Sage John. Long, long ago many injustices and strife across the world existed. This came to be as each god created a race as they seemed fit. The problem started with the races seeking world domination. Many kings surged, many kingdoms and armies built. A world covered with wars making the weaker races lose the most. With a human race loved by the goddess Arya almost coming to extinction, she proposed a deal to the other gods. Upon hearing the constant prayers and pleas of their subjects the gods decided on accepting it. They created a system that makes the world more balanced and the meddling of gods restricted. Thanks to that each god kept a different race which they helped them from time to time. The system takes care of everyone by its laws. At the beginning of the world, four races were born, humans, beasts, demons, and monsters. Despite the balancing of the system, some races are born stronger than the others, some individuals are better than others. Due to everyone being ultimately different and the humans the very weakest. The goddess Arya summons heroes from other worlds every 100 years to help us. So that humanity can prevail a bit longer. Notice, race has been unlocked in status. Notice, name has been unlocked in status. System, the title begin our reader has been rewarded. Whoa. I don't think I want to live in such a dangerous world. I make a fearful expression as I don't want to die again. Even if this goddess Arya summons heroes, I don't think they'd be able to beat beasts and demons and monsters altogether. It seems way too many things to handle. It could depend on how many heroes she summons too, but even then, I don't quite know how strong these humans are. Sounds like I should take parents' lessons extra seriously and become strong as fast as I can. I wonder when this book was written. All the information I have is the title and the author. He could very well already be dead. Let's see what differences it unlocked. Status. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Race. Human. Name. Iris health. 6060. Mana. 2110 stamina. 7. Wisdom. 11 titles, reincarnated, mana, mana exhaust, health, beginner reader, skills, status, system library, hum, my wisdom raised again, is it from the new title beginner reader, I gaze at it checking it out, sounds like reading books will help me able to read more of them, that book was very interesting can't wait to read more of them, even if it was a pretty short one. Maybe the people of this world have some sort of difficulties. In my old world despite everything my father was quite rich so he had his own library. It also seems like my status gets newer things as I read which is pretty cool and extra motivation to keep going. It can't be a coincidence, well it can. I wonder what else can I receive from these books. Though for now, I'm feeling very comfortable in this bed I think I'll nap a bit. Two hours pass and I start stretching my arms and legs doing a little noise with the bones in the bed below tags along, then my eyes and lips open about the same time. Yawn, that was a good nap, I'll try to not sleep more otherwise I'll have trouble sleeping at night, guess I'll read a bit more, nothing else to do, system library, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, system library, world of Atana I, fishing I, baking I, cooking I, I wonder what these symbols are after the books. I've read a lot of books in my past life but I'm pretty sure it didn't have them. Could it possibly be different series like how sequels and prequels existed for famous authors? Maybe different chapters to them? Mines had normal numbers to them. I can't tell yet as I don't have enough information. So for now, let's read the fishing eye. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Fishing eye. Author name. The Fisherman Felix in the world of Artana, there are many classes, and fishing is a basic graded one. Peasants are generally granted one of these lower ranked classes. The lower level fisherman will enjoy learning the basics, from knotting to put a worm in the hook. Advisable to buy a rod made of bamboo since it is flexible. Should buy a wooden bamboo rod as normal wooden sticks will break with the fish pulling strength. Should buy either a wire made of horsehair or finely woven flax as they're very consistent. Regarding the bait, 
One can buy worms from the general store also do not forget to buy the hook. Once you have all the materials required, you can ask a blacksmith to fuse them for you. Now you should have a fishing rod and lots of worms, you should procure a small river. Once you find a spot you like get some big stones, so that you can stick the rod there. That way you'll be able to avoid staying lots of hours holding the rod by yourself which is tiring. The moment the bamboo starts bending you'll have to pull the fish with a lot of strength out. Don't forget a basket with long leaves to cover your fish with once you get one. Notice, level has been unlocked in status. Notice, status skill has reached level 10 additional information will be shown. Notice, class has been unlocked in status. Notice, system library skill has leveled up to two additional books will be shown. It's a good thing the books are so short. I wonder if the library is being considered to me being young, unless it's only the first page. I'm used to reading big books, so I'll be ready. That's all I did anyway. I just remembered, but it's a good thing that the language is the same otherwise both skills would have been useless. It makes me wonder if this is the world I was in before or not, they're kind of similar in a few things at least. I look through the window at my right side, I didn't get to leave my mansion in my past life. I've read everything there was in father's library, but the common knowledge I have doesn't match this world so far. For example, one of the books I remember reading was one about wars, and it was only a human kingdom against another of the same race. I change the focus of my gaze to the door, the fact that this world has more races than humans already makes me doubt this is the same one. I don't remember this system with skills things either. I could also be missing memories like the ones from before I went to the attic. Since I haven't received a gift from my parents I'll ask them at dinner if I can get a fishing rod. I look once more through the window to check the weather. Now I'm curious for the rest of the books. I couldn't have asked for a better skill as that was all I loved in my past life. Let's see what parents are doing while Mana recovers. I open the door which connects directly to the living room finding my parents on the sofa talking to one another. Iris baby come sit with us, she gestures me to approach which I do with a big smile on my face. So what were you doing this long in the room dear? I was reading a book. How about you two? A book? We've finished cleaning the leftovers of the party a few minutes ago. So we took the chance to rest here. Mom's hand approached to pat my hair. Could I request a gift? I smile happily melting their hearts as they tilt their heads. A gift? My parents asked in unison surprised as I never asked anything before. Yes, I'd like a fishing rod. A fishing rod? Once more they ask me in unison confused. Yes, I'd like to fish. We've gone on a stroll before near the river. It's not far so I could fish whenever I'd like. My parents looked at each other as if trying to mind read one another. Oh and some wire in case it breaks and worms too. Otherwise I won't have bait for fishes please. Well, honestly it's quite a cheap present, so I'll get you one. Thank you, father. I smile happily at him ending up giving a hug. If there's anything else you'd like I'll gift it to you dear, that way you'd have a present from both of us. Mom hurriedly added as she didn't want to feel left out from such a unique occasion, and possibly from the hug I gave dad. Of course mother, I'll let you know once. I have something in mind, thank you. I give her a hug so she doesn't feel left out. Later that day, let's read some more before dinner, system library. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System library, world of Atana 1, 2. Fishing 1, 2. Baking 1, 2. Cooking 1, 2. Let's try the world of Adana too. The first one was rather interesting. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. World of Adana too. Author name, Sage John. A very interesting topic about this world is what I've found out from the system. It is composed of 8 laws, possibly more. But these are the ones I've figured so far. Together they make me realize that humans will always be the weakest race as we're born inferior. The reason is due to these laws. The strong will become stronger crushing the weak. These eight laws make the world a bit more balanced from what it used to be. The leveling law where everyone starts at level 1. The experience law where everyone can level up by killing other beings including their own race. The status law where they can select their status points. The skill law where they can learn skills with skill points. 
the class law where everyone can get a class and level it up, the title law where everyone can be rewarded for their achievements, the grading law where everything is graded in a specific way, the language law where everyone can understand each other with enough intelligence and wisdom. Thanks to these laws when the other races build large enough armies, we're sure to be wiped out. For those of the next generations, if you can don't hesitate on growing stronger. Otherwise, you'll lose everything and everyone you love at some point in your life. Notice. Experience has been unlocked in status. Notice. Status points have been unlocked in status. Notice. Skill points have been unlocked in status. Notice. Grades have been unlocked in status. Notice, intelligence has been unlocked in status. This author really does sound threatening and serious. In the sentence where he says we're born inferior, does that mean that other races are born with higher statuses than us humans? Is there possibly a way to outdo such natural growth? If that's the case I wonder what humans are doing to prevent such invasions. These books must be in every library through the Lumen Kingdom no? I look around my room as if looking for an answer fully knowing there would be no such thing. I somehow have a bad feeling. In this world, if we don't get strong enough we'll most likely die, won't we? Does that possibly mean that I have to level up a lot? It might also mean that I'm bound to die early. I want to live a long and happy life. I'll have to kill things if I want to become stronger for experience and leveling up. Will I be able to achieve it? If it is to protect my family then. Best to think about something else for now. I inhale and exhale deeply to relax. Some time has passed so I should have recovered a bit of mana. I retake my stare upon the screen and gaze upon the list in it. Let's go with baking eye even though it's probably a recipe book. There were a few of them back then as well. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Baking I. Author name, Bakers Yuxu. The art I make is baking. I use a skill that allows me to make a lot of different food. My class is baker. One of the possible choices when we're peasants. Personally, I love it. I make the most delicious bread, cakes, pastries, pies, cookies and other things. I can also cook many meals a person with a chef class would be able to. The difference is that I receive experience by doing these things and my skills level up faster. I also can learn advanced skills from doing so, while chef ones I don't have access to. Unless I learn how to make it with a chef or even create a recipe on my own. It'll never be as good as a real chef but it'll still be pretty good. I'll be passing some of my recipes to future generations like the ash cake. The first step is to build a fire and let it burn down to a thick layer of coals. We'll know it's ready once the coals have become white ash. We then make a thick dough made of flour adding only enough water so that it doesn't stick in the hands. We can add wild fruits that you can find in the forest as well as chopped nuts or even wild berries. Then roll the dough into small balls and smash them so they become plain circles. Place them onto the hot ash, not on the coals. Then it'll slowly become cooked and brown. Once it's brown you can lift it, clean the rest of the ashes, and use butter or some jelly to eat it. I hope you'll enjoy this recipe. Bake Exuxu her name sounds so adorable. It's truly fluffy like. Makes me imagine the woman being a bit like an old lady, giving sweets to the children with a happy smile. So doing the things our class is meant to, will allow us to grow stronger faster. If I get a class of producing something, it doesn't sound like I would become stronger. Acquiring more experience and skills certainly sounds like a goal. It sounds important, to think I'd find such information in a baker book. Despite the possible odds, I ended up with a pretty good ability or well skill. Not only that, but I really want to try making this bread and tasting it now. Hopefully, it's good. I'll try it when I get a chance and surprise my parents. Iris, I hear a loud voice calling for me from the direction towards the living room. Just outside my room, and after a thin haul, I head through my room door and collide with Dad, bumping my head onto his soft and small belly. Ouch. Didn't expect you there, I laugh lightly towards Further who doesn't seem to be surprised. Hey princess, I wanted to know if you'd like to come to the blacksmith with me to buy the rod, and I always tell you to not go so fast through the house. You're bound to hurt yourself greatly otherwise. Thankfully this time it wasn't one of them. Of course, I'd love to. 
I shout energetically making him smile instantly at my attitude and happiness. I barely ever get a chance to go to the village, if not mistaken, since birth may have gone there like two times. Alright let's go and see what we can find there. Hopefully, something promising for you to become a master fisher. Yes, like a magical fishing rod capable of pulling any type of fish. No matter how big or strong they are, don't take too long you two. I'll be preparing our dinner. Mother shouted at us with a serious yet happy expression. Making sure we would understand the idea, otherwise, punishment might befall the both of us. Yes mom. Father opens the door that is a little further ahead from the one I came through to the right. The exit one. All right, mom. I shout happily back stealing her a smile. After twenty minutes of heading northwest, we arrive at the village. I see a wooden sign, it says Estia Village, it is a pretty name. We walk for a bit more soon coming closer to a shop called the Three Hammers. Upon entering it, we're greeted by two men. Welcome. Welcome to the Three Hammers blacksmith shop. Thank you, we replied in unison, making us smile at each other and chuckle a bit. I take a good look around finding all sorts of weapons, armors, helmets, on top of tables used for display. They are sorted in what looks from the worst quality to the best one since the shinier ones are the furthest away. Shouldn't they place the best looking stuff closer for more appealing? On second thought, perhaps since this is a village the people may not want to afford the expensive stuff. I find the balcony to be relatively close to the entrance, where I see one of them writing something while checking some equipment pieces. Perhaps something related to restocking them. I notice that the walls are dyed in a yellow tone, which corresponds to the color at the ceiling. It leaves the floor to be in a gray tone perhaps stone, which doesn't quite match the color's palette. I take notice of mostly how it feels to be a house of one room alone, a long and wide enough one with lots of tables, barrels, two balconies, and some boxes, on top of the tables. There are some dressing objects possibly armor pieces, at least the helmet is easy to understand where it would fit. On a table next to that one different swords can be seen. The weapons have similar tones, but they're mostly gray, and the last two seem to be made of silver. Further to that table, there's a barrel and in it, lots of different looking rods. We take a turn to the right and find a window, whose light shines on top of some pieces but they're too far away. Furthest to the right there are some boxes and what looks like a treasure chest. How can we be of service today? The man gazing at our happiness makes a big smile of his own. We've come looking for a fishing rod for my daughter. Did the little miss get her fishing class so early? Ah, no, I believe she's just interested in trying it out. That's quite remarkable. Come here young one. Let me show you the medium rods we have since you're still small. I walk closer and start gazing at the multiple rods on one of the wooden barrels where they're placed vertically. There are a few long ones that look very heavy made of light brown wood, some medium ones also made of a darker looking tone type of wood, and a few green ones, but no clue about the material. What are the green ones made of? I ask curiously taking a great and strange interest at them. They're made of bamboo. They are a bit flexible so they can bend. Here let me show you. He picks one and starts bending it softly without breaking it. That looks lighter and interesting. I turn to dad and point at it. You're the one in charge Iris. How much is it? For this enthusiastic little miss, I'll make it 400 copper. Dad gave me the coins while smiling happily. Here you go. I give the coins to the shopkeeper, making them do some sounds in the man's hand by dropping four of them each with a number 100 in them. Thank you for the purchase young miss, if you ever need it to be repaired let us know, and we'll make you a discount. I smile at him in gratitude for all the kindness displayed. System, the title purchase has been received. A new title? Did dad give me the money on purpose for this to happen? I look at him and see him smiling kindly at me. I guess not. He just looks happy at me buying things with him, dad probably doesn't think much about titles. Here you go little miss. I placed some paper around the hook so that you don't get hurt with it. Thank you for everything, I'll be careful with it. I grab the bamboo fishing rod, it heights around 80 centimeters, dad helps me with it. They have some very long ones double and even triple this size. Let's head to the general store for the bait daughter. Alright, dad. 
I swift the focus from Luke to the man and big my farewell, bye bye, and thank you for the rod, take care both of you, the men from the blacksmith shop said in unison. Three minutes later we enter the general store, I look around it once I enter noticing a woman behind a balcony in the furthest center end. Possibly to force people to go through the middle of everything she has to sell. Everything is inside either small bottles or boxes with a name label above them. Good afternoon, Dad said smiling while looking at the lady from afar next to me. Hello. I had softly gazing at everything while mesmerized without knowing what most things are. Welcome. How may I help? We walk closer to the balcony going through the middle of two tall wooden shelves, with four shelf brackets dividing the different products. I'd like four boxes of worms for fishing. That'll be 50 copper each for a total of 200, Dad gives me the coins once again, here you go, lady, I give her two copper coins of 100 each, thank you, young girl, the woman smiles at me while giving me the box carefully, so they don't open in an accident, we leave the shop and then the village, having gotten everything we needed, and head back home. On the way back dad asks, will you be okay with killing the worms to feed the fishes? Yes. Bugs don't bother me, I find them cute. If you take the fishes out of the water, they'll die too. I know, but they won't die without a purpose. I want to learn how to cook and make good dishes for you and mother. Seems like my daughter doesn't worry much about animal lives. I wonder if it was a different animal like a fluffy bunny or a dog, perhaps a cat or a horse. I wonder how'd she look at death then. Innocence truly is bliss. I hope she doesn't get scared with the worms later or the slippery fishes. Are you excited to be able to fish tomorrow? Yes, father. I wonder if I'll be able to catch anything though. I understand what father meant but after reading those books I'll have to resolve myself. There is a big need to be able to kill things to become stronger at some point, better earlier so I get used to it before it is too late. Otherwise when I face a monster and hesitate to kill it, it'll most likely kill me instead. The following day in the morning, let's dress in some casual brown clothes since I might dirty them near the river. I want to see the status. Haven't checked the changes since yesterday, was too excited with fishing. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 class, none race, human, name, iris health. 6060, mana, 160 170 status points colon 10 stamina, 7, intelligence, 0, wisdom, 17 titles, reincarnated F, mana F, mana exhausts, health F, beginner reader C, purchase E, skill points, 2 skills, status level 16, system library 3, seems like I have a bit more mana, and points to spend? I'm assuming we spend those points in the things below. I could really use a lot more mana to read more books and be able to check status freely. Well, I want all points in Wisdom. System, the title Wisdom has been received. Notice, Disgrace has been unlocked in status. Notice, Fame has been unlocked in status. What are these new things I got? Status again please. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, Level, 1. Experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 10 class, none race, human, name, iris health, 60 60, mana, 250 270 status points colon 1 stamina, 7, intelligence, 0, wisdom, 27 titles, reincarnated F, mana F, mana exhausts, health F, beginner reader C, purchase E, wisdom F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 18, system library 3, I wonder what it does, it seems that I received it from the wisdom title for spending 10 points in wisdom, is that a bad thing, I also won another status point, I'll save this one just in case, I think 270 mana will last me for a while now, I wonder what these letters in front of the titles are, system library let's spend the mana before fishing. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System library, world of Atana 1, 2. Fishing 1, 2. Baking 1, 2. Cooking 1, 2. Farming 1, 2. Farming I, it sounds interesting. And I'll save mana to read fishing 2 before I leave the house. Notice, 
50 mana has been deducted. Farming I, author, Farmer Alex, as a fellow human and now as an old grandpa who can't plow his fields anymore. I've decided to slowly write my lifetime down in regards to my farmer class. I started as a very weak kid around my 10 years, and slowly as I used to hoe to plow, my strength increased with time. I'm not sure of the reason, but perhaps the farming titles I gained had something to do with it. I'd do a lot of hours every day of exercise from this job and from time to time I'd get new titles, or their grades would rank up. In the end, my status became enough for me to do my job a lot faster and consistently. I initially started with very few cheap things, I bought a hoe from the blacksmith, tomato seeds from the general store, and also a hat from the clothing store due to the sunlight. I'd wake up early where the sun wasn't as intense and start plowing my fields. Then I'd sow everything and close the holes, watering everything once I had finished. I made a scarecrow to deal with the birds with some wood I cut from a few trees. I remember my strength increasing from chopping trees too. Later on, as I grew up I ended marrying and having a very cute daughter. She asked me if we could have some plants, so at 40 years old I started harvesting plants in a different field. It was then that I became stronger, it felt then at the age of 50 that I had mastered all the titles of farming. The day I finished I felt my strength increasing greatly. Sadly I took too long to understand the art of a farmer. I believe that future farmers will not bother themselves reading this book as most don't know how to read. I do hope my tale goes across so that everyone who decides to try farming, be it due to the job or not, is able to become stronger. Notice, strength has been unlocked in status. Seems like there are various titles that help the status grow. I'll ask mother to buy me a hoe and some seeds. Since she wanted to gift me a present, I smile. Magic lessons, swordsmanship, fishing and farming. When I have vegetables and other things I'll start cooking and baking. I'll do a bit of everything and hopefully get stronger that way. Of course, reading too. It's way too fun I just can't stop it. I want to read Farming 2 next. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Farming 2. Author, Farmer Alexandra. My grandpa died, when I was 7 years old. A special ceremony took place for me which also happens to every human being. I spent my status points and my skill points, on skills that I felt would help me continue his honorable job. I wanted to be like him, so I took the class farmer. Some people call it a profession or even a job, but the real name is rank zero farmer class. At least that's what the system calls it, I'm not sure what the rank part means, but it doesn't matter. I grew up following his advice he wrote in the past volume, and also from his daily teachings. I reached the peak at the age of 30 and my mother at the age of 40. I discovered some interesting things that allowed me to make things faster. I believe it can go even faster in the future generations. One of them was sowing different seeds from the start and harvesting different plants. These two will contribute with titles of their own. I believe the farmer title series requires all kinds of farming titles, they give especially good bonuses. I at the age of 25 ended up marrying a fisherman, who would complain about having to buy lots of worms and that was expensive. Due to farming and plowing after harvesting, I started boxing a lot of worms that lived in my fields. This allowed my husband Felix to increase his fishing skills earning titles a little bit faster. The worms that lived on my fields were also bigger and fatter compared to the ones sold in the general shop. That may have impacted his fishing as well. I asked him to write a few notes as my grandpa did in order to help the future fishermen of our Lumen Kingdom. Humans aren't helpful to one another sadly, due to the system they seclude from each other as they try to improve their loan. The kindness of my grandpa and my own will try to change a bit of such behavior with the notes I left here. I pray to the goddess Aria who saved us all that humans will start being friendlier to one another. Especially the nobles, they mistreat us, peasants, way too much. I hope the peasants from this country start learning reading and writing earlier on so that they can spend some time in the few libraries around the kingdom. That way they'll surely improve their life status and live better than we have. Notice, age has been unlocked in status. It is a little sad to know the grandpa died. He sounded really kind in the writing he did. I'm very honored to be able to read their works. I can feel the love they imbued the books with. 
it seems like I'll be able to get worms of my own maybe even find a way to mate them, perhaps with herbs that grow along with the vegetables that I don't need, to my surprise, the fisherman was her husband, it's really complicated to know when things happened without proper dates, from this information, I now know that there's a chance that everyone who wrote these books is already dead, being a peasant or not, it doesn't bother me, but I want a class that can help me defeat harmful beings, be them humans or monsters, I think magic could be quite interesting since I have a lot of mana, there's a chance the mana I have isn't enough, hopefully, I can raise it further along with the rest of the stats by doing all sorts of things. I'll try to collect all types of titles, just hope I can learn different classes once too. Even if the learning rate is slower, I'll persist and endure it. I wonder what kind of training nobles do, seeing as they look down on peasants on this world. They must be really strong to do, otherwise, a peasant would retaliate. Let's red fishing too before I head to the river, notice. 50 mana has been deducted. Fishing too. I've been helping my wife at farming and ever since then fishing which requires a lot of strength has become easier. Thanks to this I've felt my body agility and dexterity increase. I've been able to run faster to jump higher, to use my hands better at small works. Believe it or not, I felt like fishing has become slightly faster. The number of fishes caught has increased. I've used some worms I've been getting from my wife making fishing more profitable. I've befriended a merchant who doesn't take a big tax to sell the things I catch. The same friend also sells my wife's harvest. I feel like catching fishes, different types of fishes, fishing in different places have all been changing me. I'm currently 30 years old and I haven't mastered fishing nor have I found all the titles required for the fishing series. They usually complete with an S in front of them. I believe the ranks go from F, E, D, C, B, A, S. Not sure if it works like that to every title and skill. This is everything I was able to understand as I spent part of my life fishing. If in the future I find something else I may attempt a new book. Even though just a tiny book of one page is already very expensive. I hope the future fishermen have better luck than me. System. The title reader series has been received. Notice. Agility has been unlocked in status. Notice. Dexterity has been unlocked in status. So that's what the letters are. Wait let's compare everything now that I know the ranks. Status please. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 1. Experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 10 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 60 60, mana, 130 350 status points colon 1 strength, 0, stamina, 7, agility, 0, dexterity, 0, intelligence, 1, wisdom, 35 titles, reincarnated F, mana F. Mana exhausts, health F, begin our readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 22 E, system library 3 F, seems like mana exhaust and begin a reader max if what Felix the fisherman wrote is correct, my wisdom seems to have taken quite a boost again, it was most likely from that second rank S title, and I have one intelligence now. I feel like that came from the last title or the S rank of the other one, hard to know. Status seems to have ranked up as well and I still have a long way to go with system library, seeing as status is level 22. Let me prepare everything so I can go fishing and talk with mother about the farming tool, seeds, and a hat that I need. After running around crazily through the house I find a basket with a lid made of straw knotted making it light and flexible. I also find a similar straw hat which is a bit big for my head but with my long blonde hair, filling the emptiness I manage to hold it steady. Where do you think you're going, little miss? My mother stops me from running around to fish. Have you ever fished before dear? No, but I know what I need to do. You do? How so dear? Where could you possibly have acquired such knowledge? Books. I smile at mother. We have a few at home. But we don't have one about fishing I believe. Or do we? Oh right mother I thought of what I want to as a birthday present. I want a farming hoe, watering can, and seeds of all kinds. 
Don't tell me you received a farming class? Since you said you just wanted to try fishing for fun. No, mother I haven't decided on a class. I don't even know how to get one. To get one you have to spend your first 10 status points and the 2 skill points to be able to use skills for the first time. Oh, so that's how? Yes, but we'll tell you how to spend them tomorrow when we start teaching you the basics. I've already spent them, mother. What? Her shout echoed in my ears. What did you spend on? I wanted more mana so I spent everything in wisdom. Oh my, that's not advisable honey at all. How come? Well imagine you end up fighting something, without a balance of all status which are interrupting her I say, strength, stamina, agility, dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom. Exactly, they contribute in different ways to our growth as human beings, so balancing them is what every human does. Everyone does? Why? It's due to the only thing we get as we age being stamina, and we need a bit of everything in our daily lives. Can I have an example? Of course baby, let's see. A blacksmith that you visited recently needs the dexterity to use his tool correctly. Right, he also needs strength to hammer it with the force he needs, and stamina to not get tired doing that repeatedly. I see, he also needs intelligence to speak with fellow clients and to learn new things, and wisdom to have the mana for his crafting skills. Crafting skills? Every class has a set of skills and being a blacksmith has its own. One of them is crafting equipment, material evaluation, and another is refining. Oh, that's interesting. Exactly so dear, and the more wisdom we have the better we use the knowledge we understand from this world, the knowledge that comes from intelligence. Yes, the more you have the more things you'll be able to learn by observing the world. Can I learn them through books instead since I don't have much intelligence? Of course you can dear, that's what books are made for, even though not many bother with them, how come, not many get to learn how to read and most rather put some points in intelligence and learn things as they go. I see, you can consider books a mix of intelligence and wisdom, it also depends on the writer, what do you mean mother, well baby, if the writer doesn't express his knowledge properly on the subject you won't learn things properly. Ah, now I understand. Another reason for people to not read books is that if the knowledge is wrong, their intelligence can decrease. The stats we put points in can decrease? Yes, as we get really old our stats start decreasing as well around 70 years old for most. That's awful. Mother approached and patted my hair, it's part of the cycle of life baby girl. From that explanation does that mean mother also has a skill called status? A skill called status? That's new. I have what most people have baby, a skill called personal data, that opens a screen called status. That's weird my skill is called status and it also opens a yellow screen with black letters named status. It indeed sounds unusual Iris, but it sounds like both do the same, so don't worry about it, dear. True. Wait Iris, if you have a skill does that mean you have a class? Wait earlier you said you didn't. I still haven't used my two skill points mother. Then how do you have a skill? We aren't born with skills Iris. I don't know. I guess I just happen to be an exclusion to that rule. I look anxiously at her while saying the truth. Just how blessed were you by the gods dear? Am I supposed to answer that? Is there any other thing I should know about? Should I tell her about the system library skill? It is my mother so there shouldn't be a problem. I actually was born with another skill called system library. What? Not only one but two skills? I haven't heard of that one before dear. What does it do? It allows me to read books. I've read baking, fishing, and farming books. Oh, so that's where your interest suddenly came from. Yes, I smile feeling more relaxed. Sounds like you got very lucky with the skill you got. I'm totally in favor of my daughter reading a lot of books. I'm glad to hear that as I love to read books. Rosalind went into deep thought. Still, why does my daughter has two skills already? Unless she's level three? Did she leave in the middle of the night or something? No, that's impossible she's too young and too weak. Even the weakest goblin would have more status than her. I've heard that people summoned from the goddess area come with very special skills. They're called unique skills. They appear when many ranked S skills merge to form a new one. However, the skills my daughter seems to have gotten don't seem anything amazing, sure is nice to see the information, 
but everyone has that. The other skill gives her the ability to read books, apparently about classes, knowledge is a good thing, but it won't make her strong. Since in the end, she will not be able to have more than one class, it'll still be useful for her to know what everyone can do, that way if in the future she needs something she'll know who to ask. Well just in case don't mention those skills to anyone and also that you might have been born with them, how come mother just in case dear, as we don't know if there's anyone who would force you to use them for their own gain, can they steal them from me, no dear, not like that, more like hurting you to force you to do their will, ah, now I understand what mother means, all right, mother I'll be careful, that's a promise then. She smiles. What other things can you see in that personal data skill mother? Personal data? Let's see. I can see the level, experience, titles, name, age, status points, strength, stamina, agility, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, skill points, and skills. Anything else? No dear that is all. Then how do you know what class you are for example? Or the race? I know it from the skills I can learn and I'm human I know from looking into a mirror, she started laughing, how about the titles and skills do they have small letters in front of them, letters, no baby it's only named, fame and disgrace, mother makes a surprised face upon hearing that, where do you learn those terms dear, I can see it in my status screen when I use the skill, that's very interesting, basically depending on the titles we get our fame and disgrace increase, how do you know how much you have mother? When we attempt to advance our class we get to learn how much we have. We can advance classes? Yes, you can also swap them if you don't like what you picked, but its level returns to zero. That doesn't sound so good. True it's not, but you do keep the skills you learned, even though they won't level up as fast as they used to be. That sounds even worse. Mother laughed a bit more upon hearing my words. Well, you should think wisely before deciding on a class, and despite we both being peasants which means you can learn one of the lower professions. The nobles can't? They can. But their choices start from rank 1 classes like mage and warrior while we peasants have to work extra hard for it. Once you spend your skill points you'll receive a title that matches in what social class you were born in other words a peasant title. I used to be a noble. And now I'm a peasant, honestly, it doesn't bother me. Oh, in other words, what do I do to become a mage? You need to get the fame and disgrace dear to increase. In other words, titles. Ah, I understand. The easiest ones would honestly be to kill other beings, like weak beasts or very weak monsters. That's. I know they have personalities, can feel, they're no different than us, just a different body and aspect but, she kneels in front of me and stares at me. If you don't you'll end up being a farmer, a fisherman, or something along those lines, which I personally don't mind. I want to be a mage mum. I'd like to do all kinds of things with this life, and also be strong enough to protect you and dad. A few tears fell from Rosalind's eyes as she was touched by her daughter's words. She hugged her and said, you're truly so very precious Cyrus, don't cry mother. I pat her while tearing up too, we were going to teach you the basics and let you decide if you wanted to learn or not, but it seems like you truly wish to learn. Yes, I want to be strong. She stared at me looking into my eyes. I can't get enough that you have such different color than my side and Luke's side brown eyed families. She smiles at me. They're green right? Yes, green like the vivid grass of the plains outside our home. I'll totally make a small field outside of the house. You should make it near the river baby, that way you won't have to water as much and it's easier to get water from. Mother you're a genius. I'm sure you'd find about it in one of those farming books of yours, but better now as you won't have much time. What do you mean by time? You'll practice swordsmanship with me in the morning, magic in the afternoon and you can go fishing afterward. I can wake up earlier to do the farming. The first part of the training will be to build your stamina so that you have more energy to spend. How do we do that? Laps around the house you can start today by running 30 in a big circle. All right mother, meanwhile you do I'll head to the village and get you the gift you asked for, a smile appeared on my face as I heard those words and say, thank you, mother, I love you, I love you too my fluffy daughter, 
Now go run and when you're done you can rest. Then I'll help you with fishing. You going to teach me? Just the basics, I'm not an expert either. But I did learn a few things in the past. It shouldn't be too hard. It truly isn't as long as it's not big fishes. Those have quite the strength. If it was in the ocean they'd be the ones pulling you. The ocean? Yes. Perhaps one day you'll visit some lands across the ocean to the west of the Lumen Kingdom capital. Sounds exciting. It is pretty dangerous. As well due to octopuses, big monsters that can damage ships. I want to be able to beat them. If you did, you'd be the first honey. They're truly strong. Now go run, I'll be back soon. All right, mother. Don't leave near the house. If anything happens just lock yourself inside. There's a short sword over there in the worst case. I'll be fine it won't take that long. We do live pretty much in nowhere, but I like to be sure to avoid accidents. Yes, mother, I'll do as you say. Good girl, get going. She smiles happily. While I was running from the two hours of exercise, I received a title called body training. I'm sitting close to the river, with the fishing rod and the straw hat in my head. That sure was tiring, but it must have been worthwhile. Status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 10 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 70 70, mana, 260 350 status points colon 1 strength, 0, stamina, 8, agility, 0, dexterity, 0, intelligence, 1, wisdom. 35 titles, reincarnated F, mana F, mana exhausts, health F, beginner readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series F, body training F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 22 E, system library for F, seeing as my health and stamina went up, it was quite worthwhile, mother arrived while I was training with a few things. I believe she got everything I asked. Baby. I turn around and look at my mother heading towards me with a basket, a bag, and a 60 centimeter long hoe. All right. I was able to get everything you needed and also brought you an extra basket so you can keep the different seeds I bought. Thank you very much mother. I tell her happily and gratefully. You're very welcome. So which one would you like to start with? We can try fishing first. I've already grabbed some rocks on the floor to put the rod stuck once everything's set, that way I can do farming afterward while a fish gets baited. That's very smart Tyrus. Did you thought about that? I read it from one of the fishing books. Oh, well, that does help you with saving time. Indeed. Have you thought about what you're going to do with the fishes? I'd like to learn how to handle them and cook them if I fish any. It'll be a bit bloody. I learned how to cut fish at 12 with my mother. You're the one who said I needed to get used to these things if I wanted to get stronger right? My mother smiled. Absolutely. All right, grab your rod and stretch it on the river. I'll help you stick it into the stones afterward. Okay mother, I do as she said. Now come closer and be careful to not touch the wire. Once I get really close to her she continues. Open your hand and pick a worm from the box. Without hesitation, I remove one of the fluffy worms from the box. They're kind of cute. I touch them softly. And they tickle my hand. Mother makes a little weird face looking at them. I guess she's not into worms. I smile. Now what you do is pierce the worm in this metal hook. I grab the worm with my index finger and thumb. And grab the hook with the other hand and pierce the worm in it. Mother does a disgusted expression. As she sees the worm liquids coming out of it. I notice it's smiling at her feeling less bad for doing this to the little cute worm. After some seconds it stops moving and voices resound in my head. System. The title animal slayer has been received. Notice. Soul has been unlocked in status. Seems like we even get titles for killing things. What is the soul? Mother. What is the soul? Upon hearing those words she looks surprised at me. The church says that the souls are what make us being who we are, the only immortal in other words the only aspect that never dies about us, kind of like energy. Like mana? Yes, you could say that. But why do you ask? I lower my voice and say, it appeared on my status just now. Really? What does it say about it or show? Let me check, status skill. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, 
experience 0 100 fame, 0 disgrace, 20 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 70 70, mana, 250 350 status points colon 1 strength, 0 stamina, 8 agility, 0 dexterity, 0 intelligence, 1 wisdom, 35 soul, 110 titles, reincarnated F, mana F, mana exhausts, health F, begin our readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series F, body training F, animal slayer F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library for F, I'm not really sure but it says soul 110, when I and Luke were adventurers and we'd kill a monster, a sparkling stone would appear consuming the corpse around it, that stone is equal to the soul amount, therefore the name the adventurer guild uses for it is soul stone, I see how much would this amount to, I have no clue daughter, they use a device that ranks the different soul stones and awards them a rank, and same ranks are used towards skills and titles, in my status, I can see the ranks in other words, the letters of my titles and skills, but mother doesn't so how do you know about their ranks? We can check them on a device at the adventurer guild when we place our hand in it to make a card. A page inside with our information is saved. Inside the book, that's interesting. But that way other people would be able to see my skills no? Yes, but you can rip the page. It's not against the rules to do so. If I ever become an adventurer I should do it. So that I keep secret of these skills right? Absolutely Iris. Okay, mom I'll make sure to do it if it ever happens. Just for reference the same book is used to apply to other places like the church, and the battle academia and the magic institute, important places basically. I see. What are the battle academia and the magic institute things? They're a place where nobles learn how to fight, or research magic. You can even learn skills without using skill points by doing what you'd normally do with the said skill. Sounds like expensive places to go. So how can we learn skills? Once I teach you swordsmanship, you should get a skill with that name. Don't worry dear, with time you'll get what you need. All right, mother I'll be patient. I hear a weird sound coming from the riverside and look into it. Mother the fishing rod is bending. I walk to it and grab it. You got to wait a bit to make sure the fish is hooked and start lifting it so that you force the fish out of the water. I put my strength in my hands and feet and start lifting the rod in the air. As the fish starts leaving the water I hear it splashing on top of it and then no noise when it's completely out. System. The title fish caught has been received. Now you place the rod fully vertical so that the fish goes close enough for you to place it inside the basket. I do as I'm told and the line comes closer to me bringing the fish closer. I take a grab of it and it slips my hands. I try again and for the fourth time, I fully grab it and release it off the metal bait. I stare at it as its life dissipates soon after stopping moving. I place it on the straw basket I brought and surround it with two big leaves I found on the way here. System. The title conserved fish has been received. Seems like I do get titles from doing these jobs. Status open. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 1. Experience. 0. 100 fame. 0. Disgrace. 20 class. None race. Human. Name. Iris. 7 years old health. 70 70. Mana. 250 360 status points colon 1 strength. 0. Stamina. 8. Agility. 1. Dexterity. 2. Intelligence. 1. Wisdom. 36 soul, 110 titles, reincarnated F, mana E, mana exhausts, health F, begin our readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series F, body training F, animal slayer F, fish court F, conserved fish F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library for F. It seems like I got some dexterity and agility from the titles, my disgrace seems to have increased, probably from killing the worm and the fish, or the animal slayer title. I'm not entirely sure but I think my mana also went up, I wonder which title did that, probably one of the fishing ones. My mother approaches and pats my hair and says, are you, alright honey? She must be referring to the fish, 
It did pain me a little bit, but I'm doing my best to contain it. Yes, it was a little sad, especially when I received the Animal Slayer title, but I chose to do this so there's no turning back now. My mother hugs me, good girl, she pats my hair some more. That's very brave of you Iris, it shows that you're maturing. I smile at the compliment she gave me. All right, now you need to set another worm and repeat what we did before. Sure. After we finish, I walk a little above following mother and she makes a big square with the hoe close to the river. Here you go. This is the field area, you can expand it when you have more seeds. And I tried to buy a few things that would grow easily. This is how you plow. You lift the hoe and smack the ground and then pull the earth backwards so it makes kind of a long hole. Take it and do it. So you learn. She gives me the hoe. I spend three hours plowing the whole area of 30 meters while catching some worms I find on the way and placing new worms and catching new fishes. I received two titles called plowing fields and fish type. I then spent 30 minutes placing some seeds of four different types and closing the holes. From that I received a title called seed types. Another 30 minutes went by as I used a watering can that my mother got me from the house. She had one from a garden she was meant to build but never felt motivated to. This awarded me with a title called watering field. I lay on the floor exhausted. In total, I caught six fishes which surprised mother as she didn't expect me to get anything at all from fishing. Honestly neither did I. I'm going to prepare the dinner. Come back home when you're done resting Iris if it gets colder than this. Go home. Take a shower and rest in bed. Will do mother thanks for teaching me. You're welcome dear, even though you were the one who did the most work. We laugh at each other. I left the fishing rod on the floor with a rock on top of it and the bag with the worm boxes together with it. It shouldn't fly as I also left the hoe close to it. I think I'll leave these things here and head home. Mother took the bag with the empty seed boxes. She didn't tell me what was in it. Guess it's her way of surprising me. But she certainly bought a lot to fill that whole area. Tomorrow I won't have to plow anymore. It'll just be watering and fishing. So my broken body can rest. Mother also said she wouldn't make me do any exercise. But father would get that chance to teach me about magic. I'm very excited to finally use magic other than these skills. I get up and head home. The following morning after a long sleep. My body is sore everywhere. Was so tired yesterday that I didn't even check the status. Let's have a look at it. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 120 class. None race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 150 150, mana, 350 360 status points colon 1 strength, 4. Stamina, 16, Agility, 1, Dexterity, 2, Intelligence, 3, Wisdom, 36 Soul, 130 Titles, Reincarnated F, Mana E, Mana Exhausts, Health F, Beginner Readers, Purchase E, Wisdom F, Reader Series F, Body Training F, Animal Slayer E, Fish Court F, Conserved Fish F, Plowing Field C, Fish Type E. Seed type C, watering field C, skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library 4 F, disgrace went up a lot, if I were to guess it must have been from the worms and fishes, a necessary sacrifice, after mother's constant support I've grown a bit more used to handling the air deaths, honestly speaking I don't feel bad about it, in the end, without food we'd starve like this. I'll be able to return the money they spent and if everything goes well, maybe make more? My health has increased a lot. It's still barely half from my mana though. It seems farming and fishing didn't help to increase it. I've gathered enough different status to compensate the 10 points I spent in wisdom. So it ended up being worthwhile as I received an extra status point from doing so. My soul seems to have increased very slightly. Not like it matters as it only influences something after I die. Their titles have been ranking up, some faster than others. It seems like I'll have to plow some more fields to max the title. It doesn't snow during winter. And I've only heard about it from my parents, so having to plow more, possibly either to make more fields or after harvesting. 
their river is big enough to never have to worry about water, the weather is pretty good during the year, so I should be able to have a decent crop all year long. I feel like I'm starting to think like a farmer, I smile. Well, it is a good thing, doing the things I want to do, and even having a lot of support for them. I couldn't ask for better parents, just hope they didn't think my requests were too much or that I made them think I'm selfish. Mother said I could learn skills from doing things, but I didn't learn any fisherman or farming skills. Swordsmanship skill which she referred sounds like something would be able to learn. In that sense. Skills unique to classes are not learnable without it. Which is too bad as I'd love to have some free skills to make my two hobbies more fun. I'm still too tired to move. Think I'll let my body rest some more. System library. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. System library. World of Atana 1, 2. Fishing 1, 2. Baking 1, 2. Cooking 1, 2. Farming 1, 2. Lumberjack 1, 2. A new thing. I think I'll save baking and cooking for later since I guess they're probably recipes. Let's check Lumberjack Eye. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Lumberjack Eye. Author, Eric the Strong. This is the year 170 after the system was established. There are no book records before the system was created. I'm a commoner who earned the title strong after reaching 200 strength. Thanks to the fame I got even among nobles. I used part of the money I received from a sponsor to write a piece of my story. I started as most peasants start, we spend our status and skill points. I invested everything in strength and became a lumberjack one who cuts trees and turns them into logs. I helped my wife with her fields in farming especially plowing which granted me more strength. I killed roaming monsters who approached our fields. I learned axe art and axe mastery passive skills and used them almost every day of my life. At some point, I was cutting small trees with one chop, and well, monsters in half. Every time I'd level up I'd get 5 points which I'd spend 4 in strength and 1 in stamina. By level 12 I reached 200 strength earning the title strong. One day when I was out woodcutting my wife and son were assaulted by bandits and they died. When I found out, I was overwhelmed by madness and rage. I followed the footprints and blood trails I found towards the woods while carrying an axe in each hand. After I found them I went crazy in rage and bloodlust. When I was done I was surrounded by a bloodbath. I discovered later I received a title called Rampage, and I was also able to change jobs to a class named Bizaka. I had gathered enough disgrace from killing humans to do so ever since that day. My fame skyrocketed among the peasants, and I dedicated the rest of my life killing bandits. I was the first one to reach the Bezaka rank 4 class, but it seemed like there was another evolution to it. By the time I almost mastered the class I was too old to continue. It seems that titles are conditions to learn hidden classes, and another condition is to have a lot of fame and disgrace. I believe it might be possible to even become a hero other than being summoned by the almighty goddess Arya. Or not, who knows, however, if the old man Sage John said the system is fair and works on conditions then I believe the chance exists. I've also done my share on the beast and the monster slaying the more variety that is killed the more titles one will get. I hope the future generations will have a lot of strong classes and turn the tides in wars to come. It is a violent world system. The title intermediate reader has been received. Seems like this man knew the author of the world of Artana. Like him. He also suggests getting strong due to the world being dangerous. I'm very sorry for him and his family. If it happened to me, I'd most likely do what he did if not worse. Even though compared to him I'm super weak. Seems like it's wise to try to get this fame and disgrace as high as possible for good classes. Perhaps classes that need conditions are not stronger or weaker than the normal ones. It sounds more like he needed a class that fitted him. I'm not really sure. But I am curious about the next volume, so let's read more of this strongman guy, Lumberjack 2. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Lumberjack 2. Author, Eric the Strong. This is the year 175 after the system was established. Before I die, I've decided to write about a very scary encounter that I experienced. The old man John has already passed away. One of the most amazing human beings ever existing. 
If it wasn't for the wise people like him that planned amazing strategies to outdo other races in wars, we'd have perished by now even with the help of the heroes. In a request to the deceased John, I went to explore the land between our kingdom in the north and the demon kingdom. I found a lot of monsters. I killed a lot of monsters. I ran from a lot of monsters. I did my best to survive and eventually, after traveling for a long time, I reached a place with red sand. Instead of the typical ground made of earth with bits of grass here and there. From my traveling, I figured it was a zone that covered the south path of the demon kingdom. It was then that I discovered the reason why humans and demons don't fight much. From all the opposing forces from the different races that we humans know exist, beast race, monster race, and demon race, none of them matter compared to what I found, in the middle of our kingdoms. A certain creature owns territory as large as the whole human territory. Everything it owns is marked by this red sand. A monster above all monsters, a red dragon. To our current knowledge there's a chance that more creatures like this one exist through the world, and more races too. Towards the center, I saw a gigantic turtle fighting the red dragon. It was a fight between two colossal monsters. Ultimately the dragon won I think. After the dragon left an army of sandworms started digging below the gigantic turtle and it drowned under the red sand. I don't know if it died devoured by the worms. After my return to the kingdom I was diagnosed with mana disease. It seems like those lands were very rich with mana. My mana pool was too small and couldn't handle it. There's no cure for it so sooner or later I'll meet my friend John. It certainly wasn't much about learning more things about his lumberjack class, especially since he changed it. There are places that we humans can't walk into without suffering consequences. Mana disease. I wonder if there's a cure for it now. A red dragon. Is there a race of dragons or it belongs to the monster race? What was that giant turtle he mentioned? Are those things even possible to exist in my past life? I've read stories about what was written in them as fantasy creatures. To think they're not fantasy but real instead. Just how strong is a red dragon? Is it even a unique monster or simply one of many? Is the world truly so vast that we're just little fluffy worms living in it? What if one of those big monsters would drop by in our Lumen Kingdom? Even with every human together are we strong enough to stop them? It makes me wonder if the red sand comes from it being owned by a red dragon. If the dragon leaves that territory or maybe dies of age, in case they die of age, will the territory around him change back allowing the demons to freely invade us? I wonder if the king even thought about any of this. After spending part of the morning thinking about possibilities I decide to head outside towards the field I'm making. On my way to the exit, I hear a voice behind me. Good morning Iris. I turn around. Good morning mother. It is time for you to learn how to cut the fish. She smiles evilly making me gulp. Yes, mother. I followed her to the kitchen where she placed the fish on a wood board. So first what you have to do is with this knife scrape the fish scales with this. She scraped the scales by pushing them from tail to head. Then she turned the fish around and placed the knife next to the table. Understanding what she meant, I got closer and did my best to copy what she had done. Once I finished mother told me, now with the big knife slice the head off. I look slightly scared at the fish. You can do this Iris. You can do it. I repeat it countless times through the whole process that follows. I lifted the dagger and looked at the fish shaking a bit with my hand and mother said. Focus on this spot. She indicated while showing me where by using her index finger then removing it and saying coldly. Cut it. My hand went down and a heavy sound was heard on the fish. A little of blood gouged out. Again in the same spot till it's fully separated. I repeat it a few times till the head is completely off the body. As I repeat it my hand shakes less and less. With this smaller knife cut the side fins and the fins under like this. She cuts one of them by holding it and then removing it. The knife goes very close to the fish's skin then the fins are cut by the root as she stretches them. She then places the knife next to it and looks at me. I approach and start removing the rest of the fins. Now do a cut under the belly to remove the guts and little organs the fish has from here to there. She makes a line with her index finger. I do a cut and blood and guts start falling off it. This is completely disgusting. You can put them in this bag. Then once all of it is out. 
wash the fish inside and outside. Then do everything you've done till now with the rest of the fishes you caught. Once I'm done with the first fish, a voice resounds in my mind. System. The title fish processed has been received. After I'm done with everything mother places all of the fishes on a plate and takes them to the oven. She puts some logs inside the oven and then a metal oval pan above it that gets warmed up. Now you just have to grill the fish on top of that, don't touch the metal it'll burn your hands. I lift a fish carefully and place it inside the oven on top of the pan, then do it with another one. Once it's grilled on one side we turn it around with this big fork while holding the wooden pan so it doesn't slip. Once the fish is finished cooking a voice resounds in my mind. System. The title cooked fish has been received. I do it to every fish and once I'm finished mother removes the pan and places it on the sink so it cools down. We usually eat bread, stews of meat, cheese and vegetables, some ham, cheese, butter, some fruits, and lots of soups. I look at mom who is smiling very happily. It is rare for us to eat fish. She patted my hair. I smiled relieving myself of all the tension I went through. I'm very proud of you Iris for committing yourself to everything I just taught. Thank you, mother. I shout happily. I almost threw up a few times when the organs came out. Mother laughed hearing those words. When I was your age I actually did. You're strong-minded honey. She puts a fish inside of the bread and places it on a plate on the kitchen table. Eat it. You'll love it. I eat while thinking about everything I did since yesterday while tearing up. Noticing this my mother smiles and eats without saying anything reminiscing of the days her mother taught her. After we finish eating mother says, you can go do whatever you'd like now, I'll wash the dishes, if you need anything I'll be here. All right mother, I'll go a bit to the field I have to water it up, do it softly as you just ate, let the food sink in before exercising. Sure will do. I walk outside with a straw hat on my head, as I move towards the field I check my status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 120 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 150 150, mana, 370 370 status points colon 1 strength, 4, stamina, 16, agility, 1, dexterity, 10, intelligence, 3, wisdom, 38 soul, 130 titles, reincarnated F, mana E, mana exhausts, health F, begin our readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series F, body training F, animal slayer E, fish court F, conserved fish A, plowing field C, fish type E, seed type C, watering field C, intermediate reader E, Fish processed F, cooked fish F, skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library 5 F. This is starting to have a lot of titles, seems like I'm doing a good job. The more titles the more statuses I'll eventually have as I believe not all titles give extra statuses. Seeing as some titles even decrease them like mana exhaust. At least it's maxed so I don't think I'll lose health anytime soon. Suddenly I trip on a rock and fall on the floor. Notice. Two health has been deducted. Ouch my knee. I voice my pain in words. Good thing I landed on grass but I still scrapped a little bit of it. Seems like it warns me when I lose health. It was quite the timing hurting myself when I said that I wouldn't be losing health. I lay down on the floor with my belly up as I rest. My body is still a bit sore from yesterday plowing the field. Notice. One health has been deducted. I lost health again. I feel the blood slipping through my leg. Bleeding makes me lose health. That's important to know. Can only wait for it to close. The sky is clear and beautiful. The very few white fluffy clouds floating in it. I see a bird coming down to my field. I get up and walk closer to it. It starts digging my hard worked field. I pick the hoe and throw it at him to scare him away. The hoe flies and by the time the bird noticed it, it gets crushed by it. System. The title preyed upon has been received. Ah, I run closer and see the poor bird dead. I didn't realize I had this much strength. I accidentally killed it and won a title. 
I lift the hoe from it and place it on the floor, I go grab a long leaf and surround the bird with it. I place him inside the straw basket, sorry birdie, I wonder if my mother can cook birds. I prepare the fishing rod and place a worm in it. I lift it while holding the bait to not get hurt. I put the worm box in the pocket well closed and walk south towards the direction where the river flows. I bring the basket with the leaves with me. After walking for 10 minutes I put the rod between two big rocks and I throw the line making it fall on the water. I look in the river transparent blue water and see my reflection in it. I wonder why my parents say I have green eyes. Every time I look at mirrors and places with reflections I see cold blue eyes. They feel nostalgic, but I can't seem to remember from where. Could they be part of the memories I can't seem to recover after I went into the attic on my past life? After a while, I catch a fish and a voice resounds in my mind. System. The title Fish Spot has been received. With this title. I've now acquired all the titles I learned by reading the fishing book. I walk further south after conserving the fish the way I did with the bird and a voice resounds in my head. System. The title fishing series has been received. I place another worm in the fishing rod while I think on this title. From what I've come to understand so far that these series always show up when I get a rank S from one of the titles that belong to it. If I'm right I should get some fishing title with that rank. Let's check status, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 120 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 170 170, mana, 360 380 status points colon 1 strength, 4, stamina, 18, agility, 3, Dexterity, 16, Intelligence, 4, Wisdom, 38 Soul, 130 Titles, Reincarnated F, Mana E, Mana Exhausts, Health D, Begin Our Readers, Purchase E, Wisdom F, Reader Series F, Body Training F, Animal Slayer E, Fish Court F, Conserved Fishes, Plowing Field C, Fish Type E, Seed Type C, Watering Field C, Intermediate Reader E, Fish Processed F, Cooked Fish F, Preyed Upon F, Fish Spot F, Fishing Series F, Skill Points, 2 Skills, Status Level 23 E, System Library 5 F, Hum, I look at the yellow screen in front of me searching for 1 R, Conserved Fish Rank S, it seems like I was right, in other words, like this, I know that the other fishing titles will eventually be maxed and then the fishing series will rank up for each maxed title all the way to S. Since it is like this, I can also understand how many titles there are in total. I start counting with my fingers, F, E, D, C, B, A, S, 7 ranks so 7 fishing titles. I look back at the screen, I have 5 titles so far. If I'm right then I'm missing two more titles. A snap sound is heard and a voice then resumes in my mind. System, the title broken wire has been received. I run at the water and get the hold of the wire that is running away with my metal bait. I do my best to pull the fish out of the water and as I do the wire starts hurting my hands. Notice, two health has been deducted. I don't give up and keep putting strength in the wire rotating it around my wrist. Notice, 6 health has been deducted, notice, the skill bleeding resistance has been acquired, a new skill, wait now is not the time, I put my feet back and start pulling with a lot of strength, notice, 8 health has been deducted, one last pull, ah, I shout and lift both arms up pulling the string as if I was holding the fishing rod, notice, 12 health has been deducted, notice, bleeding resistance skill has leveled up to 2. The fish falls on the grass splashing on the floor, it was the only bait I had, I did it, their skill leveled up that's pretty amazing. I breathe fast while closing my eyes, notice, 10 health has been deducted, the adrenaline and excitement were overwhelming the pain I was feeling. I unwire the wires from my wrists let them breathe, it's dripping a lot of blood and burning too, notice, 8 health has been deducted. I managed to get another title. I guess the last one could be a bit more hardcore and be breaking the rod, 
I put the wire that is the bait around a stick nearby then break the stick in half while doing a fishing pose. Notice, 8 health has been deducted. Notice, bleeding resistance skill has leveled up to 3. System, the title broken rod has been received. It actually worked like that. I repeat the idiocy I thought. Notice, 6 health has been deducted. I'm starting to lose less and less health. Seems like the new skill is taking effect. It's a little scary to be losing health like this, makes my heart race, but at the same time I know I have a lot of health now so I'll be fine. Notice, 4 health has been deducted. I do the broken rod stick trick one more time. Let's check the status. Notice, 3 health has been deducted. Notice, bleeding resistance skill has leveled up to 4. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 120 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 156 220, mana, 350 380 status points colon 1 strength, 4, stamina, 22, agility, 5, dexterity, 16, intelligence, 5, wisdom, 38 soul, 130 titles, reincarnated death, mana e, mana exhausts, health a, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series f, body training f, animal slayer e, fish court f, conserved fishes, plowing field c, fish type e, seed type c, watering field c, intermediate reader e, Fish processed F, cooked fish F, preyed upon F, fish spot F, fishing series F, breaking wire F, breaking rod Z. Skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library 5 F, bleeding resistance level 4 F. Seems like my health went up by a lot together with stamina and the title health. It's almost maxed. The title, breaking rods leveled up so I'll break some more rods the way I did. After breaking some more rods and losing a bit more health from bleeding I open the status again to see the changes that happened along with some voices I heard. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 120 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health. 210 280 mana 340 380 status points colon 1 strength 4 stamina 28 agility 17 dexterity 18 intelligence 5 wisdom 38 soul 130 titles reincarnated death mana e mana exhausts healths begin our readers purchase e wisdom f reader series f Body Training F, Animal Slayer E, Fish Court F, Conserved Fishes, Plowing Field C, Fish Type E, Seed Type C, Watering Field C, Intermediate Reader E, Fish Processed F, Cooked Fish F, Preyed Upon F, Fish Spot F, Fishing Series E, Breaking Wire F, Breaking Rods is Skill Points, 2 Skills, Status Level 23 E, System Library 5 F. Bleeding resistance level 5F. Seems like I was right. The rod title completed and the fishing series went up a little. Now to break this wire 10 times. Let's see if it'll be enough. I'll tie it to my bamboo fishing rod every time just in case. After a while, I open the status to check if it worked. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System. The title cheater has been received. Status. Level. 1. Experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 220 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 210 280, mana, 330 380 status points colon 1 strength, 4, stamina, 28, agility, 20, dexterity, 21, intelligence, 16, wisdom, 38 soul. 230 titles, reincarnated death, mana e, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series f, body training f, animal slayer e, fish court f, 
conserved fishes, plowing field C, fish type E, seed type C, watering field C, intermediate reader E, fish processed F, cooked fish F, preyed upon F, fish spot F, fishing series D, breaking wires, breaking rods is, cheetah, S, skill points, 2 skills, status level 23 E, system library 5F, bleeding resistance level 5F, cheetah title, rank S, I laugh loud for some minutes, seems like disgrace went up a lot, well sooner or later I would have ended up finishing the titles, so I don't think the system is actually mad at me. In fact, having a title for such occasions seems like it expected someone to do it, it sure was quite a surprise, my status has come a long way I even got a new skill, I'm really happy, I knot the bamboo wire to the bait and place another worm in it while smiling, I get closer to the river since I lost some wire and place it on the water, I place the fish I left in the ground from the earlier struggle inside the straw basket, it's a good thing I learned how to knot with mother otherwise I'd be screwed right now, can't be always depending on my parents, I spend a few hours fishing. I return home after fishing and watering the field with my body extra sore and my wounds healed, I was able to get 4 fishes in total and 2 new types of them. Hello my beautiful daughter, where have you been? Hey dad, I was fishing and watering the fields, I approach him and show him what I caught, is that a bird? Did you hunt it? How? Ah, the bird was actually an accident, I kind of threw the hoe to scare him away from digging my fields and it fell on him. Sorry for it but it won't be wasted, can make a meat stew with it, dad smiles kindly at me, I smile back as I feel reassured by his words, if you'd like while I rest a bit from work you can handle the fish and then we can go learn some magic, sure, I reply happily, after an hour, I return to the living room sitting on the sofa next to dad, Rosalind come here a moment, dad shouts, I'm here Luke, she walks into the living room, have a seat, Iris, we're now going to do a little test to see what element you possess, dad left then brought a cup of water and said, so Iris it is important to know that there are four basic elements, four basic elements, yes daughter, they're known as fire, water, earth, and air, basic elements, does that mean there are other types, I questioned, there exists a couple of rare and unique elements as well, one of them being the one I have unique light element, oh, so dad is a species in extinction, my parents started laughing, yes, you could say that my funny little daughter, dad patted my head while I smile happily, mother placed her hands in the cup of water and a thin aura of mana surrounded her hands embracing the cup, I stare at it intensively as the water became bluer and bluer, wow, such a pretty blue color mum, what does that mean, my mother smiles and as she's about to reply, I say, is it perhaps water since it's bluer than it was before? It certainly is my dear Iris, mother here has the basic water element and dad uses the unique light element, water and light, wondering if I'll get either of them. I don't have a secondary element, however, I'm great with weapons, so I haven't really put much effort into magic as your dad did. Here give it a try, she smiles while pointing towards the cup. So, which of you is stronger? I asked curiously. Dad laughed and started rubbing his chin, well you see, mother is far stronger than me, mom laughs at dad's reaction as he explained, I'm more of a stay far away healer kind of ex-adventurer, dad keeps on laughing embarrassed, is it possible to have more than one main element, I questioned, it's not impossible people usually inherit the elements from their parents, sometimes they even receive a new one, rarely the elements combine with each other giving birth to a new one, dad explained, that's a lot of possibilities, worst case you'll have only one element, in the best case you'll get two or three, mother said, well, there's also a usual rule for us humans, where we don't get to master opposite elements, mastering opposite elements, I look confused at them, for example, how some monsters can both use water and fire, dad clarified, oh okay, that makes sense, monsters are capable of having a deeper understanding of magic than us as they use it from the moment they're born, upon hearing that dad added, demons, however, are a bit more similar to us elementally speaking, in what way dad, they usually don't master opposite elements, however, 
They have a lot more mana than us. Is there anything special about having more mana? I asked I have a decent amount of it. Yes, a demon usually is able to put more mana into a spell making it stronger. That's quite useful. For future reference, if you ever see a demon, don't hesitate to run. Dad said with the most serious face I'd ever seen. How come? Father here wouldn't want to see his cute daughter die. I gulped. I definitely find and chase that demon even if I had to go to the deepest ends of the world to kill him, mother said with a scary face. They sure love me too much. I smiled kindly to them. Well then here goes nothing. I placed my hands around the cup and I focus all my mana in the water inside while staring at it to find out its color. As my mana flows through the water glass a cold aura starts surrounding me. The water shape started to change slowly. The mother who was sitting next to her husband started whispering to him a bit after the water started giving off a reaction. Dad looked at her and heard her voice saying, This cold aura is giving me chills honey. Dad too started feeling cold from Iris's aura. It seems like our baby will be quite the ice mage in the future, Dad said while his hands were shivering. Notice. Element has been unlocked in status. The water slowly froze on top of the glass leaving a thin crystal clear layer, and as it did, I saw it. I saw my reflection, and in it, a very evil, wicked, and terrifying smile from someone nostalgic to me resided. The face that fills the small reflection inside of the cup gets slowly further away from me, without me moving and then the image stops moving. She looks really focused, mom thought proudly. I see the full body of a girl who extends her hand towards me and one of my hands moves on its own in response. It leaves the cup and heads towards the water slowly as I lose myself in a trance. Then my icy aura starts to change becoming darker creating an ominous aura. Notice, Soulbound has reacted. It has been unlocked in status skill. As I'm about to hit my finger in the thin ice layer, I feel something stopping my arm or someone. I look up and there he is. My father. He seems to be talking to me with a concerned face, but I can't hear him at all. I feel drained. I think I use too much mana. I need to check my status and look at it. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 420 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 5340, mana, 0 380 status points colon 1 strength, 5, stamina, 34, agility, 22, dexterity, 24, intelligence, 20, wisdom, 38 soul, 260 titles, reincarnated f, mana e, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series f, body training f, animal slayer d, fish court d, conserved fishes, plowing field c, fish type c, seed type c, watering fields, intermediate reader e, fish process t, cooked fish e, preyed upon f, fish spot d, fishing series d, breaking wires, breaking rods is, cheetah, s, farming series f, heritages, amalgams, ices, skill points, two skills, status level 25 e, system library 5f, bleeding resistance level 5f, rare element, ice, soul bound, seems like my parents even went as far as to provide me with a rare element for magic, I'm truly grateful. I sit back placing my head on the sofa as I let my voice out, my mana and health have been mostly exhausted I feel so tired dad, mother, we were so worried, they said in unison, wait your health heal, Luke shouted as he used a skill on Iris, after a while, my health is fully recovered, so that's what happened, you overdid your mana usage, well sometimes when we overuse mana we use health in mana place. That's how some beasts and the monsters use skills. We do forget you're still so young sometimes due to how mature you are baby. My mother said with a sad look on her face. We're such bad parents, my parents look at me with sad faces. Not at all Rosalind my dear mother, Luke my dear father, you're the best parents I could ask for, I, I love you both. I close my eyes and fall asleep. Can you take her to the bed honey? Yes. 
Of course, Luke grabbed Iris and took her to bed, then he returned. Welcome back dear, say what do you think about what just happened? Rosalind showed a concerned and sad expression to Luke. That felt truly eerie I've never seen such compatibility between elements especially a rare one such as ice and the unique element dark. It did feel incredibly powerful. I've never heard of any human possessing a rare element with a unique element. I haven't either. Just having one of each grade is already considered being very lucky. A serious and pensive expression was shown on Luke's face. I know our daughter is very special from what you told me having two skills since birth. But even so that was something else entirely. What should we do honey? Luke thought then started speaking about what he studied in the past. I think that in the end exceptions are bound to appear. Three basic elements are considered normal or two basic and one rare, unique. Thinking like that having one of each grade doesn't sound bad right? Yes, you're right honey, but I'm not worried about her having a rare with a unique one. I'm worried about the uniques being dark one. I know dear, the church hates demons, and they're known for using that element. There have been demons with light elements too. Indeed Rosalind, the church needs to stop discriminating people the way they do. Luke hugged Rosalind softly. In times Goddess Aria had reincarnated and summoned random individuals from other worlds and granted them unique and blessed skills. These allowed them to become strong in a short time. Furthermore, if she summoned them, they'd be able to maintain their current body and age. Especially so if she liked the appearances that they had in their former worlds. This world currently consists of a large human kingdom called Lumen, but even all 10 million humans together only amount to 10% of the entire world population. Arya Goddess is known for loving humans the most out of all the races. She didn't help them expand to other territories or annihilate the other races. In times of great crisis, she summoned these so-called heroes to help the two existent kingdoms. In the end, these heroes would age and die, that way the balance between the different races in the world would remain. There is a certain law that disables the goddess from meddling with the soul of a being once it has gone through the reincarnation portal. There is more than one god thus there is also more than one reincarnation portal. She ordered her servants to put the random souls that arrived directly in her portal as long as the souls came from the world of Artana. Thus, Iris's soul went through without any meddling. In fact, upon going through the portal it received a boost from the system. In a failed attempt to break the contract between Iris and her other soul the link between them became stronger. In Iris's case, due to the system failure, her soul got stronger. But this was only one of two consequences. This fact would remain unaware to the goddess Arya for a long time as souls kept pouring every day, and the servant forgot about it soon after what he did. I leave my bed after sleeping for what feels like an eternity. Outside it's raining. Upon going through my room door, I head towards our kitchen. Good morning sleepyhead. My mom greets me with a smile. Good morning mom. I retribute the smile. Are you feeling better now my dear daughter? She asks with a serious and concerned expression. Yes, mom I feel like I've recharged my mana. I voice myself loudly and cheerfully so she doesn't worry. Good good. I'm glad honey, here come to sit next to me and eat some bread with butter. Mother signaled me with her hand to sit in the chair next to her. Has dad gone to work already? Yes. He had some important matters to deal with. All right. Well. You see, about yesterday you- Yesterday? Oh, right I discovered my element was ice, but shouldn't she be happy about it? It's supposed to be a good element. No? You see Iris, you may not have realized but yesterday when you were doing the test to see what element you had. You- Yes? I replied confused. You showed a different element than the ice one you initially showed us. Mom said with a concerned expression. A different element? Didn't I just use ice? What are you talking about mom? I only used ice. I laughed a little to cease her worries. No, you did not dear. In fact, we saw a different element in your aura even if it wasn't for a long time. Ah, uh, what? Dad said it was an element usually used by high rank demons the unique dark element. Dark element? Status open. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1. Experience 0 100 fame, 0, disgrace, 420 class, none race, human, name, iris, 7 years old health, 
340-340, mana, 380-390 status points colon 1 strength, 5, stamina, 34, agility, 22, dexterity, 24, intelligence, 20, wisdom, 39 soul, 260 titles, reincarnated f, mana d, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, Reader Series F, Body Training F, Animal Slayer D, Fish Court D, Conserved Fishes, Plowing Field C, Fish Type C, Seed Type C, Watering Fields, Intermediate Reader E, Fish Process T, Cooked Fish E, Preyed Upon F, Fish Spot D, Fishing Series D, Breaking Wires, Breaking Rods is, Cheetah S, Farming Series F, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Skill Points, 2 Skills, Status Level 25E, System Library 5F, Bleeding Resistance Level 5F, Rare Element, Ice, Soul Bound, See I Knew It, I Don't Have a Dark Element, Mother, I Really Don't Have the Dark Element, I Only Have the Ice Element, I Said With Eyes Brimming With Confidence, But We Saw It Dear, Rosalyn Went Deep Into Thought. I just checked my status and the only element I have there is ice, I even received a title with the same name, I believe you daughter, she holds my hands, maybe the reason my aura changed was that I lost health while having no more mana, I don't think so baby girl, I suppose it is your second element just that you're not ready to use it, well if that's the case I just have to get stronger, and in the end, it is my element the more the merrier right, yes, of course, just don't tell anyone you might have it. The church hates that element. The church? The race they hate the most is demons, a lot of them use that element, and their god also has a big rivalry with goddess Arya. A rivalry between gods affects races? It is a complicated matter, but yes. I figured from the stories I've read that our advantage was having the heroes summoned by the goddess Arya. Yet if other races who are already stronger than our also have a god to support them as well then. Mother, I'd like to become stronger and enter the Adventurer Guild or the Magic Institute or even the Battle Academia. Rosalind looked at Iris with a serious expression. If the day comes where you can beat me in a duel then I'll allow you to attempt the Adventurer Guild entrance exam. The other two are very, very expensive. Sadly we can't afford it. I understand. I get up from the table and then I sit again. I was about to go do some laps but I just remembered it's raining outside. Mother started laughing upon hearing my words losing the serious expression she had. We spend the day cooking the fish and my mother teaches me how to pluck the bird feathers and cook it. One year later, after the training started with dad and mother, the river is so pretty mother. I can't get enough of living near it. It sure is dear. You can go closer if you'd like. Just don't go too deep to not wet your dress. I extend my hand towards my mother while smiling who then grabs it joyfully. This way for sure I won't fall into an accident. My daughter is so smart. Just like my parents. Sit here Iris close to the water I want to show you something you'll enjoy. I take a seat next to mother while facing the river. Our elements are different yet they're the same. How so mum? Your element is a variation of my element. It seems you took after me instead of dad who actually uses magic the most. You're saying that because when the ice melts it becomes water? Yes, in other words, let's use what Luke taught you this past year in this river. I'll do it first. Rosalind's hands aimed at the water and as she did a mana aura started pouring out of them towards the river water. When it connected to the water, the mana and the water merged and it started flowing upwards. Then while above the river water level, it started making circles in the air, squares, triangles, and then it splashed in all directions. Both of them were splashed with a bit of it and started laughing. All right my dear, try it. I focus on my mana extends its aura who reaches out for the river as it pours out from my body. Once the water starts going up, Due to my natural ice affinity it freezes the liquid making it shine beautifully. I start to make an ice pillar which proves to be the easiest and then a square, a triangle on top of it like a small house, and then a circle next to it which ends up rather strange looking. Notice, 60 mana has been deducted. Lastly, I try splashing it but it does not work. So instead, I attempt shooting ice instead. 
Upon getting up I aim at one of the trees on the other side of the river. The mana that was already in ice form, forced an ice spike to pour out from it, sending a piece of ice that flies over the river for two centimeters falling back to the water shortly after. Notice, twenty mana has been deducted. With a disappointed tone, I voice out my displeasure. It didn't work. Why didn't it? I look at my mother with a somewhat sad expression. And as I do, my eyes gaze upon a very happy expression from Rosalyn. You might truly be a prodigy my dear Iris, but nonetheless you didn't expect to learn how to shoot with your element in one go did you? I kind of did. Silly pumpkin these things take their time be it martial arts or magic. In the end, they're both skills, and they take time to learn. I understand. I'll keep trying. After practicing for a while shooting more 19 ice spikes each costing around 20 mana. Come sit with me let's eat so you can rest dear. After training for a year I learned two active skills, and four passive skills, ones that represent my mastery about something. I've been leveling them up and learned everything I could from my parents, and now we're celebrating with a picnic. Even though dad is currently at work. He's busy as ever. This strawberry jam we made from the field is so sweet. I smile while eating it with bread. Indeed daughter, we sure did an amazing job with the farming. There have even been some merchants trying to buy our products. I giggle joyfully after chewing another bite of it. It's not a bad thing if you do decide on selling some of the stuff you have. I barely spend money on vegetables and fruits nowadays. I might do that at some point. If you do talk with Rowan. He's a friend of ours as you know. He's a good merchant, will do mother. It's also a shame you stopped fishing, the fish you caught was very good and fresh. It literally came straight from the river mother. I smile stating the obvious making my mother chuckle charmingly. I ended up selling the rod and a few boxes of worms I produced through farming as I finished the fishing titles. They all disappeared when I did. Same for farming titles, but I can't just sell the fields as my mother still takes care of them, and ends up saving us some money. I've tried a lot of different things with my element but sadly haven't won any active skill. Dad told me it was quite normal as he himself took a while learning his. It was in a desperate moment where a friend got hurt that he learned to heal. In a different time, he learned to protect when he saw an arrow heading to a party member from his old group of adventurers. He taught me what he knew about magic, how to control mana, how to control my ice element. My training with both ended recently and now I'm just enjoying these moments while I try to discover my elemental skills. I've been so busy this past year handling the farming and mother training exhausted my body every day. Then mentally being lectured by dad and spending my mana in exercises he created. In the end, I learned close combat and ranged combat from both, so I haven't decided where to place my skill points and what skills to learn. I've had a look at the possibilities, both active skills that require mana to charge and use, and passive ones that increase the expertise in some way. It was a long list of skills with just names, it didn't even say what they did. So I just had to guess. Mother chose her class when she was 13, and I'm 8, so I still have time to decide. I still haven't recovered my memories, and I'm still stuck at level 1. I think I'll have the talk with Mother today about joining the Adventurers Guild, and taking their exam. From our last spa, we managed to draw without her using any skill. She calls me a prodigy because I'm strong for my age but it was the collection of titles that allowed me to grow strong. Also the training I did with both, without everything I wouldn't have been able to reach this far. I've been trying a lot of things with my ice element, mostly ice forms like mom taught me. From time to time, when I'm bored, I try to make sculptures of ice. The best one was a little bunny that looked a bit identical. On that day I ran as fast as I could to show mother, but by the time I got home it melted partially. I let out a sigh, it was worse when I remembered afterward that I could have simply used my ice aura to keep it frozen. At least I made parents laugh when I arrived at them with my watery hands. Lately, I've been trying to find ways to use my ice magic in an offensive way, but I've been mostly successful in using it as a defense. My favorite trick is to freeze the ground when my mother tries to come after me during our sparring sessions. She ends up slipping and sometimes I get a hit on her. 
Are you ready daughter? Yes. Let's go then. Please do bring the bag. Sure mum. I smile at her. We leave the garden where we had our breakfast and head to the village. Mother wants to go shopping with me today. A precious date to the village. With my beautiful daughter, she lets out a big smile. I look at my short legs. I'd like to grow faster. Mother almost mind reading me speaks. Don't worry dear, you'll grow with time. I want it to be fast. I shout happily. I like you as my baby doll so grow slowly. She smiles kindly. A doll. A miniature Rosalind. I smile making my mother giggle happily at it. As we walk our hands connect tightly, making it look like a very adorable scene. A while after we arrive at the village, the guards at the south gate greet us. Good morning Miss Rosalind. Good morning gentlemen how are you today? Quite good. Who's this little girl with pretty green eyes? The man approaches me suddenly attempting to catch my arm getting me surprised in a panic. Without realizing it, like a marionette my body moves on my own stepping back while freezing two of his fingers. Notice, 30 mana has been deducted. What the fuck my fingers hurts. This little bitch I'll kill you. A pained expression was painted on his face. He looked at the state of the fingers and then shouted to the other guard. Tyler you're a fire type, right? Melt this for me. Hum? Yeah sure. He put his hand on top of Tyson's melting the ice. Are you okay Tyson? Mother asked with a natural tone. Yeah. Don't worry, didn't expect such a cute little girl to be a tiger on the inside. He laughed as the pain got alleviated. Sorry, you startled me. I replied shyly while looking to the floor. It happens don't worry. It was my bad for scaring you. This girl should have been my daughter instead of that guy's. He closed and opened his hand multiple times. It's fixed. Thank you, Tyler. You're welcome partner go put on a bandage for the burns from the ice. All right, talk with you another time Rosalyn have a nice day. The man walks away hiding his anger. Let us go do some shopping Iris, see you soon Tyler. All right, mum. The leftover guard speaks to mother. Have a good day Rosalyn. He stares at me with a serious expression and adds, stay out of trouble young one. Yes. After we walk a bit mom speaks with a serious expression. Didn't know you were a scaredy cat, Iris. I'm not sure myself. My body just moved on its own. Sounds like I should have trained you less hard. My mother laughed happily. You're not mad? I ask making a confused expression while looking at her in the eyes. Not at all. It's not like he asked for permission to touch my daughter. I take a deep breath feeling relieved. He didn't have bad intentions or anything, but that person is a bit annoying always trying to flirt whenever I pass by. Flirt? It is an act of seducing attempt plus if in the future be it a man, a woman or even a monster or anything tries to do anything bad to you. Yes? Hurt them if you must so they stop. Sadly I or your dad might not be there to protect you. I understand. Rosalind pats my hair and then adds, but don't forget to be kind to those who treat you good. I look at my mother smiling beautifully full of kindness. He used to be an adventurer and me and Luke would party with him sometimes. They'd fight over me. But dad won. I replied happily. Exactly. She smiled upon hearing my words, making me giggle joyfully between them. Dad is better. Mother laughs. I agree with you dear. Her expression became even brighter. As we walk I look around noticing the fountain, surrounded by a garden and kids playing. Eventually stopping while checking them out. Due to these actions, my mother notices me and tells me to go play with them while she heads to do some shopping nearby. There's a lot of villagers around and also parents checking up on their kids. So just don't leave this little garden. All right mom. I give the bag to mum. If anything happens, I'm in that house over there. She points towards one while my green eyes follow through. I nodded then ran at the kids to play with them. Rosalind heads to the general shop to buy some groceries. I don't see Elise among them. Perhaps another time we'll meet. They're playing a game called Stop. I put myself in a horizontal line with the rest of the kids. I stare at them to see how it's played. After a few minutes I understand. There's a person in front of all of us at the wall and he counts sometimes fast sometimes slow. When he finishes counting, he shouts the word stop and then turns around. If he sees anyone moving, they go back to the starting line. We also can't move while he's watching. 
we must remain still like statues. Whoever hits the wall takes his place, everyone goes back in line and the game starts anew. I spend about two hours playing with the kids then my mother picks me up and we head back home. Did you have fun dear? Yes mother, we were playing a game called stop. Ah, I used to play that game when I was young, along with some others. Did you look like me when you were younger? Yes, even though you're a lot prettier, especially with those green eyes of yours. I blushed with the compliment, despite knowing that my eyes aren't green as I see them being clear blue when I see a mirror or any other reflection. Thank you, mother. Noticing my cheeks becoming rosy she speaks in a teasing yet happy tone. Look at you blushing. My daughter is so adorable. Mother hugs me increasing the effect, making me lower my expression causing a smile to appear. On the following day, I wake up early as always. Today is the day. I'll ask for permission from mother. This past week has been quite a blessing towards resting. Haven't felt my body so light like now for a while. I go pee then shower and then wear a green dress. Mother loves to see me in dresses. I head towards the living room and find her. Good morning mother. I bow while raising my dress skirt as skillfully as I can. Good morning daughter. That was flawless. I smiled at her and said. I did learn with the best. I had some etiquette lessons in my past life and it was pretty similar to this world customary. Despite we being peasants mother and father have strong connections to very important nobles. Further works in a potion shop, and due to his past and light element, he heals the prince's friends. Thanks to that he has never publicized the fact that he has a daughter since it could put me at risk. There are many political factions in the kingdom who seek to raise in status. Around 800 high noble families are attempting to reach the pinnacle of nobility. Personally, I don't know much about it. Once I'm able to enter the guild adventurer gaining more freedom, I'll start leveling up my system library skill. Then I'll start checking for political books about Lumen Kingdom. Mother, I'd like your permission to enter the adventurer's guild. Upon hearing my words her proud happy smile turned into a serious expression. I told you, you'd have to beat me in a spa for that, she said rigidly and coldly. Sure. I smile happily as I always do. I head towards the exit. Does she really think she can beat me? Rosalind thought to herself confused. It seems like scaring her didn't work. A few moments later. We face each other face to face while holding the usual wooden swords we used to train with. Being ten meters apart mother starts running towards me to get the first strike in. As she gets closer I freeze the ground beneath her where she's going to step next. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. She loses her footing, losing balance and I strike her body making her fall. I smile at her innocently. Mother gets up upset and starts running at me this time I see her expression upset and she charges mana. I throw my sword in her direction and freeze her feet to the ground, then dash at her as she parries my sword back. Notice, 30 mana has been deducted. Notice, the skill I spined has been acquired. Mother lets out a moan of pain due to the ice. My first active ice skill. Without losing focus I grab the sword that is thrown back at me then run around her to strike her on a blind spot. She screams and breaks the ice with pure raw strength, and then charges at me with her lunge skill. With one hand I strike and the other I sneak some ice under her freezing the ground. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Realizing this typical trick of mine she jumps over the ice and I dash to it sliding under her. I quickly get up and turn around grabbing the wooden sword with both hands. Then I use the skill mana coat to cover it with an aura. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. The sword starts shining and in response mother covers her own sword with mana. I'll go serious and scare mother, I increase the mana coat with 400 more mana. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. This is my trick in the sleeve that mother doesn't know I've acquired. We dash at each other and as our swords collide, hers falls on the ground cut in half and then I shout, mana wave. A wave made of mana flies towards the ground without hitting her creating a long slice in the ground. I fall on my knees exhausted from using almost all my mana. Mother has a dumbfounded expression as she sees that I could have sliced her in half. What in the hell was that iris? That was mana wave mother. A skill the opposite of mana coat. I learnt it by overcharging mana in the mana coat to see what would happen. Then when I sliced, 
the Mano went on cutting a part of a tree. Daughter you're actually insane for trying random things like that. You could have gotten yourself hurt. I was careful, but I can't help but be curious and try new things to become stronger. I still find myself too weak. She puts herself on her knees and hugs me. You're not weak at all dear. If you wanted you could have defeated me with that one strike. I wasn't aware of it. That's what I'm good at. Surprising you. I laugh. Mother started laughing upon hearing those words. Dear, you shouldn't use that skill in real combat as it seems to consume too much mana. Why? If you do that you won't have more mana if you need, so you should learn how to control that skill first as well as mana coat. Okay, mother I will. The higher the level the more power you'll be able to use, but your mana control will have to keep up with it. That's why your dad has made you try a lot of exercises to increase your control above all else firstly. It is more important to have control over power since if you use it in a fight and use this amazing skill that absorbs your mana it can also absorb your health cues it went out of control. Then you can get easily killed and that would backfire dear. You're right mother, I'll be careful and train both things as much as I can. Good girl. She pats my hair. Also that ice skill you use to freeze my feet. If you put more power into it, it should be able to freeze strong creatures. You think? Yes dear. You might even freeze them whole if needed. I feel like the reason you took so long to learn ice skills was because you're scared of hurting others. Well, now that mother mentions it, it could indeed be the issue. I didn't want to hurt you and only when I hurt you that I did receive a skill, I spined. Unlike dad's healing and protecting light magic, yours is both defensive and offensive, like how you could possibly make an ice wall to protect yourself from an enemy skill, that sounds cool. I could block a fireball. Yes baby, but while the wall is defending you, finding ways to attack your opponent while he's busy destroying it is a must. Otherwise the wall melts and his next skills will hurt you. A lot to learn and try. I have to be creative. Exactly Iris and things will become harder when you learn the darkness element. The possibilities of what you can do will surely increase. The unique dark element. If I truly have it then surely I'd have some interesting skills to try. Seeing as you've come this far allow me to tell you a story of when I was a little older than you. We move a bit to the side and then sit in front of each other. 20 years ago, when I was 15, ended up wandering around the city where I casually found an old man with ragged clothes on. He looked extremely poor even though a sword was next to him which at the time was the only thing of value with him. As I was passing by him, he spoke to me and asked if I could give him some money to buy food, and out of sympathy I bought him some food. He thanked me and then I left. Later that day after being declined by several dojos, I ended up going towards the last one on the list. One that did not belong to any noble family. Back then when I saw the dojo for the first time it looked cheap. It was just next to a small house. It looked very simple and old. Since I had nothing to lose I went inside of it and there ended up meeting the man I offered food early that day. He was teaching a girl named Sylvia who later I got to know was the same age as me, and eventually we became good friends. However, after spending some time training with them, I realized the disparity between the two of us. The teacher had accepted to teach me out of the kindness he received that day, as he only selected the most talented disciples while he polished the basic swordsmanship I had. The one I taught you that still has a long way to go, and in the future. You may even learn with him if you'd like to follow the path of the sword. To my friend Sylvia, he taught very advanced swordsmanship, some of it that to this day I completely gave up trying to learn, however, I sparred daily with Sylvia. Thanks to that I learned how to mana coat, in other words, infusing mana into the sword creating an aura around it which was what you displayed today but that mana wave you did I believe it should either be a medium or an advanced swordsmanship skill. A truly prodigious one, does that mean, I'm actually proficient enough to perhaps have a chance to take this path of the sword you mentioned mother? Yes, baby daughter, I do believe so, we smile at each other. After discussing a lot of possibilities after the story, we head inside the house to rest. Once we arrive we drink some water and sit on the sofa. Regarding the adventurer's guild you're allowed to take the exam. I'll write a letter that is my approval. Do I have to duel dad too? No silly daughter, 
He's not even the offensive type, but I'm sure he'd manage to beat you. What? How? I ask confused as I didn't expect that since my mother is stronger than him. Let's just say he's tricky like you. That does make me want to try. You sound like a battle maniac, Iris. A what? Is what we call people that love to duel others. And will fight in general. Oh, I guess I have fun fighting. People with the sense of wanting to become stronger usually do. If you'd like you can go to the Adventurers Guild later today and take the exam. With sparkling eyes. I say, I'd love to. Mother gets up and writes a letter. Once she's done. She gives me the paper. Here you go, make sure you recover your mana first. Okay mother, I head to bed to rest a bit. Every year a tournament in the Lumen Kingdom is made. The top 10 candidates out of all the participants get to win a recommendation letter signed by the king. The letter allows the candidate choice to become sponsored by the king itself. In other words, it becomes free, and a way for peasants to join. With it, one can enter either the Battle Academia that is usually for nobles only, where they can learn martial arts, there's also a magic institute where one can learn from the best teachers in the kingdom, only children from 7 to 15 years can enter the annual tournament, as 16 years and above, they're considered young adults. Above 15 the noble family usually have their kids marry other families for power rise since it's the legal time for marriage. The tournament is regulated with a stone similar to the Adventurer's Guild stone. In other words, they can confirm the age of the individual. There are also the royal guards who reside by the king since it is an event provided by his grace. There are also the mages who stop the combats if they get out of hand. In order to avoid casualties, that's the reason why the age permitted goes as down as seven years since it's relatively safe. There are usually one or two heavily injured participants at most and normally no deaths in these tournaments. Iris's parents aren't nobles. They live on the south border of the Lumen Kingdom. They're not essentially poor. However, the price to study in the Battle Academia or the Magic Institute is truly expensive. Therefore, mostly nobles study there. The recommendation letter can also be used in two more places although the winners generally don't go for them. One is the Adventurers Guild where they start in a higher rank than usual skipping the easy F and D ranks. The other is the church where they usually become either a priest or a paladin. It is one of the few events where the strongest four forces of the Lumen Kingdom join together to watch the new talents. The king, his children and the royal guards where the strongest swordsman resides. The Pope and the Saintess along with their elite paladins and priests where they recruit strong people. There's also the man who is known as the strongest magician of Lumen who is the head of the Magic Institute. Lastly, the Adventurer's Guild Master, who is one of the strongest martial artists of the kingdom. Point of view Saintess. That nightmare again. Where an army in black comes to destroy our Lumen kingdom. It's been eight years since I've had it. Since it has now happened twice. It is not a dream but a premonition that my heritage skill oracle has shown me. I inherited this skill from my mother the past saintess. Forever I've lived inside this chapel in the name of the goddess area. Yet I haven't received any message from her about this premonition. I'm worried, as much as I don't care about my job, I do care about my life thus I can only pray for the goddess to aid us. That man, Krause the Pope has been doing his best to recruit talented martial artists and mages with rare elements to increase our power. For the day the invasion happens is to come, we must bolster our forces while we can. I've been going to every annual tournament to recruit new soldiers for our cause, however, not many of the top winners are interested in us. Even the ones below the top 10 didn't want to join us due to the church being a very secluded and strict force. Unlike the royalty, we don't pay the soldiers as much money as we're not as wealthy. On top of that, we're very strict with our doctrines and duties towards serving the goddess Arya. We are a religious bunch I know. I personally am not happy with my job. But if it wasn't for it, and my mother, certainly, the generations in the past from the kingdom of Lumen wouldn't have survived as long as they did. She looks at the mirror in front of her sighing. Being the saintess sure is tough. Later the day I and mother arrive at the village. Iris, here's the paper signed in case you pass the exam. I save it in one of my blue dress pockets. In case the receptionist insists on having me go there personally just let me know. 
Good luck dear, and be careful, okay? Yes, mother I will. I hug her waist. She pats my hair while smiling. I move towards the path mom told me. The village is pretty big, with a lot of houses a few wells, and even a fountain surrounded by a garden with some wooden benches. I see people resting there, some are reading books, others are relaxing while receiving the sunlight. There are a lot of kids around my height playing around with each other. From what I've observed so far it looks like it's a game called tag. The one who catches someone, has to be the one catching someone else afterward. One of the kids finds me staring at them, he runs towards me and catches me. He looks at me and says, I'm Miles and now you're it, he runs away. Some of the kids around him stare at me surprised for seeing me. Seeing as there's no one else with blonde hair. It could be due to that. I touch my long hair. Sometimes the kids of the village have this reaction especially since I barely drop by since I was born. I shout making a funny face. My name is Iris and I'm coming to catch all of you. They heard me and started laughing and then they started running away from me. I looked at them and started running after them, eventually. I caught a girl whom I ended up befriending. A black haired girl with black eyes. She's cute and is one year older than me named Alicia. The white dress she's wearing is very beautiful. It is white roses scattered on it. It looks expensive. I spent a few hours playing with them. Ah, that sure was fun. You're right Tyrus. I'm glad you enjoyed playing with us. It's the first time I've seen you are you from the kingdom? Oh, no I actually live in a house a bit further to the south from the village. I didn't know that there were houses that far. My mother has blonde hair and she works here maybe you've seen her around? I don't think I've ever seen any women with a hair like yours in this village. But I'm not from here so that's weird since mother works here. I think ignoring the last part of what she told me. Oh, by the way, Alicia, would you take me to the Adventurers Guild? Yes, of course. I'll take you there come. She extended her hand towards me and I held it. I've only held hands with my parents. It feels like I made a friend other than them. Even though it's too early to be sure, we go through the village and she shows me the existent inns where people rent rooms, the local blacksmith where three men work, one of them being a dwarf where I bought my fishing rod. It seems like her dad came here earlier. There's a potion shop where my parents work, a general shop, and a herbs shop. After a while she points at a specific place. She says, this is my favorite shop. A clothes shop. I and mum always come here. We continue walking and soon she stops. It's here Iris. She points at the wooden sign above the door it says Adventurers Guild. I start moving towards the entrance and I feel my hand stuck behind me. I turn my face around. What's wrong Alicia? Ah. That place is filled with dangerous people so I don't want to enter. Oh, alright in that case go back to the fountain. I'll meet you there when I'm done. I said smiling, all right, it's a promise, I'll be waiting for you, Iris. I waved goodbye as I entered the guild's house through two large wooden doors where we only have to push them forward, as I slowly walk to the lady behind the balcony at the end of this big hall. A lot of people start staring at me and a few commenting with one another. One of them stops in front of me, and asks me, are you lost kiddo? I look at him lifting my face hard due to the difference in heights. Thank you for your concern but I'm where I need to be. I smile kindly and walk around him smoothly making my hair wave to my back. He turns around and grabs my hair causing me pain. This is an interesting hair color you have here. I turn around and glare at him covering my body with mana, creating a chill aura around me. The hall goes silent. I hear a voice from one of the tables. Is she really thinking of using magic against an adventurer? A kid's magic is nothing compared to an adult. A different male voice next to the woman commented. That's true, her mana would run before doing anything to him. The people around me started laughing at their commentaries. Whoa, whoa, no need to look so cold I was just curious. He lets go of my hair. The next time you touch me, you'll lose your hand, I say while glaring with my deep green eyes. The adventurers, men, and women started whistling and laughing at my words. I keep moving, and the moment I do I feel pain from my hair being grabbed again. I turn around and glare at him. I put my small hand on top of his wrist and start freezing it. 
notice, 100 mana has been deducted, a nice burst of mana you have there, for a kid that is, he started laughing at me, oh, look at her, she's truly using magic, and going all out at that, the woman on the table commented laughing, everyone laughed, the man in front of me started pulling my hair strongly, mana coat, I say coldly while in pain, focusing the best I can increasing my mana output as I do with my sword, notice, 500 mana has been deducted, the man's face turned pale as the amount of mana I used burst his, upon looking at his face, I say, I warned you, I put all my strength in my hand and smash his freeing my hair, beautiful white shards glowing in a mix of red with blue inside started falling on the floor, I let go of his handless wrist and turn around, I start walking to the receptionist, the man started screaming due to the mental shock that he lost his hand, he felt no pain from having his hand smashed to pieces since, I had frozen it, everyone stood up and glared at me, and when two of them were about to make their move on me, what's all this noise you good for nothing idiots, silence reigned when the man shouted close to the balcony, so, you guys call yourselves adventurers, ganging up on a little girl when Tony was the one at wrong, have you guys no shame of yourselves? The woman who was commenting earlier complained, but she, she smashed his hand, so, he shouted with even more fury, Tony got lucky she did it, or otherwise, I would have done it myself, we are adventurers, our daily lives are meant to protect the people from the Lumen Kingdom, he smashed a nearby table breaking it, not hurt them you shitheads, hello receptionist, I'd like to register for this guild, I smile kindly at her, the man was still in shock he, even though someone healed his hand back with a healing spell, some of the adventurers turned to me and apologized, I smiled in return to them, I'm sorry, but you're too young to join the adventurers guild, the receptionist replied, but I came all the way here to join, I make a sad face, I looked at the man who was shouting at them, can't I please, he looked at me and spoke, it's normal sometimes for kids like you who have a little more mana than usual to appear, but the enemy can just dodge your spells, please, I repeat, you got lucky that fool allowed you to grab his arm, he throws one of the swords on his waist at me and once I pick it in the air, he dashes at me fast, I run at him while freezing the floor under him where his foot would land next, notice, 50 mana has been deducted, despite him being a lot faster than me, he placed his foot on the floor and unaware he slipped losing balance, in the meantime, I had gotten close enough and smashed him with the blunt part of the sword, he went against the balcony, destroying a part of it with the impact, however, he suffered no damage, he looked towards the floor and realized what had happened, he started laughing happily, crazily even, I hadn't met a tricky kid like you yet, he laughed, even though you were a lot slower than me you did me good, I heard a voice from behind, looks like we got ourselves a strong rookie, I look upwards to see his face, curious as I didn't hear him appearing behind me, oh, it's not only strong but cute too, he laughed while crossing his arms, thank you for the compliment I replied while looking up smiling, the man laughed, don't look at me like that, your smile looks inverted as if you were sad, I laughed, this man seems friendlier than the rest of them, I turn around as I place my head normally, I'm Iris, the daughter of Luke and Rosalind both ex-adventurers, the man who was on the floor got up cleaning the pieces of broken wood and dust healed on his clothes, oh, your dad an old friend of mine, we used to get drunk together before he married that evil woman, he laughed, evil woman? my smile disappears, yes, ever since they married, she didn't let him get drunk with me anymore, it was pretty lonely, he kept on laughing, my smile returned upon hearing the stupidity of this man, I'm the one in charge of this small branch of the guilds the leader lives in the kingdom, small branch, I guess they have places like this all over the kingdom, before I forget I'm Alex, and the guy you tricked is Edward, he is actually extremely powerful, you just happened to outsmart him, you're being kind boss, he came closer to me and extended his hand, nice to meet you, Iris, I extended my hand and grabbed him, and in the next second, I was in the air upside down looking down on everyone holding my dress, I told you he was strong, Alex was laughing happily, this man sure is strong, I thought while looking at him, Edward lowers his arm slowly so I don't get hurt and says while grinning, 
There you go Iris. Alex, I say hesitantly. Yes, Iris, I'd like to join the Adventurers Guild. Then do it. You're qualified to be at least an E-ranked, but of course you'll start at the lowest rank, F. A tear fell out of my eye from happiness for being accepted, thank you, boss. Alex smiled upon hearing that. I turned around to the receptionist with brimming eyes of excitement. Yes, yes. Come along, Edward. The receptionist shouted. Yes, Leonor. Fix the balcony and the table you broke. Come follow me, Iris. We enter a room with a bookshelf, two large sofas and a large table in between them. She tells me to sit in one of the sofas as she searches through the bookshelf. The receptionist then brings a large book and places it on top of the table. The book has a stone aspect. It looks like a brown covered by grey in its edges, and what looks like a stone handprint in the middle. Leonor says, all you got to do is place your hand in it. I follow her instruction placing my hand on top of it. Once it finishes registering you, you'll receive a card. What do I do with the card? You can present it in many territories and the guards will let you pass, and we'll update your rank in it as you complete quests. Oh, so it shows my name and my rank? Yes, pretty much, and also where you registered in other words in a Stuar village name. It's a cute name. I agree with you Iris, I'll be back in a bit, wait for me here, okay? Okay, mom. A few moments after, a light appears above my hand and I see a white card. As I'm about to take my hand off, the whole process repeats. I grab the cards and turn them around. The first card says name, Iris, age, 8, registered at Aria Village, rank, F. I check the second. Leonor enters and I save the second card before reading it in my pocket scared. She closes the door then turns to me and says, Is it done? Ah, yes, I give her my card. Iris sounds a little shaken is she okay? Maybe the light spooked her. In the end, she's still a kid. There, there, Leonor starts patting me for some reason while looking at the card. Okay the card looks perfect, let me return it to you. Thank you. I'll cherish it on our side. It's complete. From this day onwards you can just drop by and talk to one of the receptionists. We're the ones who handle all the quests and deliver them to the appropriate adventurers based on their ranks. Okay. I will. I smile happily. As I pass through the balcony gate, I notice three people approach me. The guy who pulled my hair Tony, and another man with a woman waiting for me. I look up at his face. Yes? I. Ah. Uh, wanted to apologize to you for my earlier behavior. It was my bad. The other two apologized and introduced themselves. I am Etna and is Robert, the woman said. The guy added, we got a little carried away before with the bashing, but no one was going to hurt you. We're one of the parties in this guild the three of us. Tony added, it's all in the past. My head still hurts but it'll pass. I smiled at them. I guess the boss talked some sense into them. I see his hand approaching my hair and react to it by stepping back. He looks at my reaction and says, It's okay, don't run. I just want to heal you. It's the least I could do. He takes a step further and this time I don't move looking around. I suppose he wouldn't dare hurt me with so many people around after what unfolded. He cast heal on me a light healed the wound I received from the hair pulling. Thank you. I smile kindly. You're welcome, Iris. Was it? Yes Tony, that's my name. All right, well, if in the future you need anything, you can just ask big brother Tony here, he smiled. Thank you if the time arises I will. I smile back, perhaps he's not a bad person. Okay well we'll go on a quest now. We got to make money. Tony laughed, see you around kiddo. I waved them goodbye and headed to the receptionist reminded of something from Tony's words. Hello again, Leonor. Hello Iris. How can I be of help? I'd like to receive my first quest if possible, I smiled. Before I give you one, have you ever fought any monsters, like slimes, horned rabbits, goblins, and the like? None. It's my first quest. This girl is a mix of swordsmanship and magic, but she's alone so I need to find a... I wait patiently as I watch Leonor thinking while checking the many papers passing through her hands. I take a look around me evaluating the large building. The building has many tables with long benches of the same lengths. 
There's a big hall between the front doors and the balcony where people go for information splitting the tables. I'll be right back Leonor, take your time. On the sides, there are balconies where mainly adventurers buy food and drinks. I approach one and buy three big pieces of bread with ham and cheese in there for later. They're placed in a black bag that was given to me. It's on my tab since I'm not carrying any money. When I finish the quest, I'll make sure to pay them. All I had to do was show them the card. I return to the receptionist area. Iris, I'd like you to take this quest. She handed it to me and asked if. Do you know how to read? Yes, I do. Let's see. Quest. Rank. F. A group of slimes between 10 to 20 has been sighted on the east farm of the village. They have been eating the crops and so a farmer requests support from the guild. You'll be rewarded 2 points and 5 copper per slime guild. Leonor, what are these points in the reward? Oh, they are the points we use to rank up our adventurers. In other words, you need X points every rank. Sounds simple, thank you. I smile happily. You're very welcome. The receptionist smiles while thinking how cute this little girl is. I turn around, and as I start to leave, Leonor says, for reference, you must bring the soul stones as proof to get points. We'll then trade it for points and we'll pay you for their grades properly. She waves goodbye as she finishes talking. Can I bring any other soul stones I find a side of slimes? Yes, of course, they'll be exchanged by points and money. We have a device that checks their origin. All right, see you later Leonor, and thank you. Be careful Iris. Okay, I leave the guild house with a happy face heading towards the fountain to meet Alicia. Upon reaching the fountain area I stare at Alicia being slapped by an older man. I stay there a bit further and hear their conversation. I told you many times to not play with these peasants. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Alicia's a noble? I think surprised. Alicia was crying with her head lower. I'm sorry father, she said while mumbling in tears. Look at your dress it's so dirty do you have no dignity. Another man approaches them a man dressed in black attire. Master, your wife has called for you. She was finished shopping. The man politely bowed. It's time to go. He grabs Alicia's hand and moves towards the carriage. The moment he starts moving away his arm gets stuck. He turns around and asks the daughter, why aren't you moving, he asks with an angry face, I, Alicia grabs her dress tight, promised I'd wait for my friend Iris, did you not understand what I said earlier, he lifted his arm in the air to slap her again, as I saw what was unfolding, I stepped in close to them, hello lady Alicia, I'm truly sorry for the wait, happy to see me she replied, welcome back lady Iris, while smiling nervously at me, I've just finished my business in the Adventurers Guild, I said with a slow proper tone. Her father thought about what kind of business she'd have in the Adventurers Guild. I then flawlessly bow slightly towards her while lifting my dress properly and then turn to her father and repeat the gesture. In my past life, I was forced to learn the noble's etiquette which happens to be quite similar to this world. I tested this fact with my mother as she taught it to me when we weren't training. She said I was extremely good at it and a fast learner at that, so we didn't waste much time on it. Alicia bowed properly by picking her skirt dress and lifting it slightly while bowing. Her father mistaking me for a noble due to my trained courtesy, tone in the guild business bowed slightly to return the greeting. He then said, seems like you did learn something, after all, we'll be waiting on the coach. Have a good day Lady Iris, have a good day Alicia father, don't take long Alicia. The trip back to Lumina waits. Yes, father. The butler bowed towards me while smiling kindly before leaving almost as if he was thanking me. I smile back at him. Alicia then grabs my hands and says, I'm sorry you had to see that Iris. It's okay my lady. I start laughing as I tease her. Her body loses some tension starting to laugh along with me. How did the trip to the adventurer's gill go Iris? I take out my adventurer's card and show it to her. Her eyes become shiny as she reads the card. This girl is so easy to read, I think as I stare at her expression. I'm so proud of you Iris. I'm glad you were able to pass the test to enter. Write the test. Wait what was the test? I think awkwardly. Thank you, Alicia. I hope you can become a famous adventurer. 
I'll do my best to become strong. Upon hearing my words her expression changed. I must go Iris, but I hope to see you again someday. She removes a ring from her finger placing it in one of mine. This is? I looked curiously at it. It's cute a white ring with a tiny white rose emblem in it. It's one of my five family rings. Only the head successor has them. She shows me her hand and the other four rings. A white ring with a white rose emblem on each finger shone under the sunlight. It sounds very precious you shouldn't give it to me Alicia. I start removing it. Her hands stop mine's and she looks at me. I am the successor of my family and through the life of every generation we give out five rings to possible candidates. Candidates to what? I question her curious. To become my knight in the future or part of them every great noble family can have up to five. A knight? I'm an adventurer though, I clarify it to her. Yes, for now. But we never know in the future, and every family has these rings for their own successors. I don't know if in the future I'll want to be a knight though. I replied while feeling awkward. She hugged me and whispers in my ear. Even if you don't, you're a friend I don't want to lose, and this way we'll surely meet again in the future. She lets go of me and stares at me. In that case, I adjust the ring back in my finger. I'll keep and cherish it. I reply with a friendly smile. Please do. And don't worry about the ring size, it's magical, it'll adjust to the user's hand. That's very convenient. I replied laughing. I wonder how much a ring like this would cost to make, she must be from a rich family. I really have to go. Dear friend, I'll see you someday Iris. She starts running to the couch. Take care, Alicia. I wave her goodbye while thinking, a night. Perhaps that would be fun too. White Rose family perspective. Inside a moving white carriage with rose patterns, a woman's voice was heard. You seem happy my dear daughter? Alicia looks at the woman in front of her and replies with a smile. Yes mother, very. Did anything fun happen? She asks curiously noticing something about her amiss. She looks attentively at her daughter's face passing the right hand softly on it. Noticing a swelled cheek, her arm returned to her chest as the eyes looked to the husband. She releases a bloodthirsty aura worse than an enraged beast towards everyone around, making the carriage shake of pressure. Alfred, did you hit Alicia? She shouts filled with rage while glaring at him. The husband looks at her slightly shivering from the pressure. Someone has to educate our daughter, she was playing with peasants. The father replied coldly. Sweat was dripping from everyone inside the carriage but the mother. The butler pitied her in his mind, monstrous parents handling a child. Hang in there young lady, it'll be over soon. She looks back at Alicia and stretches the right hand once more slowly towards the hair. As the hand approaches, Alicia feels more and more pressure while shaking. In her eyes, it was like a beast about to devour her. She raised both hands covering the fear in her face. The moment her hand touched the daughter's hair, the aura vanished, and words came out of the mother. Well your dad is right, it would bring shame to our family if someone important saw you with them, Alicia. Her arms lowered down to the lap as she looked at the mother in the face. I. She reminded herself of Iris wanting to become strong gripping both hands onto each other strongly. I understand mother. I'll be more careful in the future. Inside the mother's mind, an unexpected thought went by. I didn't expect her to be so unfazed after that, seems like she's grown up. Upon meeting that new girl perhaps? Alicia stares at her mother, and on the lips, notices a faint smile. So, Alicia, you haven't replied to my question. I'm very curious as to where one of the five heirlooms has run off to. Upon hearing that comment, the husband and butler look simultaneously at Alicia's hand. I gave it to someone I estimated worthy of wearing it, she declared to her parents having grasped some confidence. The father upon remembering the girl with the exquisite hair color turned his face back to the window. The mother noticing this realized she had finally made friends with a fellow noble. I made a friend. Her name is Iris, she's eight years old and today passed the adventurer's exam. A noble passing that exam at such a young age, they're usually lazy and spoiled kids, the butler thought confused, sounds like this iris friend of yours has some potential, but, Alicia upon hearing those words expressed a confused face, her mother realizing the cheek was already red decided to leave it at that, after all, she knew that no noble girl would take such an exam at such a young age.
Noble kids at such an age already have everything they wish for. What is your friend like? She's fun, friendly, kind, and strong-minded. Alicia smiled as she finished talking on Lady Iris. What's her family name? I didn't have time to ask father. Very well. Also, you could improve your greeting to her level. The one presented by the girl was flawless. Upon hearing that her mother thought confused. Is she really a noble? Peasants don't learn etiquette praiseworthy of my husband's. Daughter, tell me about the appearance of your friend. Ah, well. She's very pretty with green eyes and blonde hair. Blonde hair? I can count the people I've seen with such hair with one hand, not to forget that such eye color is even rarer. Robert. Yes, my lady? I want you to find to which family does Iris belongs, I wish to meet her. As you wish, though it might take a while. That is fine, she declared effortlessly looking to the wagon window. Iris perspective. Later that night at home. I take a piece of bread I bought at the guild and start eating on the bed while using my other hand to go inside the pocket taking out my adventure card. I should do the slime quest tomorrow. I look at it happily and then I remembered, I take out the other card from my other pocket. Let's see. The second card says name, Aurora, age, 8, registered at Aria Village, rank, F. Aurora, who's that? I voice confusing, and as I do a voice resounds in my mind from my status skill. Notice, Soulbound has reacted. A dark aura expands from me devoiding the room from light, making everything pitch dark. What's going on? I can't see anything. I tremble in fear due to the magical pressure and the blindness. Notice, due to soulbound influence Iris memories sealed by the system will now be released. Past life Iris memory. Inside a secluded noble mansion, Iris a young girl would spend her days playing with dolls and other things alike alone. She was often ostracized, the mother had died giving birth to her. On top of that, the further a baron, spent his days and nights working. He'd exclude her from attending noble events, the man would rather do it with his new wife and children instead. A 15-year-old boy and a 10-year-old girl. Iris was 11 years old when her father remarried. His new wife was a widow whose husband died in a war against the Kingdom of Baltimore. Thus, when they remarried, Iris's father adopted both of the kids. The father had ignored Iris, ever since his wife died. He felt disdain and hate for her daughter due to that. Iris was useless to her father since she could only marry at the age of 16. He hated her so much that the Baron hired maids to raise the girl in his place, even though all they did was give food. Iris didn't care about the world since the entirety of it was the mansion she lived in along with the garden within the fences that surrounded the place. She would spend most of her days reading books in the great library of the father. Her personality was closed along with an empty heart, however, the mind was colorful and full of imagination. She'd create a lot of amusing and interesting plays for her dolls, sometimes balls with princes and princesses. Sometimes due to the influence of a few books, adventures of brave people and heroic deeds, against monsters and demons through different perils. Every so often she'd even imagine using these super amazing magic spells herself. One of the rare things that made her eyes sparkle and the lips turn into a faint smile. Once she heard the maids talking about a famous magician, a noble who could shower the kingdom with rain for a while. Inside the mansion, the Baroness mistreated Iris, alongside her children, verbally and physically, without ever damaging the face so the Baron wouldn't notice. I wonder how we should torment Iris this time. My dear children, Marie and Joan, any suggestions? The mother Jonah, asked with an evil grin inside her own room. Marie with a cold smile and a twisted vile face had a peculiar thought and voiced it out loud. Esteemed mother perhaps we should lock her in a room and starve her to see how many days she can last? The mother laughed happily upon hearing her daughter's comment. The boy chuckles evilly while looking at Marie. That sounds like a splendid idea dear sister, however. Let's make sure to not overdo it otherwise dad might notice. Possibly so my dear son, let's attempt a two day starving for now and we'll see how she handles it. The three of them smiled and laughed happily upon reaching the decision. A maid who was serving tea to them shivered in fear towards the wickedness of such conversation promising herself to stay away. Iris grew colder and colder as the years went by ever since they started living there. 
An unknown desire within her was born, a seed of hatred within the heart sprouted and kept expanding inside it endlessly. Some years later, by chance or perhaps by fate, Iris decided to walk up to the attic, an abandoned place untouched for decades perhaps even longer. The door was rusted and dirty, everything inside was full of objects and spider webs. The air in there felt heavy which made Iris think it was due to the accumulation of dust. She explored such a place and soon found something tall and white. Inside the attic was dark and hard to see as it had no windows, the only light was the one coming from the open door that Iris used. She wondered what was that white thing, due to curiosity her feet moved closer to it and extended her arm. Realizing it by the touch, Iris could tell it was like the blankets used in her bed when she slept, and so decided to pull it off. As the blanket fell her expression grew fearful and her mind screamed to run. But the body did not move frozen in fear. Some moments passed and her calmness came back as the mind relaxed. Silly me, she said as it was only a tall mirror bigger than her even. Due to the darkness inside the attic, Iris thought there was a girl in front of her at first glance, but now she was reassured that it was just a reflection. Then it happened. As if to betray the reassurance she had placed in herself, the reflection lips moved and words echoed through the room. Can you help me? I'm trapped inside this mirror. The air felt even heavier for Iris, her heartbeat got so fast that it reverberated through the attic and the fear dominated the delicate lady. The voice resurged and said, Hey, I'm stuck in here can you please help me? Iris kept on shivering due to fear, paralyzed in that spot looking at the mirror. I'm sick of living here in this small place surrounded by darkness, the reflection made a sad expression. Iris clenched the fists as hard as she could piercing the nails in the hand to control her emotions. The reflection stared at her behavior attentively. Blood came out of her skin painting the floor. She moaned softly from its pain, she held herself the best possible, and while trembling asked, What's your name? Why are you there? The reflection shortly answered, I am, I'm here because I was sealed inside this mirror a long time ago, she said with a teary expression. To that Tyrus replied confused, I'm sorry but I couldn't hear your name and sealed. Why would someone do that to you? Once more the reflection spoke, if you didn't hear my name, then you won't be able to till I'm out of here. My name too is locked. Oh, as for why I got sealed well, I killed someone very important a while ago. The first king of Ludruka, the founder of it. Iris remembered the name of the current kingdom and thought out loud, Ludruka. There's no kingdom with such a name. The girl inside the mirror heard it and shouted, What? Just how long have I been trapped here? Tears fell from the reflection blue eyes as it was the only detail that was different from Iris's physic. The girl in the attic feeling pity for the one trapped in the mirror attempted to console her. Hey it's okay, everything will be okay, what can I do to get you out of there? Iris's reflection stopped crying upon hearing that. I no longer have a physical body so I need an individual that fulfills three conditions. What are they? Iris asked innocently without expecting anything in return other than granting the girl some freedom, and even happiness. First someone willing to do a soul bond contract with me, second someone that has enough magical potential, and third. Iris a little sad interrupted the girl and mentioned hastily. I'm not really sure what a soul bond contract thing is, but I've never used magic. The reflection stared and waited for her to finish patiently. I'm Iris, also only 15 years old so I don't know if I'm someone who can help you get out of there. Don't worry Iris, since you can see me, your potential is the real thing. Really? The innocent girl asked hopefully making a faint smile. If you wish to take me out of here Iris, then yes. Both girls hear someone coming up the attic stairs. Ah, so, this is where the little bitch was, Joan said while holding a long knife. What are... As Iris was about to finish saying the question Joe and jumped on her. No, stop, let me go. Iris did her best to stop his lustful self despite being overwhelmed by him a young man in his 19s. Compared to her adopted brother, she was an underfed skinny girl of 15 years. He started cutting off her clothes hurting parts of Iris's skin in the mix. Blinded by the lust of wanting to abuse her. Iris screamed from pain and as she heard a voice calling out to her. 
The eyes gazed onto the mirror. Iris touch this glass wall fast with your hand, and make the contract with me. Iris kicks his brother's leg making his leg slip to the side. He loses balance making the arm that was in the air holding the knife. It goes down piercing Iris's chest. She starts coughing blood, some of it tainting Joan's face which frightens him, making him back away from her. Iris took the chance to use her remaining energies as red kept pouring from the chest wound coloring the floor. She crawled with her hands red while using the leftover energies on the arms to slide through the crimson liquid. A desperate expression was painted on Iris's bloody face as she persisted through the pain. She touched the mirror and the light eluded then heard a faint whisper close to her ear. From today onwards your soul is mine Iris and my soul is yours. Iris stared at the mirror while on the verge of death. The girl then said, related to the question that remained unanswered my name is. As she was about to tell Iris her name, the girl's heart stops beating from the blood loss and she dies. Iris present perspective. I see so that's what happened. I think after relieving my sad memory that was sealed, Aurora. Is that your name? I attempt to converse without knowing if I truly spoke as I could not hear my voice inside this darkness. Suddenly I could see beautiful light particles leaving my chest. It looked like they were being absorbed by the darkness around me. Notice, due to soul bound the system seal is breaking. Is that a good or a bad thing? If something is sealed it generally means that it's bad. No? Unless. My memory showed me the girl trapped inside the mirror, could they be the same person? I didn't get to hear her name but in the Adventurer Guild card the name I saw, the device Leonore uses to make these cards. Did it perhaps connect to my soul? If it did then perhaps it also connected to her soul? Since Aurora was trapped inside a mirror, how did she reincarnate? I ask myself unsure. Seems like we somehow got reincarnated together. That's the only explanation I can think of. If that's how it is, then she must be trying to set herself free from the curse she had in the other world. To think that it would be as persistent as going with her through reincarnation. Even though my skills mentioned a seal from the system, could it be a mix of the two? Status. I know you can hear me, I want to help the soul inside of me please. Notice, all mana has been deducted. I fall asleep due to mana exhaustion. Notice, Aurora received mana from Iris. Notice, seal removal concluded. Notice, the contract between two souls can now terminate. Notice, Aurora has consumed the curse with her dark element. Notice, due to the influence of Aurora the contract has been cursed, unchangeable by any means. System, the title soul bound has been received. Notice, an unidentified cursed skill has been received. System. The title reincarnated has been received. Notice, item inspection skill has been received. Notice, material evaluation skill has been received. System working. An error has occurred. The same individual cannot have two titles of the same type. An error has occurred. The same individual cannot receive two extra skills from the reincarnated title. Looking for a solution. Success. Merging titles. Success. Title reincarnated plus has emerged. Merging skills success. Unique skill appraisal has emerged. Notice. A skill has been used against Iris. Notice. A skill has been used against Iris. Notice. A skill has been used against Iris. Notice. No longer under the effects of the dark element. Notice. Status has been updated. The epilogue of the first arc. A goblin shaman perspective. As the night passes the terrors of the world continue. Today we shall select from the ten of you, two with the highest fighting potential. You shall do anything and use everything possible to survive. The survivors will then be rewarded with the opportunity to live until their age ceremony provided by the system. The goblins round started stepping the floor while clapping making a heavy tune bringing pressure to the young ones. Around a bonfire, the newborn goblins are put to fight among each other. The small goblins pick the different weapons on the floor and start attacking one another. One of them picks a long stick who uses it to push one of the goblins into the bonfire burning him. He pushes him further deep into the fire to make sure it dies. Goblin fried, a big goblin yells laughing, increasing the surrounding clapping and stomping. On the other side of the bonfire, the smell of burned meat and blood entrails the nose nostrils of the shy goblin children causing fear and panic to enter their brains. 
They quickly pick a weapon at random and jump on one another. A dagger hits the elbow of one, and a different one hits the eye of the other. The one-eyed one starts running away from the goblin who hurt him colliding against one behind him. Due to the impact, the young one is pushed onto a sword in front of him dying. The feet smacking on the floor gets louder as the goblins die. The older ones round start yelling, kill, 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 kill. He pulls the sword out of the one who died and takes a step on the corpse jumping and slashing at the neck of the one-eyed goblin who fell due to the collision, making his head roll on the floor causing blood to spur on the ground. Without time to waste, he climbs on the new corpse running towards the goblin who was dumbfounded looking at him with a dagger in his left hand. They strike one another clashing weapons, the one wielding the dagger moans of pain as blood pours out of his shoulder. The sword one kicks the opponent's stomach lifting his sword upwards to slash the one in front of him. At the same time, the goblin hurt from the kick responds by thrusting his dagger deep into the chest of the goblin in front of him seeing an opening. Blood comes out of his mouth as he lets the sword fall from his hands. The weapon ruthlessly slices the right hand of the goblin whose dagger is stuck on the opponent's chest, ending up screaming from pain. Handless one, handless one. Handless one, a goblin warrior yells repeatedly excited from the clash between the children in front of him. A moment earlier, on the other side of the bonfire, the goblin who fried one of them pushes another with a long stick. It forces the enemy to take a few steps towards one in front of him which leads to both fighting. Without wasting much time, the stick wearer turns around and sees every goblin, some dead some alive. He then notices the screams of the handless one and runs at him picking a sword on the way. Once the goblin gets closer, he stabs it in the back of the enemy's neck killing him. He looks around once again and sees that there are only two leftover goblins, picks the dagger that's being held by a soul hand without an arm, attempts to throw it with all his strength at the back of one of the goblins. Due to the lack of precision and strength, the dagger curves, hitting the foot of one of them making the goblin scream in pain and raise both arms. This allows the goblin in front of him to attack freely cutting both arms off and then with a second slash half the neck, the blood squeezes out from the wound he inflicted soon falling among the rest. The remaining two goblins look at each other and prepare to attack one another. The sound of a particular staff with bells echoes the surroundings and everyone goes quiet. It seems the goddess Luna has offered us a goblin with an actual brain and another who knows when to take his chances. Upon hearing those words the everyone around the two survivors starts laughing. In the name of the Goblin King and the Goddess Luna the mother of us all, who keeps an eye on the Goblin tribe we welcome you two to the family. The shaman smacked the staff two times on the floor. And a party to celebrate went on. A while later, the old one with the staff moved closer to the king who was watching the festival. He bowed and heard a voice from above. When the time comes I shall name the one who pushed the goblin into the fire. He might become a great leader one day, as you command almighty goblin king the rag. Soon we will destroy those filthy humans. He thought as Vrag looked into the thousands of goblins in front of him. Soon. Adventurer Arc Prologue. Lumen Kingdom Capital. At a long exquisite and beautiful sculpted stone table there lays ten well wooden carved chairs with rose patterns. The king sits in the middle. There are four chairs on both sides of the table, left and right of the king. Seated in these eight chairs are the current heads of the most famous and powerful noble families. One of the eight seats is vacant. The eight strongest out of all the existent eight hundred noble families that reside in Lumen Kingdom. Such households receive the title of a colored rose. Each head receives five colored rings, of equal color to its family title. For example, Alfred received five white rings, with white rose patterns from his father, whom he passed on to Alicia the future heir. These rings have two skills imbued in them. One of them is that they adjust themselves to the finger of the selected person. The other is that when the time comes to select the next night the ring shines. Once it shines it allows the successor to find the ring wearer. A magical trail appears indicating where they have to go to find them. The king spoke. I thank you all for attending my estimated reunion. Everyone bowed their heads. You may lift your heads. 
Today I have unhappy news to share with the seven of you. One of you is currently on a mission, but the information presented here will be shared. In Sylvia's mind, she thought, for that person to not be here it means this reunion will be serious. Call her here Sylvia. The king ordered her royal guard who was standing at the door with another one. Sylvia and the guard opened both doors and she said, The king has summoned you, Saint Tess. A young woman with long green hair and green eyes stared at Sylvia for a moment and spoke. Thank you head of the royal guards, she moved inside the room. An aura made of mana emanated from her giving a sense of tranquility and warmth. The guard who was next to Sylvia thought, yet another monster joins the room. The saintess looks at the guard with a boring look as if reading his thoughts making him gulp. Then she moved to the table where the king was, she bows gracefully in her long white dress. She says, I've arrived King Lark Lumen. You may rise, saintess. I'm grateful that you came so promptly. To that, she replied. Of course your highness, she thought, Krause wouldn't shut up for a month if I hadn't come here. I hope his eminence is doing well. Yes. Your Highness despite his age his health seems to somehow get better as the days go through. That almost sounds like a bad thing Saintess, the head of the Black Rose commented. Saintess thought, this fellow always trying to provoke me, one of these days. Not at all, Saintess replied with a faint smile. Charles was a handsome black haired man with brown eyes, known for his persistence towards the Saintess. She ignored him for years completely knowing fully well he was a womanizer. Despite this, he was a capable man of great political strength. Someone to be wary of certainly. If the Saint Tess wasn't who she is, for sure he'd have her kidnapped by now. The king laughed at this conversation and says, The two of you are always too humorous. Thank you for your kind words your highness, Charles spoke with a charming smile. Another voice is heard. I'm assuming that the Saint Tess presence means that it is about the rumored premonition she had eight years ago? That is so Alfred of the White Rose, sadly for everyone here the premonition has been declared a reality. Recently, Alfred the owner of a house, who trains swordsmen, his swordsmanship is the strongest in the kingdom. A man who sees honor above all else, even above his family members. Known to have only lost one duel during his prime, and against a woman. He ended up marrying her and later have a daughter, Alicia. Do we know who's the attacker? Your Highness? Alfred replied. I've brought the Saintess here today to know more about it myself thus summoning all of you. Everyone nodded in agreement. Saintess sit on that chair opposite of mine and tell us about what you saw. As you wish your highness. The guard helped her with the chair. Thank you, Sir Rudolph. Always a pleasure Saintess, he said despite what he thought earlier about her. I'll start with what happened eight years ago towards my most recent visions. My first vision indicated a war where our kingdom ultimately got decimated by an army of black armors and green flags. A dark-skinned woman spoke. Green flags? Is there such an army that uses them? This woman is famously known for her archery skills. One who decided by herself who to marry instead of allowing her parents to decide. She's fairly beautiful with her light brown hair and eyes. Is also known for her two dark skinned sons who are also very good looking and have an amazing mastery with the bow. Ilian of the Green Rose. I believe that a green flag is one of the factions towards the south where the beasts live? The king questioned as he looked at the saintess. Yes. I had some of the oldest members of the church research the old books. Did they find anything? Eliane asked feeling worried. Yes, we found something of relevance but. Everyone looked at the saintess with extra attention. As she said but, it was from one of the old books. The invasion of a level 100 goblin king 150 years ago, where the 10th hero summoning call was done by our goddess Arya. A wave of nervousness filled the room for a while as she finished speaking. Charles decided to break the silence with a question, did it invade alone? Since by itself at such a level it would be already quite powerful to deal with alone. He invaded together with its army leading the kingdom almost to its destruction. That's a nightmare, the king replied while wiping his sweat with an embroidered handkerchief. Back then two heroes had been summoned and trained for some years before the king moved. A tanned man who was observing the saintess soon started speaking as he had a question to make. By your expression, it means the goddess hasn't relayed one of her divine messages, right? That is so Ryu of the Blue Rose, the saintess replied with a sad look in her eyes. 
Upon hearing that his confirmation was right, he crossed his arms and went into deep thought. There's a chance that it's the same goblin than at that time, goblins learn with their mistakes. It wouldn't be abnormal for him to wait this long to rise a new army as well. Even his level could be higher for all we know. As we are now, he stared at those around him as if to confirming something and then he back into thought. If on top of the heads we gather the strongest adventurers and organize the military correctly, we also have the vision of the saintess who gives us some time to plan things properly. If it was a surprise attack, we'd be all dead by the time it happened. The man looked at the king. Your Highness, I have a plan I'd like to discuss. I understand Ryu, but I want to ask a few more things before we go into the next phase of the reunion. As you wish, Your Highness, he replied with a patient serious tone. Ryu is a black-haired man with dark blue eyes and is known for his vast knowledge in the arts of war. One of the youngest generals in Lumen's history and one of the best. He received enough achievements to stand where he is now, the king thought. A very capable and educated man this one, he has done a lot for this kingdom. Yes, one of the pieces of information I wanted to add to this conversation is the date of the invasion. Everyone went quiet including the king as his intentions were read by the saintess. The invasion will start somewhere in five years, there's not much time left then. We must organize ourselves, put our soldiers into shape. Exactly your highness. The earliest the least casualties, said Alfred of the White Rose. Zylf a man known for his quietness during reunions opened his mouth. An eccentric man with red and white hair. Famous for his money and power. Infamous for his tastes in both genders, especially men. Your Highness. He received the immediate attention of everyone around him. Yes, Zylf from the Grey Rose. I believe it is in everyone's interests to not evacuate those who are currently living in the outskirts of our walls at the south. A woman smashed her fist making a loud bang noise on the stone table and at the same time, Sylvia moved at an abnormal speed. The sword was now in her neck. This woman has gotten faster from the last time I saw her. She's quite the monster, Ryu thought. What is the meaning of this Angelica of the Golden Rose? The king questioned upset. There is no way we're going to abandon our citizens. How could he even think about it? She shouted. Angelica is one of the few nobles known for her kind heart. She doesn't belittle peasants or looks down on people. Sees every human as they truly are. She's also known for her extremely muscular body and physical strength. That's enough head of the royal guards. The king said as he thought. It was just another one of her emotional outbursts they happen every once in a while. Sylvia sheathes her sword and returns to the door. A ginger-haired man upon watching Angelica spoke. I agree with Angelica. I'm also in opposition to abandon the southern territories. The head of the Red Rose family stated. The king spoke. Nothing's decided yet. I'd like to know the reason for that argument Zylf. Charles spoke curiously. Before giving a chance for Zylf to reply, Ryu spoke. If we were to move the villagers, the goblins would find suspicion finding the villages empty and know that we were waiting for them. Zylf looked at Ryu who was next to him from bottom to top and thought to himself. Ah, how I love intellectual men, the things I would do to him if I could. He nodded in agreement with Ryu and said, it would certainly lower our chances of victory. Angelica clenched her fists as she heard Ryu taking his side. Seeing as people were nervous and angry the king took a decision. Before we continue let's take a break to calm down and enjoy lunch together. Call the servants outside and tell them to bring the food, Sir Rudolph, as you command your highness. Later that day, I open my eyes after sleep for a while and then look around. Finding something unfamiliar on my bed. Ah, what's this black cover book doing next to me? I don't remember having a book like this. I sit on the bed and place the book on top of my lap excitedly to check its contents. Once I open it my fingers start passing the pages, making my expression change to disappointment. The book is blank. What's the point of it being empty? I put it back next to me as I couldn't find the title or anything written in it or outside of it. The moment I do. The book suddenly transforms into a blonde girl with blue eyes startling me in the process. An exact reflection of myself but the color that gazes at me. Who? Who are you? Aurora the girl you saved from the mirror in your past life, 
Didn't I release your memory? Oh, I understand now. I exasperate releasing all the tension from such a surprise. It's been eight years since we last met. It took quite the effort to free myself. Why do you look so much like me aside from the blue eyes? Oh, this? She transforms into a floating grimoire. That's amazing. Is it a skill or something? I shout surprised while clapping twice unable to hold my excitement. She transforms back to a human being, can't communicate in a grimoire form and this one feels better overall. That was my skill, one called transformation. Thank you, you can't chat because you don't have a mouth. As a grimoire? I think so yes, but I can see somehow even though I don't have eyes which by itself is odd. She replies with a cold tone despising being a magical book. To have one thing but not the other? It's so strange. I laugh innocently unaware of her emotions. To think you'd keep your name from the past life Iris, she stares at me expressionlessly. True. I was surprised myself. But it feels best like this. Also your name is very pretty Aurora, it sounds lightful. I smile brightly irradiating my happiness towards her. Thank you, Iris. I like yours too. It's funny you say that as I have the unique dark element. In her mind she recalled and a pretty dark personality. That element, does that mean, that you were the one who had it back then when I did the test with my parents? Yes, when you activated yours. Mine got activated too. And ever since then I've been eating the light from that stupid seal. She then fixes her hair due to the transformation leaving it in a strange shape while continuing to talk. Apparently not only do I get sealed in our past life, but I also received the same treatment in this world by the system, and cursed too. Well, the seal is gone I believe, but how about the curse? I was able to uncurse myself. I absorbed it with my dark element and it became a skill. A skill? What's it about? What does it do? I ask excitedly unable to contain my interest. I don't really know what it does now. I really do wonder what it does. I repeat to myself in a lower voice entangled in my own curiosity. Would you like to see it? She looks at me expectantly. Sure, please show me. I replied excitedly, and full of curiosity briming with delight to see what else Aurora can do. She extends her left arm to the side of the bed and shouts, Mirror, it's the one from back then. I'm surprised it even kept its appearance. An antique mirror bigger than ourselves about 2 meters tall and 40 centimeters in width. Since it's a skill and his glass maybe it reflects magic. I take out my shoe and mana coat it with a bit of mana. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. I throw it to the mirror the moment, and the moment it touches it goes inside suddenly disappears. A moment later, I feel something hitting the back of my head hurting me slightly. Ouch. What just happened? Notice, 2 health has been deducted. I look behind shocked and find my shoe there. Hearing Aurora words next to me, cursed, mirror, Aurora says with a cold tone along with an eerie expression looking at it shivering slightly. I throw my shoe again to understand what happened, this time ducking the moment it hits. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted, nothing happens and the shoe falls on the floor. I try again, yet nothing. I pick other things and try with various items I find in the room. So strange it's not working anymore. I look at Aurora but she shrugs her shoulders feeling as clueless about it as I do. Have you tried to go inside? I don't want to. I've had my share of it, she said with a cold voice remembering the horrors from being locked there. You're right. I'm sorry. Would you like to try it? Though you could get stuck inside, so I don't suggest it. She stares at me with a nervous, sorrowful expression. I'm trying to light her up but she feels a bit of a sad person, though after being stuck inside a mirror for who knows how long I feel like it's normal. Excluding that place, the life she had before possibly was filled with a lot of bad things too. I'll try to support her, and do my best to open her up as my parents did with me. I smile innocently at her and add, sure, it made me curious. Since the curse is gone. I can only expect something interesting to happen. I place my hand in the glass and put strength into it. It doesn't work Aurora. The girl upon hearing me out leaves the bed walking next to me slowly and then touches it with the nail putting strength into it while feeling scared. Guess it doesn't work with me either. She answers while feeling relieved about it, breathing deeply and calming down. 
mind if I try something else? I ask her politely with a kind smile. Go ahead, and be at ease, you're like a sister to me now. In her mind she thought, more than that even. I thought Aurora was upset at me due to her cold tone. I guess that's just how she is normally. Like, why don't you become my real sister? I mean we even share the same appearance. Iris. Do you mean like twins? She tilts her head taking an interest at the idea. Yes. We are very hard to distinguish disregarding the eye color. After all, the one my parents told me I had is green. I can finally see it in the mirror, and yours is blue. Her cold eyes look at the glass following my gaze. Sure can be, she spoke coldly while reminding herself of someone from the past. I place my hand on it and try to put mana into the glass but nothing happens. Notice, 20 mana has been deducted. Well, I don't know, for now. It looks like a normal mirror, a very durable one. True, it's okay, maybe in the future we'll figure something out. We have time. I take a look at my status to see the changes from yesterday. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 50, disgrace, 3270 class. None race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 458 460, mana, 670 800 status points colon 0 strength, 133, stamina, 46, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 70, wisdom, 80 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 640 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series e, body training b, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sail e, book read ref, advanced reader c, soul bounds, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, two actives, status level 40 d, system library level 10 e, mana coat level 5 f, mana wave level 1 f, ice bind level 1 f, passives, bleeding resistance level 10 f, swordsmanship level 20 e, Sword Mastery Level 10F, Mana Control Level 20E, Ice Control Level 10F, Unique, Appraisal Level 1, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound, Unique Skill Appraisal, Cursed Unidentified Skill, What are these things? The first one I don't know, but the second one I also received it from the Soul Bound that connects us. What does it do Aurora? I ask her shouting due to my curiosity startling her. I don't know you received it just before I left. I believe our soul bound gave it to you. I see. I look back at the glass while thinking, yet another possibility. At this pace I'm stuck due to lack of knowledge. I frown which makes Aurora extend her right hand patting my hair. Don't worry Iris, as you said with the mirror skill, in time, we will get to know more. Yeah. You're right sister. I stare at her who doesn't disapprove of it blushing while feeling happy inside. I push the mirror in front of the bed all the way to the opposite wall, so I can use it later to brush my hair and check outfits since it's so big. Once I'm done the door of my room opens suddenly. What's up with all the dragging noise and the shout Cyrus? Why are you talking alone as well? Rosalind stares dumbfounded at both of us, then quickly finds the right one, me with the green eyes. What in the world is this? Why there's a copy of you. She shouts loudly surprising both of us. Everything is okay mother, she's a friend, and apparently, transform back please. Aurora transforms back into a grimoire. Mother approaches and grabs the book, then she opens it and checks the pages. They're empty, an empty book. What's the meaning of this iris? She stares at me feeling confused about it. Yes. It's a level 1 grimoire I guess she needs to level up some more till it can learn some skills. Mother lets go of it, and it floats back to bed gaining some distance and transforming back into human form, which starts complaining. It's truly annoying how I can't speak in that form, she said in a cold tone despising the book once more. 
then adds a bit more information to the conversation. I've been reincarnated as a grimoire, she pulls the hair behind the shoulders, adjusting her looks, reincarnated a grimoire, humans going through the cycle of life and death is something normal, but keeping memories is not. What does this mean? Just who are you? Rosalind questions while pointing towards her. My name is Aurora, I too have a soul, and I'm a magical book of sorts. I believe the goddess of this world made me like this, or to be more specific the system did. So, I interrupt the argument and then add with a kind smile trying to bring some peace between the three. Mother I present to you my twin sister Aurora, the blue-eyed me. Rosalind takes some steps towards the bed sitting on it and then remembers something. When Iris was younger and she did the element test was it perhaps the influence of this being? She stares at Aurora and questions her without hesitation. Were you? The one with the dark magic? A book with such an ominous power? Yes Rosalyn. I possess the unique dark element. She replies in a cold tone despising being referred to as an item. Quite the tone this thing has. Rosalyn grabs both hands tightly, changing her expression to a fierce threatening one and speaks seriously. What insurance can you give me that you're not harmful so that I don't kill you right here, right now? I can't lay a finger on Iris. We're soul bonded. If she dies, I die, if I die she dies. I vouch for that much mother. Aurora's telling the truth. I can see the soul bound in my status. She's also not an enemy. How do I break the contract? Mother's expression changes into a worried one. Concerned by such a side effect. It's cursed you can't. It's something that we have from before this life. From a past life? Does that mean you have the memories from before? Rosalind asks feeling half confused and half curious. Yes, I've met Aurora in a different life. I even saved her, though I've never confessed the truth to either of you. Why Iris, do you not trust me and your father? I do. I just didn't wish to ruin the happiness you two felt as you were watching me grow up. With a relieved heart feeling that it was for a good cause Rosalind smiles kindly towards me giving the three of us some space to calm down. So my daughter saved her. It would be nice if Aurora had some gratitude towards Iris. Changing the focus of her gaze from me to Aurora, Rosalind starts with a question. I understand the story more or less. Tell me girl what is your goal? To research magic and be proficient at it. Also to repay Iris in any way I can for saving me. Upon that answer, Rosalind sighs and starts thinking deeply about everything that transpired in this room. She doesn't seem like a bad person, and I can't find a way to split them if their souls are bounded. I'll have to research about this after work and talk with Luke. For now, I'll temporarily accept her. After all, it's best if she's on our side and keeps Iris safe since her life also depends on it. That is. If what she said is true, this girl could be hiding something else, I'll have to keep an eye on both. If you wish to be part of the family, and my daughter, you must promise me you'll always protect Iris, Aurora, I promise, she smiles kindly without a hint of hesitation. That smile is pretty convincing. Is her personality just a bit twisted? Rosalind thought to herself feeling unsure. I'll make sure to discuss this with Luke, and try to reach some sort of solution with him. If we fail, we'll have to accept this situation and adapt to it the best possible. Grasping this moment of silence I take a few steps forward, pulling them closer to me hugging. Both feeling tired of the discussion. We're family now, please understand Mother Aurora's not a bad girl. I voice out in a low tone towards both ears that are close to me. Aurora you got to be nice to mom and dad too. Otherwise I won't like you. I understand, she said expressionlessly without resenting the situation, taking it in as natural as possible. Mother pats us both understanding that this argument isn't going anywhere. All right girls let's go take the breakfast and speak some more about this. Speaking of which, can you even eat Aurora? I don't need to eat or sleep or go to the bathroom. I'm ultimately a book. Weren't you sleeping earlier? I asked confused remembering how she was in a grimoire form not moving. Sort of, I can shut down a bit but it's something different than sleeping. It's more like resting I suppose. I see. Mom got up and said, well keep us company at the very least. This way I can learn more about this Aurora person, and study her personality and get to see if she really is good or not. All right, let's go. 
As we are eating breakfast mother questions me. So, what do you remember from your past life? Not too much, and from what I remember it wasn't a happy life. I look at Aurora and pat her hair. I believe the same can be said for you. Yes, she replied with a sad look. Well, you both have received a new chance to live happily. I can tell that Iris has been, so Aurora you can grab that chance too, mom replied with a smile. Hopefully, she gets influenced by Iris who's usually cheerful and happy. Perhaps, I may be able to, who knows. One day at a time, that's how I started Aurora, I add a kind smile at the end. I know sister. I copied your memories. You can copy memories? Mother asks surprised, making some of the crumbs fly to the table. Ah, not anymore I was able to when I was sealed inside Iris so, that means you already have the same knowledge she does, reading, writing, basic math, etiquette, and so on. Pretty much, yes, how about swordsmanship? I questioned her curiously. I have, but I don't have the skill or the feel for it. I copied your skills but I'm ultimately a book. Hey, that wouldn't be fair. I worked hard for them. I shouted her in a joking tone. We laugh together, except Aurora who looks sad. If that's the case did you manage to copy some of them at least? Yes, the ones related to magic, since I'm a magical book a grimoire. Sounds like we're on equal foot in that aspect, which is great so you don't have to spend the time I did learning them. That's right. By the way mother I'm stuck with my system library skill for a while now I haven't received any new books. Did you finish all the ones you had to read? Yes. System library. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System library. World of Atana 1, 2 fishing 1, 2 baking 1, 2 cooking 1, 2 farming 1, 2 lumberjack 1, 2 hunting 1, 2 maid 1, 2 butler 1, 2 miner 1, 2 world of Atana, fishing baking. Aurora starts reading from my screen uninterested in them. You can read my screen sister? I shout startled thinking that no one could. Yes, probably due to the soul bound. She presses her finger in the world of Artana, but the finger goes through the screen. Seems like you can't touch it. How about thinking mentally about wanting to read one of them? Hum. Nothing happens. It doesn't work. It's already good you can read them with me at least. I'll let you read them at some point so you get the same knowledge that I possess. I copied your memories, Iris. Oh right, perhaps the future books then if I get any new one. Have you tried physical books? Since it's a system, it can probably copy a book into it as I do with my transformation skill. I didn't think of that. I leave the table and run to my room where I have my old birthday gift. Once I grab the book from inside the box I use the skill system library on it. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Let's see what happened, system library. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System library. World of Atana 1, 2, 3 fishing 1, 2 baking 1, 2 cooking 1, 2 farming 1, 2 lumberjack 1, 2 hunting 1, 2 made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 butler 1, 2, 3, 4 minor 1, 2 tails of Atana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh my, it actually worked, even old books have gained more volumes. I'll finally be able to read more. I'm so happy. I go back to the kitchen smiling. And once I arrive I hug Aurora from behind when I get close to her. Since you're smiling happily I'll take it that it worked. Yes, thank you so much. I smile gratefully while rubbing my cheek on hers. You're welcome, Iris. After talking about all kinds of things with my sister and mother, I and Aurora return to the room and sit on the bed. Notice, 40 mana has been deducted. Notice, a contract between human Iris and item Aurora hasn't been made yet. A contract? We have soul bound already? Notice, 40 mana has been deducted. Notice, a contract between a being and an item, depending on the grade of the grimoire, it'll grant benefits to both. Not sure she'd be happy with such a contract. I glance at her who's looking in the mirror at the dress she wore shortly after returning to the room. I feel stared at. What's wrong Iris? Hum, sister. Would you like to make a contract with me? Don't we have one already? A soul contract? This one is different. It's a contract between our identities. Like human and item. I don't mind. 
as much as I dislike being a grimoire, if it proves to be useful for the both of us, I believe so, but do promise me you'll never mistreat me, sister, her cold eyes shift to me as the words come out, of course, I promise, you're my sister after all, only because you were the one who saved me, Iris, we smile at each other, how do we make a contract, notice, 40 mana has been deducted, notice, write your name on the first page of the grimoire with your mana, all right, sister revert and come here, Aurora transforms into a grimoire and floats to me which I then open and place the point of my index finger on the first page coating my mana along with my ice element while writing it, I R I S. I say letter by letter out loud as I sign it, there I'm done, I believe you can revert to the other form, I smile happily, and then voices start resounding on my mind, system, the title element has been received, system, the title contracted has been received, notice, soulbound has reacted, oh noes, not again, my eyes close as I faint, a memory of Aurora resounds in Iris's mind, for as far as I can remember, I've explored this incredible and beautiful garden, a complete fantasy by itself, the grass is always so green, fresh, and soft, just laying down on it relaxes me to the point of falling asleep on it, the soil is clean without fishes or bugs, there are no insects or any life form other than the plants that adorn the grass itself, the flowers on it are always perfectly nourished and blossomed, and they're simply divine beauties, I fall into little pieces whenever I think negatively of this garden, but loneliness is a feeling that perdures even after this long, it exists to remind me that I shouldn't be here alone, I can't wait to be free again like the person I once was, to avenge for all the things I had to go through, I can't help but feel like the day may come where I'll miss this garden where the word beauty falls far below in comparison, this place where my mind and heart feel the safest, yet why is it that I can't help but not be content to stay forever in it, I've walked in the same direction for a very long time, and in all that time I've never seen a pattern of flowers that looked the same. Attempted to go in multiple directions, but it did not work. Stayed in the same spot for a good amount of time but also nothing. I did everything I could to understand this place. However, nothing ever changed aside from me. I've realized the max mana inside of me kept on growing for all these years despite not being able to use magic inside here. I can feel it a tremendous pressure piled up inside of me wishing to be used, yet no magic I use does anything in this place, many flowers I met and talked with, sang and befriended, I still seek the way out of this place, the exit to this maze, why am I lost in this garden, I shout madly, I have done everything I could have done, yet none of it ever worked, I've ripped flowers but every time I do, they grow back like magic, this symphony plays endlessly repeating this monotone life of mine, look at this white dress I wear that loves to reflect the infinite sunlight, I don't even remember what night was like, the long forgotten sense of being hungry, of being tired, and of being sleepy, day by day without ever stopping looking for a crack, a rupture, a hidden door, or something to get me out of here, who am I, why am I here, why can't I leave, I scream with all I have, this place seals my memories, my very existence from the outside world, there must be a reason yet I can't figure it out, I seek guidance but never have I seen a guide, after walking for who knows how long, I see a golden rose and bend my knees on the floor to smell it, this flower has such a fragrant lovely smell, it feels nostalgic, it appears like a light melody ascending from my heart that makes me feel at ease, what a mysterious rose, I sat in the garden next to the rose and stared at it with sparkling eyes of admiration that consumed the very essence of the rose, I wouldn't mind becoming a little flower like you, you know, at that moment a vile thought reached my mind and my hand approached the rose to pluck it out of the earth, upon contact with the stem where thorns seldom away to be touching, my finger skin ripped and blood dripped turning the green thorn red. I forgot beautiful roses had thorns silly me, I smile in pain, a strong breeze flew through the garden passing by the rose, bringing many kinds of petals and making them fly, the petals circulated me in a twisting way, like a little tornado making them floating randomly, 
It's so beautiful like a festival of fireworks. The rose was shaken by the wind like a human nod as if it was in agreement. I approached the rose petals with my finger and when I did a heartbeat I felt from the rose. I removed the hand from the rose surprised. I started wondering about it. For an eternal amount of time I've walked through this garden and I've only found a flower like you little golden rose. All the others had their friends and family yet you seem lonely like me perhaps we could be friends. At that moment I felt my finger itching and my curiosity forced me to look at it. My finger is healed. I jumped out of the floor standing still in surprise and the finger was fixed as it had never been ripped before. Its skin was intact and smooth like the rest of the hand soft like silk. You who gave me pain and also who comforted me through healing will you tell me the way out of this place? A wind blew against the rose and this time it nodded in a different direction resembling a human saying no with their head. Ah, I burst into tears. I feel like this world may have been created by someone or something. Yet I'm alone and lonely I mustn't be. The world surely was made for more than one, however. If I'm wrong, I'll end up more insane than what I already am. So Rose become my guide and guide me to the exit please. What have I done to deserve such an excruciating suffocating curse? I start crying causing my tears to fall on the golden rose making it heavier and heavier. Won't you let me go no matter what? I kept crying as I was exhausted from it all and proclaimed that I would pluck her out of the earth. Even if it meant to taint her hands in blood. If taking your life will free me that is what I shall do. A strong warm breeze went against me like a warning. The tears that had fallen from me were now descending between the petals through the stem down to the very roots as if the golden rose was shedding her own tears. A melancholic view that would sadden any who saw it from a spectator seat. My hands approached the rose body the stem and started plucking it from the earth suffocating the rose. The tears fell from the rose mixed with my bloody hands both on the same course towards the floor towards the roots and even deeper they went far from human sight. The petals fell one after another, the golden rose was plucked off the floor and its color lost slowly becoming grayer and grayer withering away. This time a new flower did not grow back in its place. The protection I received from the world had worn off as its guardian died and now my feelings and memories were coming back. I looked at the dead rose expressionless like a marionette whose strings had been cut. The beautiful world around me was now filling itself with pure darkness. It was consuming the world from far, far away. I saw it approaching very, very slowly. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry please forgive me. She yelled sadly. I got up scared and ran in the opposite direction of the approaching darkness. I ran the fastest as I could while tripping here and there feeling sad as I advanced. My vision distorted due to the tears, like looking through a glass lens that doesn't suit my eyes. Far away after running for a long time, something picked my sight. I saw a mirror and approached it. On the other side of the mirror a blonde girl. I pressed my hands against the mirror but what felt like my physical body was stuck. With my memories having returned the only spell I can possibly be able to make is a soul bound. If that doesn't work, I'll die in this place. I don't have much time left. I must make a contract with this girl and save my soul. Everything is better than the darkness behind me, even becoming her slave if I must. In exchange, I'll only ask one favor from her, to be able to avenge myself for this time trapped in this cursed place. When I get the chance, I will have my revenge on the gods, on the sage, on the hero, on the kingdom. Those who sealed me by sacrificing millions of innocents. I will destroy everyone in this world that treated me as a monster. I will consume everything and everyone but this girl. I tell her, can you help me? I'm trapped inside this mirror. She's looking at me but I'm not sure if she's seeing me. Hey, I'm stuck in here can you please help me? I continue begging, not sure if she heard me, if my voice is going through or not. I'll try again. I'm sick of living here in this small place surrounded by darkness, I make a sad expression. The reflection upon seeing me asked me, what's your name? Why are you there? In turn, I replied, I am Aurora. I'm here because I was sealed inside this mirror a long time ago, I said with a teary expression. The girl makes a confused expression and speaks, I'm sorry but I couldn't hear your name and sealed. Why would someone seal you? The reflection asked me, if you didn't hear my name, 
then you won't be able to till I'm out of here. My name too is sealed. Oh, she replied with a disappointed look on her face. I replied quickly as my time was running out. As for why I got sealed well, I killed someone very important a while ago. The first king of Ludrica, the founder of it. The reflection replied astonished, Ludrica, there's no kingdom with such a name. I too feeling surprised from hearing such a reply shouted, what? Just how long have I been trapped here? Tears fell from my blue eyes. The reflection feeling pity for me said, hey it's okay, everything will be okay, what can I do to get you out of there? I stopped crying upon hearing her. I no longer have a physical body so I need an individual that fulfills three conditions. What are they? The girl looked at me with an innocent expression. First someone willing to do a soul bond contract with me, second someone that has enough magical potential, and third, the girl looked at me a little sad, interrupting me. I'm not sure what a soul bond contract thing is, but I've never used magic. I waited patiently since I could scare her away if I pressured her too much. She continued talking, I'm Iris, also only 15 years old so I don't know if I'm someone who can help you getting out of there. Don't worry Iris, since you can see me, your potential is the real thing. Really? The innocent girl asked hopefully. If you wish to take me out of here Iris, then yes. Both girls hear someone coming up the attic stairs. I see a young man attacking her, and say, Iris your hand, touch it in the mirror fast, and make the contract with me. Come on Iris you can do it. I think as blood pours from beneath her as she crawls closer. My reflection touches the mirror and the light eludes allowing me to leave. The darkness behind her was approaching engulfing everything in its path she had no time so she entered the mirror. After walking through the passage, she looked back briefly towards what was left behind and after looking, the darkness consumed the world. On the other side, I kneel and whisper in Iris's ear. From today onwards your soul is mine Iris and my soul is yours. I see her staring at the mirror while on the verge of dying. Related to the question that remained unanswered my name is Aurora the woman that will destroy this world. I raise my hands in the air and darkness surrounds them, death to those of this house. But Iris, the darkness spread through the entire mansion killing her stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister, maids, butlers, and her father. I see Iris's A's closing and then I feel my life extinguishing. But, I just came out of that prison. I stretch out my hand to hers, and upon touching it, I'm consumed by her soul dragging along the cursed mirror with me. For thousands of years, the woman's soul walked through this dimension and now she was finally free. I wake up and feel something wet falling through my cheeks. I place my hands on them and realize their tears. Seems like I was crying during my sleep. Also, why is my lap so heavy? I sit on the bed and look at my lap to discover why it's heavy and realize Aurora is there in grimo eye form. I grab her and place her on top of a pillow. Let me have a look at status, to see the changes. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1. Experience 0 100 fame, 50, disgrace, 4270 class, none race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 460 460, mana, 790 800 status points colon 0 strength, 133, stamina, 46, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 80 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1640 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training b, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sale e, advanced reader c, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, two actives, status level 40 d, system library level 20 e, mana coat level 5 f, mana wave level 1 f, Ice bind level 1f. Passives, bleeding resistance level 10f. 
Swordsmanship Level 20E, Sword Mastery Level 10F, Mana Control Level 20E, Ice Control Level 10F, Unique, Appraisal Level 1, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 0 100. It seems like the contract was successful. I pat the Grimo Eye while smiling. My disgrace and soul went up yet again. I feel disgraceful at this point. I wonder what I did wrong, though the rank of the Grimo Eye turned out to be the very worst. I think a little disappointed. Oddly enough, I expected Sister to have become a high ranking Grimo Eye since it has a soul and a unique element in it, not a ranked F1. What is that thing after the grade of the Grimo Eye? Notice, suggestion to use the appraisal skill. Sure, appraise the Grimo I rank F. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Notice, appraisal unique skill has leveled up to 2. A little screen appeared next to it. Grimo I ref, 0 100, evolutionary type of item that requires killing enemies to awaken to the next rank. Whoa, what's up with that mana consumption? Unique skills are scary. That definition is very unexpected and incredible at the same time. I say with excitement. Seems like Aurora can become stronger. Even though I have yet to see how strong she is in reality. Can she even fight? She's a book. Am I supposed to use her instead? I see mana shining on the Grimo eye and then it transforms back into my appearance. Good morning sister. I tell her happily. You seem awfully happy. But then again I suppose that's normal, a faint smile is shown on her face. By the way Iris, you should use your skills points so you can get a class. Why? It'll make you stronger and we're both level 1 so we're worse than ants. Do ants have levels? Probably. We look at each other wondering. I'd like to see my possible skills. Notice, due to the gigantic list of skills, would you like to see active or passive ones first? Skills related to wisdom or mana. I really need more of it please. Notice, loading specification into a screen. Available skills, slight wisdom boost, slight mana recovery, solo boost, party boost. I look at my sister, is she part of the solo or the party section? I don't have enough mana to use appraisal so I'll get the first two skills. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated, system, the title peasant has been received. Let's check the skills open status please. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 50, disgrace, 4270 class. None race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 460 460, mana, 290 810 status points colon 0 strength. 133, Stamina, 46, Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 71, Wisdom, 80 plus 1 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 1640 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Begin Our Readers, Purchase E, Wisdom F, Reader Series D, Body Training B, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sail E, Advanced Reader C, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracteds, Peasant F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status level 40D, System Library level 20E, Mana Coat level 5F, Mana Wave level 1F, Ice Bind level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance level 10F, Swordsmanship level 20E, Sword Mastery level 10F, Mana Control level 20E, Ice Control level 10F, Slight Wisdom Boost level 1F, Slight Mana Recovery level 1F, Unique. Appraisal level 2. Cursed, unidentified skill, rare element, ice. Cursed soul bound Grimo I rank F. 0 100. Seems like this is it. I've worked the hardest I could. I hope I get good classes. So you got mana skills, Iris. Well they're bound to become useful. You can see my status screen too? Yes. 
I couldn't see the skills you could choose but your library and status are viewable. Does that mean I can see your status? I'll open it. Status. Status. Level. 1. Experience. 0. 100. Class. None. Race. Human. Name. Aurora. 8 years old. Status. Points. Colon. 0. Health. 1000. 1000. Mana. 1000. 1000. Status. Points. Colon. 0. Stamina. 100. Intelligence. 90. Wisdom. 100. Attack. 5. Magic. Attack. 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, skill points, zero actives, status level 40D, darkness barrier level 2F, piercing darkness level 1F, mana coat level 1F, dark coat level 1F, mana wave level 1F, dark bind level 1F, passives, mana control level 20E, dark control level 10F unique. Transformation Level 2 Blessed Slash Cursed Mirror Level 1 Unidentified Unique Element Dark Cursed Soul Bound Whoa! You have a lot of things and really high status with barely any titles. Her race is human after all? Is it because of her soul? Seems like she has similar skills to mine's. She didn't copy my bleeding resistance? Maybe she can't bleed. She does have attack and magic attack like I have when wielding a weapon. Aurora's not holding any weapon so it must be due to being a grimoire. What a strange status. I expected it to be a little different. More weapon-like. Anyway, time to check the possibilities of my future. I want to see the classes please. Notice, loading the possible choices based on status. Classes available. Witch. Hum. I only have the talent for one class called Witch. Aurora starts laughing upon hearing my words. Take it sister. It's a very interesting and complex magical class. Why are you laughing? I ask confused. In our past world it was a job for female evil mages. And whenever I look at you I don't see much evil. Evil? Could it be my disgrace? I think about all the animals killed and things I did to get all that disgrace. I guess I am evil to some extent. I'll take the witch class. It'll be my apology for the lives taken. Notice, the witch class has been acquired. Notice, witchcraft skill tree is now available. System, the title class has been received. Well, I got it. I'll check the witchcraft skill tree when I have skill points to spend. Good good you won't regret it. Despite being evil in our world doesn't mean that it's the same in this world. I suppose you're right. I used my status and skills but I'm not able to acquire any class for now. Well, that's what you get for laughing on mine. At least I got one. We spent a while teasing each other. I check my status to see the information on the class. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100 fame, 50, disgrace, 4270 class, which, rank 1. Experience 0 2000 race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 460 460, mana, 285 810 status points colon 0 strength, 133, stamina, 46, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 80 plus 1 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1940 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training b, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, Cooking series, E, Slayer series F, Sail E, Advanced Reader C, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracted, Peasant, F, Class C, Completed series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 40D, System Library Level 20E, Mana Coat Level 5F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Ice Bind Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10F, Swordsmanship Level 20E, Sword Mastery Level 10F, Mana Control Level 20E, Ice Control Level 10F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 1F, 
Slight mana recovery level 1 F. Unique, appraisal level 2. Cursed, unidentified skill. Rare element, ice. Cursed soul ban Grimo I rank F. 0 100. At least it's not a rank 0 class like farming. It seems like I'll need 2000 experience to rank the class higher, sounds like a lot. Their wisdom has an extra one next to it, is it due to the wisdom boost? Must be, for now, my best offensive stat is actually strength so I'll take the metal short sword of my mother as it increases my attack status. I can manage the mana with some mana coating and use my stats together like that. I'll save mana away for emergencies as mother advised me. I take Aurora to the river to show her my field which I water every day except on rainy days. Would you like to water it? You might get a title which will make you stronger. The farming series that took you a year to complete did give you a lot of statuses. Exactly try it. I watch her get water from the river then water the whole field. Any luck? None, she replied coldly. Seeing as she was sad about the swordsmanship skill earlier and the title not working, does it possibly mean that, since she's a book the system doesn't apply to her? Seeing as in her status earlier she had an experience bar and a level I think that is not the case, maybe. I speak, I think the titles you get will be different than the ones I get. Like titles only for Grimo eyes? Yes, exactly. That's why some skills you were able to copy and others not. That could be true. If I'm right then you don't need to be sad. I'm sure you'll do great with magic, even better than me since you have a unique element. She nods silently. We head to the farm at the east which needs help with the slimes. I check the guild quest one more time to make sure. Quest. Rank. F. A group of slimes between 10 to 20 has been sighted on the east farm of the Astia village. They have been eating the crops and so a farmer requests support from the guild. You'll be rewarded 2 points and 5 copper per slime guild. I head home to get the short sword and a bag with a water flask in it and head there with Aurora. Inside a church perspective, a black haired figure with dark eyes stands on the tribune and in front of him, hundreds of citizens wait seated. The church is completely full today. There are even people standing up and people outside of it. A conversation between two of the citizens could be heard at the gates of it. I want to hear what the Pope has to say, he rarely shows up. Exactly it's a once in a lifetime to show our dear Pope our resolution but it's so packed as it is. Words started echoing through the church all the way outside with wind magic. An unusual way to use magic, but it allowed speeches to be heard from a good distance. Good morning my dearest followers. I am honored to have all of your presence surrounding me. A woman in her forties was already wiping her tear from her eye. As you all know from our teachings, the time to summon the next hero is approaching. While that is good news to the kingdom it also means the enemy has started to move. Thanks to this we've been recruiting strong people so that we may protect all of you. It was assured by his honorable majesty that the church would get to keep one of the three people our goddess shall summon. The citizens started clapping in bliss and making sounds. To honor his majesty, we shall join him with our forces so that the kingdom may prevail when the time comes. I Pope Klaus guarantee to all of our followers that I and the Saintess are doing their best to recruit strong individuals. The stronger we become together, the more followers we'll be able to save. A man within the spectators shouted, I give my life for the church. A different woman proclaimed, for the goddess Aria and the Saintess. The Pope shouted happily to them, We are truly honored for thy devotions. As many of you know the funds, we use for the expeditions to the demon territory shall be halted. Many followers started talking, but the demons, they mustn't live, they taint out goddess just for existing in this world. Yes, if it's about money I'll give everything I have, eradicate them. They mustn't be allowed to enter the human territory. There is only one human kingdom left we humans compared to our enemies are far smaller. Pope spoke. That is so my devoted followers, but you all are forgetting about something very important. The people shut up and heard while feeling curiously what was about to be said. Yes, what is most important is not the purge of the demon race but the salvation of the human race. Our race. The spectators were touched. Today I brought a person that I'd like all of you to hear. As the woman walked to the tribune, light sparkled and a warm aura spread from her, almost as if the goddess herself had descended from the heavens tears and echoes filled the church, 
The aura of serenity filled the church and brought warmth to the devotees' hearts. Her soft yet clear voice echoed, My dear citizens, it is of rare appearance that I stand here today. You all know I am not in favor of the eradication of other races, as I believe that they were all created to coexist with the rest. I am here to support the Pope in regards to protecting all of you. The light started merging with her mana aura around her. I harbor ill intent towards those who threaten our lives. The two auras fully merged causing a very warm aura around her. I promise to all of you, that I will protect those who seek to devote themselves to our goddess Arya. As such, I'd like to ask all of you to treat everyone around as your equal. In the end, we're all humans. At some point, all of our souls went through the goddess Arya that we so love. The crowd heard silent while being preached. We do not need to resent other races. We don't need to resent other hair colors. We all owe that to our goddess Arya. The saintess looks from left to right and points forward. All of you owe that to yourselves too. So, take care of each other and those around you. We're a big family with the same purpose. A soft clapping echoed in the church. A few hours later, our presence sure increases the motivation of the followers to donate more funds. Sounds like you got enough funds for the following years. Yes saintess. Thank you for that magnificent demonstration. Sure Klaus. As long as we survive what's to come that much was nothing. Well, then we ought to repeat today's act through the leftover seven churches around the kingdom. Serenity sighs. The Pope laughs upon hearing her sigh. Now now, it is for a good cause, plus it will incite strong people to join us. The bigger our influence the more benefits for the church. That's true, as the sole religion of this kingdom, even a lot of nobles donate a lot of money. In the pretext of the goddess area to reincarnate their souls, the saintess adds. Pope laughs. Yes, even though she would do it. Nonetheless, religion truly is a good way to make money. A cold gaze was expressed in the saintess's eyes. He coughs and speaks. Of course, all in the name of the goddess area, may she bless us in the future. This man sure is despicable, serenity thought, but at the same time he knows what he's doing. She looks at his face as she heard him whispering. Soon the octogram meeting will happen between the eight leaders of the church to discuss the future. I see, she replied coldly. I'd be happy to have the saintess there, if I must. Klaus smiled. The new saintess sure reminds me of the last one, even though this one has a lot to learn still. Let us go, our followers await. They walk outside the church through the back door escorted by four paladins. Four years ago. In the residence of the White Rose family, a violent sound of swords clashing is heard inside the main dojo. Excellent parry. Thank you, instructor. I'm your butler. But if you'd like you can call me by my name Robert. Now avoid this. A slow swing was aimed at her head. The five-year-old Alicia ducked slowly. Left. Right. Duck. Stab. Jump. Slow swings executed against the girl in front of him. Good dodging Lady Alicia. Keep the body moving. All right, one more rotation, stab, duck, right, left, right, duck. A successive amount of attack flowed towards Alicia which she barely dodged. Very good job. All right you can take a break. What a disappointment display of skills. The butler turned around to meet the source of the voice, bowing in his direction. Welcome back Master Alfred. He kept complaining, at her age, I was already striking back. A delicate womanly voice from an unnoticed presence was heard behind the butler. That may be so, but you weren't a girl I'm sure. At her age, I was moving slightly slower. The butler turned around and bowed. Welcome back my lady. Then he thought about her. It used to creep me out how skilled a mistress is, but I've come to accept the gap we have. Thank you, Robert. Your gratitude is wasted on this old one. Alfred stared at Alicia. What do you think of her? Robert, you who once were an S-rank adventurer. I started swinging my sword when I was ten, and I was slow like Lady Alicia, but she's a kid so that's natural. Robert turned to Alicia who was taking a break three meters away from the Mundra tree's shadow. I'm just teaching her the basics so that her body slowly gets used to it, then slowly she'll grow up and put up a fight. Alfred looks at him listening to him. She does have a good perception. A natural talent I never had. He sighs. I believe that in the master's hands she'll become a prodigy of the sword in the future. 
Alfred said, I sure hope so, due to the way she was born my wife can no longer give birth, unfortunately, I wish I could have had the chance to serve more of your lineage, the mother moved to Alicia, Robert looked at Alfred, but at the very least, I'll use the last years I have left building the foundation I know to the miss, Alfred stared at him silently, after that, I'm sure Master will be able to teach her the strongest swordsmanship this kingdom has to offer. Without a shred of doubt or arrogance Alfred simply replied, Of course, lots of hardships await Lady Alicia with two monsters as her parents, he thought with a serious look and a glimpse of sadness, as I enter the house to pick the things I meet mother, welcome back daughter, where could the miss be planning to go to do a quest from the adventurers guild? I show her the paper, she takes it and reads it, quest, rank, f, a group of slimes between 10 to 20 has been sighted on the east farm of the Astia village, they have been eating the crops and so a farmer requests support from the guild, you'll be rewarded 2 points and 5 copper per slime guild, from now on whenever you get a quest I want to check it first as I'm an ex-adventurer and I know what you can and can't fight ok, alright, mother I'll show you, regarding the quest, Slimes are very dangerous baby, they use magic and can be tricky to kill since they're made of mana, physical attacks don't have much of an effect, is there no way to defeat them? They're weak to elements and mana, but they can have immunity to some elements depending on their color, for example, red slimes will be immune to the fire element, oh, that's quite interesting, I still get surprised at how carefree my daughter can be about things and how she can smile this happily when talking about things that could kill her. How did I go wrong about raising her? She turned into a battle maniac, but also a very happy and adorable daughter. I just hope Aurora has more sense than her. From the time I spent with both, I felt like Aurora could easily pass as the older sister. Rosalind smiles thinking about it. Just make sure you don't get close to them as they have a corrosive element called acid that can melt anything inside them. I gulp hearing that, I'll make sure to attack from far away. Good girl. Another tip I'll give you is if you mana coat weapons, they will also damage the slime, but be wary that it is very consuming doing so. Yes mother, I'll be careful and I'll have Aurora to help me. The unique dark element will certainly be useful against mana types of beings such as slimes, mother thought with a smile, if you see any slime that isn't blue just run away, especially green ones they cast poison skills, and be wary of other monsters and beasts we live close to the border after all, yes, mother, well off you go dear daughter, this is the path you chose for yourself, and knowing how capable you are, I'm sure you'll be fine, thank you for the support mother, I smiled cheerfully, don't forget to bring flasks with water and some bread, she said still worrying despite everything, I smile and pick everything I need and then before leaving I kiss her cheek, have a good day mother, you too dear, take it easy and don't go into the forest to the east of the farms, there are too many dangers, I remember you telling me to not go to the south forest of our house either, were all forests dangerous? the ones closest to the border since beyond it is where the beast and the monster races live. Ah, we've talked before about other races, but we never discussed it too deeply. When I'm back after the quest I'd like to know more about the other races. Sure Iris, I'll be happy to teach you, mother smiled kindly. After getting everything mother tells me to include a few healing herbs I head outside meet with Aurora and head northeast to the farms. On our way there we chat. How strong do you think those monsters are going to be? The slime creatures, Iris? Yes, probably strong. But since every system works the same way, then they're the weakest at rank F threat level monsters. It is an F rank quest. But monsters, are monsters. In other words, there is a big chance that we can die fighting with them. Yes, mother told us to be careful of the different colors of the slimes. The colors? Apparently if they have specific colors they'll be immune to that specific element, like the trial to figure out my element. Oh, if we see any red slime, it'll use fire, if blue water, around that. In other words, the first quest will be magic versus magic, quite a task for our first mission together. Leonor chose it for me, so I believe she's convinced that I can handle it. Well, if you couldn't you'd either run or die to the guild your life doesn't matter, 
You're just another adventurer they can dispatch, she replies with a cold tone and an eerie expression. Ah, I feel hurt from hearing those words, not having realized that before on my own, I suppose Aurora's right. Though I don't believe they'd send me to my death. They couldn't have right? I don't know Leonor for a long time, but she did look very kind. Mother told us to be careful with not being close to them as they can melt our bodies with their own. Aurora looks at me with a serious expression and says, those things sound very strong. True she also said that coating the sword with mana would be able to damage them as physical attacks are pretty much useless against it otherwise. So mother said they're not only immune to a specific element but also to weapons. Yes, pretty much. Yet she allowed you an eight-year-old girl to go? Yes. This is what I chose to do, I even fought her for it. And so she believes in me. Why adventuring? If you only wanted to become stronger you could have asked them to hire a teacher for you know? Not sure if they earn enough money for that. Plus I want to get money to help them as well. And I'd like to get levels and skills, don't you want them to? As Aurora pondered on Iris's question a dark ominous aura started spreading from herself. From the memories, I have from Iris. I can guess that fishing which led to killing animals gave her a lot of disgrace. I'd like to have a ton of it too for my own wish, since I'm a Grimoire there's a very small possibility that other thing came with me to this world. To deal with it, I'll have to go back to my prime where I was able to. A wicked smile surfaces on her expression. I'll have to find a way to take care of it. While I also find a way to obtain my past life wish. I'll need to get a class fast and useful skills, seeing as in this world it is normal to summon heroes in this Lumen Kingdom. Being stuck as a Grimoire, I'll have to get things that could prove useful to Iris, more than getting myself stronger for now at least. However, if in the future I get my hands in everything from my past life, then I'll be able to protect Iris and even. Sister you're making my cute face look very much weird, I tell her as I stretch her cheeks. Ow, ow, ow. The eerie aura and the wicked smile dissipates. There, that smile looks much better. What would the other villagers around us think if they had noticed that expression and aura? I'll be more careful. Good, you're supposed to be the wise of the two of us. You did live longer than me after all. Yes, she replied with a cold tone. That's more like the mysterious girl I've got to know, silly Aurora. We pass by dad workplace a potion shop, where he learns alchemy from a very old man named Vincent who was the doctor that saw me being born. Mother said she'd speak with Dad and Vincent about Aurora and she even made a story for it if anyone asks about her. As much as I'd like to budge in and surprise Father, I'll have to do it after they speak with one another. We continue towards the northeast. After a while, I'm suddenly grabbed with tiny arms from behind. Iris, it's you isn't it? A face approaches looking at me and then at Aurora. I look at her and notice a familiar face with black hair and eyes. Haven't seen you since the birthday where you attended Elise, how you been? I stare at her seeing that she's grown a bit being three years older than me. I've been good, but I didn't know you had a twin sister, with pretty blue eyes. That's Aurora she was born a bit of sick so she was resting at home on our birthday party. That's very sad not being able to attend her own party. Nice to meet you Aurora. I'm Elise. Likewise, she replied expressionlessly. She's a bit shy. That's okay, I've met other shy kids before, and so where are the two of you going? She smiles to do a guild quest. We're both adventurers. What? She shouted. No way. You two are so young. I know, but it's not like time passes faster, and I'm done learning how to read, write, my skills, magic with father, and swordsmanship with mother. You sure have been working hard. Luckily for me, I've done those things as well except swordsmanship. Really? Then what class are you? I have a few choices. I could learn a rare class called alchemist since I learned a lot with grandpa. That sounds very interesting. Since my parents work there I know they make potions. Yes. It is very complicated and needs a lot of studying. And I want something more interesting. Like what? I don't know. Seeing as you're both adventurers it makes me want to become one too since I have the aptitude for some other things. Must be nice to have a lot of choices. Since, I have many classes I can choose from. I'm stuck on deciding which one I want to become. I picked one where I could learn more magic since that's what fascinates me the most. 
That's interesting. What class did you two pick? I'm a witch, and Aurora hasn't decided yet. She puts her hand tapping my mouth and then looks around us. I and Aurora stare confused at her. Elise then gets closer to the middle of us and whispers, Don't mention your class ever again. The church hates classes that are evil. Aurora starts laughing. Is it really? I look with sad eyes at Elise. Yes, Iris so please don't mention it to anyone. If someone asks just say you're a wizard. All right. I will. I say lowly looking down with a sad expression. Don't be sad though. In the end, I believe all combat classes are evil since we can only level them up by killing others. I look at her, said like that you're right. It's like the system made it so that we must kill each other if we want to become stronger. I believe so. Yes, that's why I'm still deciding what class I'll take since I can either spend my whole life taking over grandpa's business. That doesn't sound bad. True especially since I was blessed with the light element. It's very useful to enhance the potions. Is that what father does at work since he has the unique light element as well? Since you know about wizard class is that the one you can become? Yes, along with priest and healer if I chose to. Sounds like you'll have to think about it and we got to go do our first mission. Sure. Would you like me to tag along? One of the skills I have is healing I got it with a skill point. I look at Aurora, and she just shrugs her shoulders then keeps moving. If you'd like to come just make sure you're behind us when we get to the monsters. I will. She smiles. We head to the east farm together. After a while, we arrive at the farming areas. Pretty vast plains with different fields extending through them. A few houses before them and after what looks like an inclined hill with some trees on top, hard to climb but doable. Upon going through the main road we eventually lead to a small house where I knock at its door being the closest one. I hear a rough voice from inside. I'm coming. I wait patiently with my hands holding each other on my back. The door opens and an old man appears around his sixties. Perhaps more. He looks at us and says, Good morning young children. How can I help you? I smile and with a very kind tone I reply, Good morning. I'm here on behalf of the Adventurers Guild. You are? Take no offense child but you truly do look way too young to be part of the guild. He stares at me and further says, Could I please see some proof? I show him my guild card. Does this work? Let's see. The man puts the card really close to his eyes and reads out loud, Name Iris, age 8. I'm sorry for doubting you. He bowed slightly as he apologized realizing that it was a guild card and that it really did match a young girl such as herself. His back makes a little crack sound making me surprised and worried about the old man so I ask, are you okay? The old man laughs while rubbing his back and says, don't worry child, this back has had better days. It is but the aging cycle we humans must go through at some point in life. I hope it gets better fast. He points at the fields and says, thank you. And I won't waste more of your time young Iris, the slimes tend to appear around there, but be very careful they are strong and you don't seem particularly strong. I see him pointing towards some trees close by to the fields, we'll defeat those slimes for you. Don't worry. Please do if you can. If don't over push it. This sage has been taking a toll on me, when I was younger. I used to defeat them myself with my hoe and my fire element turning those little monsters into grilled gelatin. We laugh upon hearing that. Say what things do you plant on these fields? I asked curiously like some of the things I haven't tried myself. From the left side to the right side we have barley, oats, rye, wheat, apples, cherries, cabbage, and onions. He says as he waves his arm in the direction of the field so that we could understand better. Interesting. Thank you for the description, as we start walking together towards the fields the man says, past the yellow wheat and the green apples, is where you'll find most of the slimes, they seem to like apples the most out of all the crops we have, all right, thank you, I wave at him happily as we move towards the apple tree zone close by to the planted wheat, these are certainly a lot of fields, I guess the grandfather worked a lot when he was younger. I say while remembering myself of when I farmed for a year for the titles. Yes, most peasants through countless generations do cereal farming, some territories are even owned by noble families and have animals caring so that they can have all types of meat, vegetables, and cereals available. That sounds very noble like, 
Aurora says with a hateful tone. Elise shrugs her shoulder upon hearing her reply agreeing with her to some extent. I look at Aurora, I guess she doesn't like nobles, neither the people from the church and also the hero who apparently sealed her in our past life. Was the church involved and the nobles as well in the sealing during our past life? Talking about heroes, how are they chosen? I've heard from mother that sometimes it's way more than one, but generally only one has the unique class hero. The others are awarded in some ways with the unique and blessed skills or other things. Further said that everyone that is born in this world is blessed in a unique way as well. I wonder what's the difference from someone normally reincarnated. To someone reincarnated or summoned from a different world. Wait. I received two skills from my reincarnated title, and my mother said people don't usually start with skills, and some and get unique or blessed skills. Since the system starts with the skills at level 1 then I who have a unique skill from an early age should be able to level it up a lot more than someone who got summoned already at X years. I don't know how good appraisal skill is, but I'll make sure to invest my mana in it. Hopefully, it'll be good. Do heroes start at level 1, since the system works the same for everyone? If it does then I'd be stronger than them in the beginning. I get the feeling Aurora has thought about that as well. In the case, that the same hero who sealed her appears, she'll most likely want to kill him. I wonder why she killed the king from the old kingdom from our old world. I didn't tell this fact to mother otherwise she'd be always worried and concerned about her being with me. Even I don't know how I should react towards her sometimes, but I like and trust Aurora. She gives me the vibe that no matter what sister will be there for me despite the creepy moods, perhaps because of her being ominous that I feel assured of that. Slimes ahead Iris, Elise shouted. That's a slime. They're clear balls, they look adorable. There's a blue one in the middle of them, Aurora mentions. The blue slime starts channeling mana around him. Iris. Elise full back. We split and head some steps backward to gain some safety range from whatever it's about to do. The slime shoots a stream of water in the middle of us, then starts sliding on it fast to catch up to us. Iris. Aurora yells. I spined. I freeze the water freezing the slime on top of it. Notice. 100 mana has been deducted. The rare ice element. Elise makes a surprised face. Aurora runs closer while mana coating her hands mixing with the element darkness, the unique dark element, my opposite element. Elise says even more surprised. The slime a creature that can perceive its surroundings in a 360 degrees matches Aurora's approach by stretching part of him towards her hands to melt them. Aurora without caring grabs the slimy tentacle and starts melting it with the darkness around her hands. Suffering from the damage, the slime shakes his body, and the slimes behind him charge at us. I ready my sword and stay in front of Elise protecting her. As they start getting closer to us, I mana coat my sword. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. I slash at the upcoming tentacles cutting them and injuring the different slimes. One of the tentacles grabs my leg damaging it, ah, the moment it touches me I let out a moan of pain, and then without wasting a moment I freeze the wound, notice, 10 health and 50 mana have been deducted, I extend the freeze to the tentacle to avoid further damage and then slice it with my sword, notice, 50 mana has been deducted, after my scream, a light surrounds my leg and I feel the warmth in it, notice, 5 health has been recovered. I look around us and there's 6 clear slimes and a blue slime that is fighting Aurora. That water path earlier made it easier for them to move. I should have frozen it before it reached this far. I still have a long way to go. Iris at your left. Elise shouted in panic. Notice. 5 health has been recovered. I turn to the side and a tentacle hits my arm around the elbow hurting it. Notice, 10 health has been deducted. Freeze it. I shout in pain. Notice, 50 mana and 10 health have been deducted. I slice the tentacle injuring the slime in return. My sword stops shining. My mana coat ended. This is becoming tough and painful. If I was alone against this many slimes I'd be dead or perhaps worse. I didn't expect them to be this strong. I smile excitedly with a mix of nervousness and will to surpass myself. I mana coat my sword with a large amount of it, notice, 300 mana has been deducted, 
I then I spine the two slimes closest to me and head toward the one at the right, notice, 200 mana has been deducted, as soon as I get in the range I take a step forward and with all my might I slice it in half mercilessly, system, the title monster slayer has been received, system, the title slime slayer has been received, notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, they're softer than I expected it seems like the mana coating really does make a difference, behind you Iris, Elise shouts as she's behind me observing the enemies, notice, 5 health has been recovered, with the warning I quickly turn around as fast as I possibly can and slash at the incoming tentacle rushing at the other slime, getting closer to him and thrusting the sword through him in the middle of it, then I put more strength and cleave the sword to the side leaving a large clean cut killing it. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, on the other side, the blue slime is shooting water balls at Aurora while she defends herself with a darkness barrier, a battle of who has the most mana, the leftover 4 clear slimes all attack at once, I'll protect your right side, Iris. I slash at two of their tentacles that are coming from the left side, the other two tentacles approach from the right side which ends up going against a light wall made from Elise's skill. I realize the light of the sword diminishing so I rush at the ones at the left while Elise's skill keeps the other two busy while I receive some healing too. Notice. 5 health has been recovered, once I get close I slash one of the slimes in half consuming the rest of the mana. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, damn, I'm out of mana, if I take too long the other ones will attack Elise or Aurora, I'll have to compensate it with health, I mana coat my sword and head towards the closest slime, notice, 70 health and 30 mana have been deducted, he attacks me with another tentacle filled with acid and I slash it in half all the weight to its body killing it, notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, the acid in his tentacle sprays around hitting my belly, making me scream due to the pain, notice, 20 health has been deducted, Elise starts running towards me, the protective barrier is breaking, she shouts as she casts healing on me, notice, 10 health has been recovered, once she gets close to me I ask while in pain, your healing increased, I took the healer class to be of better help to you, and my skill leveled up too, she smiled worriedly looking at my wounds, notice, 20 health has been deducted, thank you for the heals, I reply with a painful expression while trying to smile, if I knew I would have spent all my points in wisdom to be able to heal more times, notice, 10 health has been recovered, that's what I did to be able to use more magic, I laugh, notice, 20 health has been deducted, notice, the skill acid resistance has been acquired, system, the title skill mastery has been received, the protection breaks, here they come Iris, Elise declares while casting heal on me, notice, 10 health has been recovered, I mana coat the sword and rush at them, notice, 120 mana has been deducted, notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a slime, notice, slight mana recovery skill has leveled up to 2, notice, Slight Wisdom Boost skill has leveled up to 2, as I run at them, 2 dark hands appear below them binding them to the ground, I'll take the left one, I say loudly so that my sister can coordinate with me properly, notice, 10 health has been recovered, Aurora hearing my voice heads towards the other one, notice, Acid Resistance skill has leveled up to 2, notice, 8 health has been deducted, their healing is making the acid disappear gradually and the acid resistance is negating a bit of the damage, I slice the tentacles that head toward me while Aurora pierces the right one with her dark piercing skill, notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, I avoid the splash this time around by jumping to the side rolling around through the ground, notice, 10 health has been recovered. I then watch the darkness making a hole in the slime from one side to the other consuming everything in its path. I throw my sword at the left slime cutting it partially. Aurora approaches it and pierces it with darkness dealing the final blow. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice. 8 health has been deducted. She then runs at me and uses the dark element to suck the leftover acid out of my body. Notice. A skill has been used against Iris. Notice. 
20 health has been deducted, I check the ground, seeing as there's no acid I lay down on it, notice, 10 health has been recovered, your very reckless little sister taking out 6 slimes on your own, Aurora says in a cold voice, you took too long on that one, I smile at her, it was a pretty annoying one shooting from far away with his water magic making the ground all muddy and slippery while moving around dodging my skills and attacks, Elise runs at us dripping halfway, getting up, and approaching me worriedly, how are you, Iris, I'm alright I'm actually pretty tough still have a bit more than 100 health left, I smile at her relieving her from being worried, just how tough are you, she asks surprised, I farmed, I fished, I exhausted my mana many times and did a lot of things gaining a lot of titles, oh, so that's how you got so much health, yes, Elise, I think I'll become an adventurer and join your party sometimes if you too would like me to, she smiles, she picked the healer class to help us, so her resolution isn't lacking, I look at Aurora who looks expressionlessly, I don't really care either way, Aurora said even though she found Elise useful, I look back at Elise who's waiting for approval, if you get a card by passing the guild exam, you're more than welcome, she tears up and smiles, thank you both, after resting for two hours, the corpses of the slimes around us start shining and disappearing in their place, beautiful sparkly stones remain, soul stones, Elise declared happily upon noticing the glimmer of light penetrating one of them reflecting close to her. The monsters vanished? I ask surprised as I notice the shining stones on the ground close by. Yes, slimes in specific since they are fully made of mana are completely absorbed by the soul stones. Elise explained with passion filling confidence in her knowledge. That's interesting. Aurora added calmly with an expressionless face, other creatures we have to dissect or dismantle them and find the soul stones, and we can use some of their parts to sell to, dissecting or dismantling, sounds like something that'd give me more disgrace, are those names you mentioned skills, I ask curiously as I have much to learn from this world and Elise seems like someone who enjoys explaining, yes, their skills used by some adventurers they're even people who specialize in it, as the better the corpse parts the more money they can earn with it, if the goods aren't damaged it makes sense the crafter would be able to do a better job with the materials, exactly, blacksmiths even use these soul stones to craft all kinds of equipment some adventurers save the good ones for that purpose, Aurora starts collecting them and placing them inside the bag as I drink some water, you want some? I ask since mother always tells me that sharing is caring and well she's a good girl, I'm good thank you Iris, Elise replied smiling, she seems really happy being around us, I check status, 10 mana has been deducted, status, level, 1, experience 81 hundredths fame, 60, disgrace, 4270 class, witch, rank 1, experience 82 thousandths race, human, name, Iris, 8 years old health, 300 460, mana, 162 830 status points colon 0 strength, 133, stamina, 46, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 81 plus 2 attack, 10, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1950 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training b, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sail e, advanced reader c, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, peasant, f, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer F, Skill Mastery F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 1 Actives, Status Level 40 D, System Library Level 20 E, Mana Coat Level 5 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 1 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 20 E, Sword Mastery Level 10 F, Mana control level 20 E, 
Ice Control Level 10F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 2F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 2F, Acid Resistance Level 1F. Unique, Appraisal Level 2. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 7 100 10 attack from using Mother Sword. Not that it helps against slimes due to the physical immunity, but it's good to have in case we run into something else. Seems like I won a skill point from one of the titles. We killed 7 slimes in total and Slime Slayer is still at its lowest. I wonder how many we need to defeat. Those things were strong. If I had mana I would have appraised them to see what kind of information I'd get, even though I'm not sure appraisal can be used in living beings. Since it is a unique skill I suspect it can. It is a grade above S after all, otherwise, it wouldn't show in a different place than the rest of the things, that is if skills are similar to titles in terms of ranking which I hope they are. This world is a little too complex in some things. Iris, Aurora, would you two like to go lunch at my place? She asks curiously as she looks at me looking at something invisible. Sure. We'd be happy to. I reply with a smile without taking my eyes of the status. Let's go then. She starts walking towards the village happily. Sister, did you receive any title from all this? I ask her with a quiet voice. Not really. So killing things doesn't work either. I say with a disappointed tone that matches Aurora's one. She shrugs. I guess we'll have to fill the Grimo eye rank and see what it does. Perhaps the result from it will give you enough statuses to keep up the title difference. Perhaps, she sighs which makes me imagine a Grimo eye sneezing. Even though you're plenty strong as you are right now. One out of one million of my original strength. She says coldly while reminiscing about the past. Just how strong was she in our past life? Was her strength the reason why they had to seal her since they couldn't fight her directly? We followed Elise to her home to lunch there and then we headed to the Adventurers Guild. Four hours later we arrive at the guild. Leona, I shout from the entrance grabbing everyone's attention. Upon hearing that the receptionist chuckles and smiles waving at us. We head there ignoring the adventurers around us. Once we arrive Leona speaks. Hello Iris how are you? Didn't know you had a twin. I don't remember registering her at the guild. Must have been a different colleague of mine. I'm doing well. She's Aurora we just came from the farming fields, we took a break after fighting six clear slimes and a blue slime for the quest, nice to meet you Aurora, and a blue slime, that's an advanced species with an element, it must have evolved after consuming mana and water from somewhere, isn't it normal for slimes to have colors? It's pretty normal for them to be immune to some elements and even having a certain color that shows it off, but it's far from their usual territory. They have a base? I ask confused as I've never of that from my parents before. Yes, all monsters and beasts have a sort of a nest we could say. Why doesn't the guild destroy the nest so that you don't have more problems with slimes? The moment I finish my question an adventurer starts laughing behind us. If only it was that easy. Those nests are filled with very strong monsters. After all this time I've never heard of anyone successfully going inside a nest and come back alive. Are they really that dangerous? Not even the past heroes were able to clean them? Well the heroes were a great help, but they're not invincible so they would die too, swarmed by monsters. Then isn't there a chance that a swarm of monsters comes running to this village destroying everything? Yes, but monsters are usually fighting other monsters or beasts. So the leftovers usually roam to human territories where we dispatch adventurers or the army to deal with them and slimes come from the south territory so these that you fought today are the very weakest of their species. I understand. Thank you for the explanation sir. By the way, Elise here a healer would like to register as a member of the guild. I pulled her closer to Leonore. Hello, Leonore, she says with an excited face while grabbing her fingers crossed into each other hands. Welcome Elise, we usually hold an exam for newcomers. This applies to people under 16 except support classes such as yourself. So I can become an adventurer just like that? Yes, as long as you're older than the minimum age. Which is 10, she stares at me. I look away knowing I got in being younger. I'm 11, so I can join. Very well follow me so we can get you a card. After a while, she returns with it. 
Keep in mind that due to you being under 15 you can only do quests if you're in a party. I can't do any alone, it's too dangerous for a healer class or any of the support type to do them alone. Plus you're underage so that's the condition. I understand. Since we all have a card and we all did the same quest I'd like to exchange these soul stones for this quest. We all give Leonor the card and the bag with them. I'll update the quest, but the quest hasn't been cleared as there's three times the size of the slimes you mentioned you killed. Sure, I say with the expectation of finishing it in the future. Also Elise, whenever you need a party just talk to me and I'll enlist you in one. It is one of the jobs we receptionists do. All right I will, thank you. She smiles. Here you go 35 copper for each of you and 14 points from the 7 slimes. Thank you, Leonor, me and Elise say in unison. You're very welcome. So what did you think about one of the weakest monsters Miss Undridge that became an adventurer? They were a little tough, and well the numbers were also troublesome. You girls got lucky it was only 7 slimes that you fought. But imagine the whole gang that the quest mentioned was there. How would it be? We'd kill the ones we could and then run away. Leonor starts laughing. Yes, survival above everything else. It is a wise way to go about it. And don't you ever forget to preserve your lives no matter what. Yes mom. We shout in unison happily aside from Aurora who just observes everything and everyone around us with her icy blue eyes. Her twin sister Aurora is so quiet. For twins they couldn't be more different, and her eyes look cold and have a different color than Iris's, how intriguing. It's rare to see a blonde girl and also eyes like theirs. What eye and hair color do your parents have Iris? Hum? My dad is brown both, and my mother is blonde with brown eyes, yet their daughters turned out with green and blue eyes, that's unusual, I guess. I don't really know much about eye colors. R. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong about it. They're just a rare color in Lumen Kingdom along with a red and blonde hair, that is almost extinct. Isn't this the only human kingdom that exists? Yet the color is rare? Yes. There may exist some noble families that still preserve the blonde and red color. But since the church is more interested in black hair due to the heroes and the goddess Arya. I see. It ends up affecting what others want for their children. Is that it? Aurora says hitting right in the point. Yes, pretty much. You're wise for a kid. She laughs and says, thank you. Miss Leonor, I'd like for you to check different parties that require a healer. I'm okay with any rank. Certainly. And you might be okay with any rank but two above and two below is the max. But since you're a healer I'll try to find a D party so that you can learn and grow up stronger faster. She smiled at Elise. I look at my friend Elise confused who was so happy partying with us earlier today. She looks at me noticing my face and says, I'll party with you whenever you need my help, but I want to become stronger fast and learn what I can from experienced adventurers. So that was it. For a moment I thought she didn't want to party with us anymore. I smile at her resolution, sure. Hope you can become strong fast Elise. We then split up and head to our home stopping near the fountain on the way. An hour passes after we talk a bit with Elise by the fountain and we then arrive at home. We're home. I say loudly so that my parents can hear me. Welcome home Iris. Mother told me everything. You look awful. Heal. Notice. Health has been completely recovered. That's a strong heal dad. I say with a surprised face. Been using it for decades. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Dad laughed. Dad waved his hand at Aurora looking serious while smiling and said light smite. Darkness barrier, she said in a cold tone while raising her hand while looking ominous. The light pierced her barrier burning her hand for a while. Once it started hurting her a lot dad closed his hand then opened it again and cast heal. Aurora tilted her head in confusion afterward without moaning in pain or saying anything enduring everything as if she was used to it while thinking about what had happened, so that was the unique light element my nemesis, she thought. What was that dad? I shout confused. A little test, was checking how strong Aurora is, in his mind, he thought, and also if she'd attack me back. But all she did was defend herself despite being harmed. Come let's talk the three of us. 
Dad turns around and when he does I whisper to Aurora. I'm sorry sister, I didn't expect that. Her cold gaze meets my kind one and says, it's alright, I kind of get what's on his mind. On the next day, after spending the afternoon and part of the night along with Aurora being interrogated by Dad, I leave the bed, dress, and head towards the bathroom then later I go water the fields with one hand as I eat bread with butter inside with the other that I brought along from the kitchen. As I water my fields I go into deep thinking. Yesterday I realized how truly weak we humans are, if I didn't have both of them I would have died even after gathering that many titles. Even after training for a year and learning skills with dad and mother, it was barely enough. If I had for example waited five more years to be closer to the age to be able to register at the guild, the only thing I get would be an extra five stamina from growing older and a few other things from completing a few of the titles I have. Even if my magic control and swordsmanship would have raised a bit more, I'm simply way too weak, be it in my past life or this one, nothing really changed. My eyes start getting blurry and I let myself fall on my knees crying. I'm truly, truly weak. Behind and above Iris, a cold gaze watched her crying unnoticed from her room. This won't do, I'll have to level up and become stronger otherwise the day may come when our kingdom goes to war. After all, the saintess said we would all die in the future, if I stay weak like this how will I protect my parents and sister? One of the other races might invade us. A monster nest might get a smart enough leader who changes the way it works, even some bad humans could attempt to hurt us. There are too many reasons that I must improve myself to protect my family and friends. My precious mother and father, my mysterious sister who I also took a liking for. Aurora who went as far as to take revenge on my past life family. Status I want you to turn off notifications about skills leveling up. Notice, affirmative, mana and heal deductions are fine, I get to know my health and mana with some math though it would be easier if status calculated it for me. Earning experience will also tell me that my opponent was defeated so it also works in my favor. Last night I discussed with parents about my unique skill appraisal and they said it sounded like a skill that can give information by spending mana. I woke up super early, so I'll try all kinds of things and then by the time Aurora wakes up I'll have my mana back, I'll save some mana to read from the system library. It's thanks to that skill that I've gotten tips on how to get titles. Also it helped me increase my skill status level, it's currently my highest skill even if it's not a combat skill it is very useful. Last time I used appraisal it consumed up to 500 mana, why did this happen? I walked to the river as I'm done watering my field while thinking. Was it perhaps related to the skill grade? The higher it is the more mana. Was it the request I made? The information about the Grimo Isle being too difficult to process. If the level of appraisal was higher would the information he gave be different? Maybe in the future. I could try to appraise the Grimo Isle again when both are higher level. I pick a stone on my way to the river. Appraise this stone. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Green river pebble a little smooth, rank F material. Hum, this was a lot less mana than last time. It seems like there are different mana calculations being made. Appraise skill appraisal. Notice, not enough mana. Seems like status won't let me appraise things outside my mana range. Thank you for that as I don't want to lose health for it perhaps even dying depending on the amount. If that's the case then I can only think on possibilities. One of the major differences is that I asked for information from something I was holding. Another important factor is that it was information outside the status. Wait. I run to the river and sit close to it. After a while passes, I give order through my mind, there, appraise that little fish. Notice. 50 mana has been deducted. Level 1 river fish 10 health 30 mana, rank F cooking material. 50 mana consumed, but isn't that so little? Why is it that fishes have level and mana? This world sure is something interesting. Why do fishes have mana? Appraise me a solution. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. When animals reach a certain amount of mana, they can rank up transforming into rank 1 monsters or evolve into rank 1 beasts. What? Animals can become monsters or beasts if they collect enough mana. 
Wouldn't that mean that it's impossible to beat them if they keep producing like this? I shout surprised. I'm assuming the amount necessary will be really high otherwise I would have heard of this before unless people haven't realized it. Is there a chance no one has had this appraisal skill before? There's also the chance of someone having and not divulging the information as well. I didn't receive a single experience point from any fish I've killed yet I did from slimes that are monsters. In other words, they must be at least rank 1 for me to get experience. I'll assume that if humans and demons have ranks that we're also rank 1, even though I don't know the differences between rank 0 and rank 1. I feel like beasts and the monsters can easily outpopulate every other race just on animals ranking up alone, and if that did happen over the years then it wouldn't be strange for us humans to be a pretty small population compared to them. We'll have to find a way to make everyone become stronger, even if somehow I insist to get incredibly strong we won't be able to beat hundreds or thousands that are equal or possibly stronger than us. Parents told me that a long time ago an explorer realized that we were around 10% of the world population from what he was able to find out. There's a chance that we are way less maybe 5% or even 1%? I gulp my saliva down as the thought scares me to some extent. Dad told me we're around 10 million humans just in the Lumen Kingdom. If every woman would get pregnant in a ratio of 5 million men and of 5 million women, we'll get 15 million humans after 9 months. Since it was estimated that 10 million humans are equal to 10% the world population would be 100 million in total, then it's no wonder we humans could never destroy a nest of said monsters or beasts. Just how in the world haven't we been wiped out? Due to all the circumstances, it's amazing we're still here to be part of the world and after talking with parents, they said that the nests are only south beyond the border in the territory of beasts, possibly the reason humans haven't been able to expand further. Dad told me that beasts don't derive towards intelligence and wisdom. They are brutal while aiming for strength and dominance among each other, as well as backstabbing each other to be the ruler, but father did say that from time to time a strong enough leader emerges, and starts changing the ways everything works, disturbing the territories around it, in which case could reasonably be what the saintess predicted. Monsters can be either type, but usually inclined to magic since they require mana to transform to the next monster tier. Even then they're not very bright, they can have lots of mana but a low intelligence and focus mostly on either killing or survival, further said that both can be very hard to deal with especially the ones who survive for a long time as they tend to drag the fights longer exhausting their enemies. Demons are less intelligent than us humans, but live longer and can be stronger in the physical sense or a magical sense, so eventually, they are likely to do a great amount of chaos. I'm surprised that they haven't conquered the world yet. Further did mention there's a red dragon and a giant turtle in the middle of us and them which could be the reason why they don't bother us, and they probably have their share of enemies too since there must be monster and beast nests all around the world. If I were to imagine, they also have beasts and the monsters to deal with, possibly even demons as humans fight each other, I'm sure demons do too. In the end, the more I think about it, the more I realize that everyone is ultimately against everyone like a sort of battle royal, races against other races, there's no ending to our confrontation and the violence that is born from this cycle. All this makes me think on the goddess area, why would she allow so much disparity between everyone, why would she allow such bad things to happen, why can't everyone be allowed to live in peace, I feel like she's a bad goddess. Unless there's a very good reason that justifies everything that has been happening for quite some time now. Since ancient times recorded in the system library books. Not a world I'd like to spend my life in. But sadly I can't leave it, I'll have to adapt to it and protect my family and friends from all of this, despite being extremely weak. From having spoken with Elise I got to understand that compared to other kids my age my statuses are a bit higher than most. A lot of kids also help their parents with their professions so they also have a few titles. Next time I'm with Elise I'll ask her about what titles she has and how she got them so I can get some more. Every bit of parameters I may receive from that knowledge will surely help no matter how low it is. Status. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 1. 
experience 80 one hundredths fame, 60, disgrace, 4270 class, which, rank 1, experience 80 two thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 480 480, mana, 370 830 status points colon 0 strength, 133, stamina, 48, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 81 plus 2 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1950 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training a, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sale e, advanced reader c, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, peasant, f, class c, monster slayer f, slime slayer f, skill mastery f, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, one actives, status level 40 d, system library level 20 e, mana coat level 6 f, mana wave level 1 f, ice bind level 2 f, passives, bleeding resistance level 10 f, swordsmanship level 20 e, sword mastery level 10 f, mana control level 20 e, ice control level 11 f, slight wisdom boost level 2 f, slight mana recovery level 3 f, acid resistance level 1 f, unique, appraisal level 5, cursed, unidentified skill, rare element, ice, cursed soul bound grimo i rank f, 7 100, my stamina which is the most important status as if it reaches zero, I'll die is the lowest. Mother told me we receive a skill point and five status points each time we level up. I think I'll spend all of them in wisdom as I started. After all, as long as I have mana I can find a way to escape from possible dangers while more health depending on the situation will become irrelevant. Speaking of which, I ought to do what lumberjack person wrote. I run near home and pick father's axe then head south of home towards some trees. Let's see if it works on this small tree. I'll mana coat the axe. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. I chop the thin tree and it falls on the ground in one go. System, the title tree chopper has been received. System. The title tree type has been received. I cut all the branches in the outer layer of the wood turning it into a log system. The title log maker has been received. These were all the titles I learned from reading the lumberjack first volume. I look at the seeds on the floor and remember farming. I start digging on the ground and planting the seeds. I spend hours cutting small trees, turning them into logs, and planting the seeds that fall from them. At some point, Aurora joins me and starts helping me digging holes making it faster. I end up getting two more titles. A tree series after completing the tree types which I specifically aimed for, and a new one called Tree Planter. You're always doing peculiar things, Iris. True Aurora, but it's the fastest way I have right now of becoming stronger as a human. I honestly don't feel bad not being human realizing how much work you have to get those titles. I smiled upon hearing those words at her while sweat drips from my forehead. We're done, for now, overworking will just make my body ache later. I've noticed something after using appraisal Aurora. Hum? What did you learn? That fishes have levels and mana, and that they can rank up transforming into monsters or evolve into beasts. I shouted. What the hell? How do they do that? Apparently they need to consume an unknown amount of mana. Wait Iris, what if the fish levels up before having gathered enough mana? You mean that depending on the level it somehow could get the results of the transformation or revolution could differ? Yes. If the system works like that then wouldn't you a Grimo I'll be the same? You're saying that because I have that awakening thing? Exactly. The system should be similar so perhaps if I get a lot of levels before getting the awakening then what I receive could differ, even though you're an item and not an animal or a monster or a beast. So it could just be different. True. There's also no way we can test it. Yeah.
Let's head home I need to rest my body, it is still a child's one, and even by using mana to make things easier it still takes a toll. I'll go back to the farm and do some slime hunt while you recover yourself. Wait are you sure? We barely withstood ourselves yesterday. I'll be fine don't worry Iris, it is me you're talking about, she says with a cold tone and an icy smile. A while later after splitting from Aurora I meet my mother who's at home cooking lunch. The moment I close the door mother notices me by its sound. You were out so early baby? Yes, I was watering the field and cutting some trees for my title collection. My mother smiles, you sure love getting all kinds of strange titles. True, you need help with anything? No, I'm okay dear, go take a bath. You must be tired and reeking of sweat. I laugh, that's true, I really am smelly, I'll be back. I'll have lunch done by the time you're done. It's your favorite potatoes with tomato soup. Yay. Thank you mother you're the best. I rush to the bath. An hour passes effortlessly. After lunch, we are on the sofa talking. I and mother, dad is sorry for what he did baby, but you know that we truly care about you so he had to make sure in his own way. I think Aurora wasn't angry about it because it was dad. But if it was someone else then. Yeah. I get a very bad vibe sometimes from her. The affinity that girl has with the darkness element is abnormal. She had a very bad life, so I believe that she's a good girl deep down. I don't doubt you baby, but be careful with her just in case. I understand mother, I lay on her lap and she pats my hair. It seems like you and her killed some slimes yesterday, with Elise the granddaughter of Vincent our boss. Yes, mother, she became a healer in the middle of it supporting us with healing magic. Just like dad. Her grandfather was complaining about it while I was working. He wanted her to succeed him in alchemy. I see. I think it wouldn't suit her though. She feels like a bird. A bird? Mother asks confused. Yes, birds are free to explore the world, and alchemy spending her time inside a shop. I feel like it would be like a bird cage. Mother opened her mouth then closed it without saying anything. I believe she'll become a good healer. I smile at mother. Yes I hope so, in the worst case she can always change her class to alchemy. Exactly. Unlike me who only had the witch class, she had a few choices. After mother brain processed what I said she shouted, which class? Yes. It was the only class I could obtain I have close to 5000 disgrace, so I think all other options were denied due to that. Oh noes, I have a daughter with the unique dark element and now my other daughter has the witch class. She says with a worried tone. It's okay mother, I'll keep it a secret from the church plus it's a magical class and it doesn't affect them in any possible way. Who told you that? Elise did. She's not wrong, but you twins are very special, rare blonde hair color, rare eye color, exquisite elements, one has the witch class, the other is an item. It's bound to bring a lot of attention to you girls, in the future. You'll have to be careful with the fanatic groups of the church baby. I'll be careful don't worry dear mother, I'll also keep an eye on Aurora to avoid her getting into danger. Yes, do that. It's a good thing we live in the outskirts of the village and very far from the kingdom capital. Why? I ask curiously while looking at her from below. The fanatics live in the capital because that's where the Pope and the Saintess live in. The Saintess. I wonder how she looks like. She's a bit like you with green eyes and green hair, and has this warm aura around her. Green hair? That sounds different. I guess I'm not one to talk. Being blonde, I laugh. True. They say her hair color is very special that it is the sign that the blood running in the veins was blessed by the goddess. Mother smiles. Is that warm aura because she has the fire element? She's like Luke with light element, just with a lot more mana. And due to the excessive amount the aura inside of her it is said that it propagates naturally around her causing a warm aura, and her mother when she was alive it was known for having an aura of light illuminating everything and everyone wherever she went through. Oh, that's interesting. Sounds like going full of wisdom has some benefits. Mother laughed lightly. I hope you're still not going crazy about going full wisdom right? How are your overall statuses? Hum, status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 1. Experience 81 hundredths fame, 60. Disgrace, 4270 class, which, rank 1. Experience 82 thousandths race, 
Correct human, name, Iris, 8 years old health, 480-480, mana, 600-870 status points colon 0 strength, 150, stamina, 48, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 85 plus 2 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1950 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training a, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sail e, advanced reader c, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, peasant, f, class c, monster slayer f, slime slayer f, skill mastery f, tree chopper e, tree types, log maker e, tree planter c, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, one actives, status level 41 d, system library level 20 e, mana coat level 6 f, mana wave level 1 f, Ice Bind Level 2 F Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 20 E, Sword Mastery Level 10 F, Mana Control Level 20 E, Ice Control Level 11 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 2 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 2 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Unique, Appraisal Level 5 Cursed, Unidentified Skill Rare Element Ice Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 7 100, I have around 150 Strength, 48 Stamina, 85 Agility, 107 Dexterity, 71 Intelligence, and 87 Wisdom so far, what the hell Iris, that's a lot for someone as young as you, she shouts at me surprised, I did collect a lot of titles, it's half my status literally, I shout back, seems like collecting titles really is great, most of us don't do it due to the disgrace and the church hates it, so that makes my cute daughter being truly amazing, she laughs hugging me and kissing my forehead, alright baby, dad will be home shortly I gotta go work now, sure, have a good day mother, where's your sister, she went on a slime hunt, alone? Yes. I was tired from the morning workout. I hope she's okay. I look back to the screen. Seems like I still have a skill point I haven't used. Knowing her. I'm sure she is. Mother do me a favor. What do you need honey? Give me some of your mana I need it to apply it on status. On status? Yes. I want to check something. Hum? All right. But since it is dangerous to inject you with my mana, you must spend it fast otherwise you'll get mana disease, the moment I nod with my head please do it, alright, dear, I want to see the list of the witch class skills, notice, actives or passives, dad taught me about the three mana laws created by the system, their first is a person's mana cannot be stolen even if they share the same element, their second is one cannot absorb something created by someone else mana even if they have the same element. The third is one can assist another with their own mana by their own free will by connecting one another. All of them, appraise their meaning while at it, if it is not enough mana then don't overuse it. I nod with my head and mother freely gives me her mana by placing her hands on my shoulders. Notice, loading screen with the witch class skills list with the help of appraisal. Witchcraft skill tree, actives, skills that consume mana to be cast, dark alchemy, magically craft potions with limited effects and that only last for so long, starts at 10%, 0, 5% per level, mana shield, 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level, drain HP, absorbs 1 horsepower per minute from enemies around healing itself plus 1 per level, decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level, magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle, or the area itself, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level, curses, it requires casting time, 
the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Delirium, makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, half a percent chance of success half a percent per level mute makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level blind makes it so that the vision for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level deafen makes it so that the hearing for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level taste makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Smell, makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Paralysis, paralyzes a random part of the body, half a percent chance of success, 0.7 percent per level. Fear, induces fear towards the target, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Confusion, causes confusion towards the target, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Rituals, require spending mana to create a magical circle, needs tremendous amounts of mana, can accumulate every day. Memory loss, makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories, 0.25 percent chance of success, 0.25 percent per level. X, ritual, sleep, makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level, snow falling, due to ice element snow will fall, everywhere that snows will be RS mana territory, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level, cursing objects, a random curse will be applied in an object, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Taint, it'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Magical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier, detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Passives. Witchcraft. Increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1% per level. May affect personality. Curses mastery. Increases curse chance to activate by 0.25% per level. May affect personality. Rituals mastery. Increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25% per level may affect personality. Dark alchemy mastery, increases alchemy chance by 0.2% per level, may affect personality. Magic control, increases specified proficiency by 0.25% per level. Magic attack slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic defense slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic knowledge slight boost, increases intelligence by one per level. Charm, increases charm by one, attracts generally the opposite gender, one per level. MP absorption, if damaged by an enemy magical skill heal MP by 0.25% of its total mana cost, 0.25% per level. Fire mastery, water mastery, earth mastery, air mastery, nature mastery, poison mastery, acid mastery, ice mastery. Explosion Mastery, Lightning Mastery, Spirit Mastery, Summoning Mastery, Light Mastery, Dark Mastery, Time Mastery, Space Mastery. Thank you for the help mother, I look at her and she looks exhausted. How? Never mind we'll talk later, I gotta go to work or I'll be late. She kissed my forehead and went out. I read the whole list and study it quietly. Seems like some skills didn't get appraised possibly due to lack of mana. This is truly overwhelming, but why is the church so scared of this class? It doesn't seem particularly strong or anything. I'd need to max every skill and even then it still wouldn't be 100% chances at level 100 if that's the max level. Is it due to the personality being affected? 
How does it even affect it? I doubt it'd be something significant. Is it because the class is based on disgrace? Since they hated it and consider the evil that could very well be the reason our disgrace class is stronger than normal ones somehow. Why does the church hate witches? What if it is something to do with the class itself? Perhaps. The charming skill? Will it make people fall in love with me or so? Something that could annoy them. Maybe the dark alchemy skill? Is it different than the one parent's boss has? I want to spend a skill point in it please. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice. Class skills has been unlocked in status. Notice. Skills successfully learned. Status updated. I won experience. Even being this far from Aurora. That's so amazing. Is it from our soul bound? Perhaps our contract? I'd have to appraise to know. Do I have enough mana to do so? I don't want to faint from overusing it. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice. Iris has leveled up to 2. Where I leveled up? Status. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 2. Experience. 0. 200 fame. 60. Disgrace. 4270 class. Witch. Rank 1. Experience 100 two thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 480 480, mana, 2870 status points colon 5 strength, 150, stamina, 48, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 71, wisdom, 85 plus 2 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1950 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series d, body training a, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, Cooking series, E, Slayer series F, Sail E, Advanced Reader C, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer F, Skill Mastery F, Tree Chopper E, Tree Types, Log Maker E, Tree Planter C, Completed series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 1 Actives, Status Level 50 D, System Library Level 20 E, Mana Coat Level 6 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 2 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 20 E, Sword Mastery Level 10 F, Mana Control Level 20 E, Ice Control Level 11 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 2 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 3 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 1 Unique Appraisal Level 42 Cursed Unidentified Skill Rare Element Ice Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F 9100 Amazing I won 5 points I want to spend them all in Wisdom and the skill points since I got Dark Alchemy I'll get its correspondent mastery Notice Skills successfully learned Points successfully spent Status updated All right I should have enough mana to check the skill I hope. Dark Alchemy. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Dark Alchemy. Weakness Potion. It'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep Potion. It'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love Potion. The first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis Potion. It'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison Potion. It'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. It can lead to death. Corruption Potion. Person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote Potion. Depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. I'm surprised they have a definition was it from earlier appraisal on all my class skills or is this a bonus? Maybe it's just part of it so that new witches know what they're doing. From all the potions I think I'll try to produce the paralysis and antidotes potions. Let's see how to make them. Paralysis. Herbs required. One next heartbreak herb. A screen next to it appears. Antidote. 
herbs required, one ex asparagus herb, now then how can I find these herbs, guess I'll take a nap to recover from my physical labor fatigue leftovers and mana, and then head to the village library they should have information about it otherwise I'll check the adventurers guild which I believe they have something related to it. Three hours later I wake up in bed as my body was tired from the morning work. Yawn. I wonder what time is it? Did sister or dad return home yet? I get up and look at my dress totally rumpled. Possibly from having moved inside the sheets while sleeping with it. I shouldn't sleep with it. Mother would have been mad if she knew. My expression frowns as I remind myself of how scary mother can be. I stretch it a bit in front of Aurora's mirror. This mirror is such a blessing being this big. I love it. I stare at it from different angles while doing silly poses laughing on my own without a care in the world. I really wonder what can it be used for seeing as how useful appraisal is being unique tier. A cursed tier skill should be more useful, but since it was a curse before there's a chance that it's just a normal mirror now who completely lost its purpose. Plus even if it was working there is no evil being that must be sealed in it. Since Aurora consumed the curse it had it ends up becoming a very tough mirror, maybe even a shield of sorts, who knows. I head to the kitchen and grab something to eat then head towards the village library talking a bit with dad on the way, and then I let him know where I'm going, which he smiles happily as soon as he heard the location. Once I arrive I pass through the entrance balcony where a library old man stares at me. Good afternoon sir. I say politely with a kind smile. Good afternoon miss. Can I help with something? I'm looking for a herbs book. He rubs his white beard downwards as it's a bit long. Then he points towards a specific hall. At the end of it, you should find what you're looking for miss. Thank you. I'm Iris by the way. The old man smiled and said, I'm the library man, Einstein. Nice to meet you. Likewise Iris. It's rare to see such a young person looking for a herbs book. You must be a herbalist or a genius learning alchemy. I smile and say, yes, alchemy like the old sir at the potion shop, and walk towards the books. I'll be here if you need anything else. The library closes in three hours. It's currently four in the afternoon. He voices a little louder as he points at an old clock on his desk that runs with magic. I wave my hand to signal that I understood and then keep moving. After checking a couple of books I find an old one about herbs. Herbalism by Sage John, it's that old man who also wrote the World of Artana books, System Library. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. System, the title Book Thief has been received. System, the title Criminal has been received. Their system sure doesn't go easy on me does it? I'm betting both titles increased my disgrace. Since I'm a witch now, might as well keep doing these things, moderately, I smile. Plus it's not like I'm doing anything bad, just leveling up my skills, without realizing it my smile turns into a smirk. After spending three hours reading the book compared to the world of Adana book, this one was a lot easier to understand with some clean locations in it. Hopefully, after who knows how long has passed they are still viable. Seems like there's a forest to the west with the herbs I need. I'll go there tomorrow. Wondering what other books there are. This library isn't small, it has plenty of books for me to read. I could easily spend a while coming here every day, consuming books into my skill. The higher the level of the system library goes the more books it'll unlock, which will benefit me further. The problem as always is mana, I need to buy some mana potions so I can do more things, or get stronger and reach a higher level for more wisdom perhaps. Doing quests, playing around with appraisal and system library. Appraisal level goes up the more I appraise things, it went up a lot due to the skills information. I get up and place it back where I found it, and then I start looking around. The library should be closing, and I've rested enough to grab another book into my skill a smaller one at least. If my theory is right it should consume 30 mana per volume inside of it. At least from the two books I tried, it seems to match. I look at a particular book title, The Gods of Artana. The gods? I expected from what I was taught for there to be more gods, but for there to be a book with information about them. This is a great find, system library. Notice, 60 mana has been deducted. 60 mana. I open the book and do a quick look. 
I smile upon realizing I was right. Two volumes, I'll make sure to read them when I get home. As I'm leaving I notice a really large book, this is World Classes. I open and have a look at it quickly, the moment I do I hear a voice. Iris the library is now closing. He looks at the book I'm holding. If you'd like you can take the book home as long as you promise to take very good care of it till you return it. Can I really? My eyes shine with happiness as I feel like I'm being super blessed by the old man. Yes, you may. This one time only, he thought, she's so young, she must be feeling the pressure of choosing a class. And that book is ideal even though she might end up becoming an alchemist. If she studies hard enough since Iris can read at such a young age whereas most kids don't bother learning, she should end up just fine. After a while, I return home walking all the way back. I'm home. I shout happily while carrying a big book. Welcome back daughter, how'd the trip to the library go? He asks to notice what was in my hands without saying anything about it. It was very enjoyable dad, I got to learn a lot of things. That makes me so happy to hear. He smiles warmly at me. By the way dad, Vicent the boss of the potion shop he has the alchemy class right? Yes, he does why do you ask? I was wondering what potions he can make. He can produce health and the mana potions, antidotes, statuses ones like strength, stamina potions, and resistance to elements. That's quite different than the ones I can craft. Thank you, dad. Why, did you want to buy them perhaps? Is it because of not having enough mana since you asked mother for some? Yes, since I have a lot of skills, I've been having a hard time making good use of all of them. They're not cheap, but tomorrow I can bring you some. I've also spoken to Rowan about your field. What did you two talk about? He said for a 10% commission that he can sell things for you. That's not a big commission. I guess their friendship had something to do with it. Sure, I'll use the money from it to pay off the potions. Upon hearing that dad's eyes opened a bit more and without contesting he said with a smile, sure thing Iris, I'm really happy to have such a good daughter even though she's growing really fast, I meet kids of her age and she's wiser than most of them, excluding a few noble ones, reading from an early age sure makes a difference, really happy she likes it. I spent a few hours talking with your sister. She came home with her clothes a bit tattered, but it seems like she was pretty successful with slime hunting. Ah, I'll check on her, that book. Isn't it the class's book? Mother told me you got yourself a taboo class. I wanted to know more about it and why it's considered bad by the church. I don't know much about it myself, but there's a couple of points that are consistent about their doctrine. Doctrine? I make a confused face as I've never heard of that word. Yes. It's like their teachings, one of them is that committing crimes is a bad thing since it gives disgrace. When one thinks about it though, it is very hard to not get titles that give disgrace since we have to live, and some of us who aren't as blessed survive. A lot of kids like yourself from an early age kill animals, and steal and a lot of other things. It is a pretty brutal world where we eat what we find, especially since most of us peasants would starve otherwise as not everyone earns enough money to have a stable life. Nonetheless, when a person gets an awful amount of disgrace certain classes start appearing. They're not particularly stronger than famed base classes from what I know, but I haven't met anyone that has reached the pinnacle of such a class. Since even the heroes that are summoned already come with famed base classes, they come with classes set for them? Yes, I believe it's part of their deal with the goddess area. From all of them only one gets a unique class hero though, from what I know at least, is that class obtainable without the goddess blessing in other words without being summoned? Yes, though it's extremely rare. There was someone in the tales of Atana book who succeeded in that, a peasant at that. It influenced the nobles back then a lot since they're superior and there hasn't been a single noble reaching such a miraculous class. There's truly a lot I don't know, I smile. Indeed dear, that's why you should read a lot more, read the whole library. Dad laughed at me. The whole library? That sounds like a good challenge. I'll go check on sister for now. All right dear. Dad thought. I hope she didn't take it seriously, not even a bookworm such as myself read the whole library before. I enter the room and close the door slowly. I look to the left where my bed is glued to the wall where I have a window. 
I sit on the bed on the window side since Aurora is resting on the mirror side of the room. I can see the window from the mirror so it feels like I have two of them. I open the book I brought with me. World Class is I. Author, Pope Eric XXV. This is a collection of all the classes the church and other branches have been able to research up to the year 3200 after the system implementation. Firstly an introduction to classes. They are derived between what we consider in our doctrine good and evil, thus fame and disgrace, seeing as the classes from all the summoned people through the years that have gone by after the system was implemented were all fame-based ones but two, that we know of at least. The two disgrace-based classes that were summoned by the goddess area ended up having their users causing a gigantic amount of chaos in the kingdom. The ones having the hero class ended up slaying their own summoned kin as a consequence earning a disgraceful title, Summoned Slayer. Ever since then through history we the church have been persecuting all the users that we find out owning a disgraceful class, including the summoned ones by splitting them among the kingdom. The disgraceful ones end up forced to join the army and the famed ones stay with us to be properly raised. We do not know the reason behind the goddess area summoning such people to the Lumen Kingdom. However, compared to all the good summons that she brings, it is but a minor issue. We can only think of it being a problem with the humans that tarnished the reputation of our esteemed goddess. I believe it could be a restriction from the god of chaos, an evil god that has corrupted the system allowing such classes to existing in the first place. Throughout the whole book. We've written through the years about many classes, however, I can say for certain that not all classes are in this book. Not everyone taught us the information about their class and how they obtained it. We were able to gather as much as we could from all the heroes we raised and the people in our care. We do know three important things. The class system the goddess created consists of three factors. It focuses on reputation and disgrace standards. It focuses on the titles providing a likely class, like how a peasant who has farming titles is likely to be able to get a farmer class. Lastly, we believe it focuses on the overall status someone may have, the higher the better the class may appear. We'll disclosure both types of classes so that we reduce the number of people getting disgraced ones thus increasing the number of famed ones so that the human kingdom becomes stronger. You'll be exiled from the kingdom if you use this information wrongly, no matter how many thousands of years pass. I believe this law will persist. I believe our faith will last as long as the goddess keeps helping us with her visions and heroes. Our kingdom used to be small, but thanks to the goddess's messages, in other words, the visions she grants through our blessed skill oracle, we have been able to survive invasions and also expand our territory slowly. We are the weakest race, but one day we are sure to dominate the world in the name of the goddess Arya. For that reason, we have created this book so that our fellow humans may strive towards the one and only true divine path system. The title expert reader has been received. Seems like I should finish the reader series to boost my intelligence and wisdom. I believe it gives a bit of both. I have way too many problems with my mana being so low, so anything that helps growing it. I'll do it. This is quite the author, he holds a very strong conviction and faith for the human kingdom. I don't know how far it has been since this was written, however, it did happen as he wrote it would, for better or worse. It seems like the world of Adana and Lumberjack books were really old. The church seems to hold a time concept, so they should know what year after the system we are in somehow. This is not enough information to know how old the world is, but at least 3,200 years have passed with certainty. That is, as long as the information isn't false since mother told me that believing in false information would lead for my intelligence to drop, so I should be careful, and think things thoroughly on my own. I believe that the first focus this Eric Pope mentions is right since my one and only choice derived from all the accumulated disgrace I had. Their titles farming and fishing series should have given me the farmer and fishing classes yet I didn't see them in the list. There's a chance that the last focus he mentions is right too, as I had a lot of status for my age. Everything on my status would include the contract I have with Aurora wouldn't it? 
Did the choice of the class got affected by her in some way perhaps? Hard to know and even if I did it's too late now as I've decided to stick with it. I'll keep a secret of everything I do with my class, so that I don't get exiled, seeing as the religion is the same as back then, the laws shouldn't have changed. Witches will most likely all be exiled at some point. I'll grab a chance to talk with Rowan so that he sells my potions secretly, but I'll only make the typical ones. The potions he seems safe. From the list I had, Dark Alchemy, notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Dark Alchemy, weakness potion, it'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep potion, it'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love potion, the first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis potion, it'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison potion, it'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill, it can lead to death. Corruption potion, person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote potion, depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. I check the screen with the potion list. I should focus on sleep paralysis, poison, and antidotes as they have many uses, and I believe adventurers will want to buy them to throw them at foes. If Rowan tells me that any of them is dangerous then I'll use them secretly myself on quests. While sister does the quests slowly and we level up, I'll focus on herb gathering and potion making, along with reading, farming, and selling the goods of everything. When I have money I'll buy mana potions, and eventually equipment and a weapon. I should check for accessories and level up appraisal a lot so it gives me information on good ones. Hum? Welcome back, Iris, she says as she gets up noticing my presence. Hello sister, you were sleeping so I didn't wake you up. That is fine. I was recovering my mana. It's a lot faster if I shut down for a few hours. Oh. A quality of being a grimoire. Uh, I smile. Yes, not everything can be bad about being a weapon. A weapon? An item? A human? Which one are you? A grimoire is a weapon. I was thinking of buying a weapon. But does that mean that I can use you in some way? Use me. She smiles coldly as she thinks about it and then says, status. Status. Level. 2. Experience 100-200. Class. None race. Human. Name. Aurora. 8 years old health, 1000 one thousandths, mana 1040 1050 status points colon 0 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 105 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, skill points, 0 actives, status level 40 D, darkness barrier level 4 F, Piercing Darkness Level 5F, Mana Coat Level 1F, Dark Coat Level 4F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Dark Bind Level 5F Passives, Mana Control Level 20E, Dark Control Level 12F, Monster Detection Level 3F, Unique, Transformation Level 6, Blessed Slash Cursed, Mirror Level 1, Unidentified, Unique Element, Dark, Cursed Soul Bound, 100 Experience, just how many slimes did you kill? I met Elise and another two boys so I joined their party. Oh, that should have made things a bit easier. Yes, you could say that. Your skills have increased a lot too. Monster detection? It detects things around me basically I thought that if the day comes where I can't become powerful like I used to, then at least I'd become useful to you as a weapon. I instantly hug her and pat her hair. I'm sorry that you were reincarnated like that. It's not your fault, it's the goddess Aria's fault, the one who reincarnates humans, the one we should take revenge on. Fighting a god? We almost lose against slimes. I laugh at that silly comment of hers that almost sounded like a declaration, for now, but we'll become stronger, plus I'm a weapon I live forever, unless you're killed, I reply seriously. Unless I'm killed, she replies coldly. I can't promise to go at war against a god, especially since we don't even know if we can reach her. And I'm just a human I might not be able to become strong enough in this life. Don't worry about it. It is my desire to kill as gods like it is my desire to kill the hero and the sage of my past world. I have promised before that I'd stay by your side, 
so at least my company you'll have till I die. I smile kindly yet feeling some sadness. Aurora smiles kindly surprising me upon hearing my words. Sister after a lot of thinking I figured what I want to do next. Let me guess Iris, cut an entire forest? I laugh upon hearing these words cleansing my heart of the sadness instantly. No silly, I mean I might cut some forests as well now that you remind me of it. But I'll be herb gathering mostly and build a small business towards potion making. Potions? Did your class come with an herb skill? Yes, sort of, it's called dark alchemy, so most potions are interesting and also have deadly uses, but there's some that aren't as bad. Oh, interesting. You can't copy my memories anymore right? Sadly no. Then read the first chapter of this book also lend me some mana. Sure. Her hand approaches me injecting me with mana. I hastily shout as she didn't give me time to think. System library. Notice, 600 mana has been deducted. It's done, she removes her hand after giving me a bit more. Thank you like this I'll be able to deliver the book tomorrow. I've been collecting books like this in the library. I even got the title book Thief and another one called Criminal. You're actually evil Iris, she looks at me surprised. I stick my tongue out at her in a childish way then say, it seems that I am, I have too much disgrace at this point. It should suit a class named witch so it should be fine, it was an evil thing back in our old world. Were there witches too? Yes, but not with this class system thing. Plus they'd recite and cast incantations from a grimoire, in here you just use skills, spend mana, things happen a lot easier, and a lot less studying without memorizing spells. Sounds like this world is a lot easier compared to our old one in some aspects. That's correct. She makes an eerie expression as she reminisces herself of the old world letting out an ominous aura. After a while, she finishes reading what I read, and then she says, It seems like the religion of this world isn't as self-centered, they're actually trying to find ways to expand the kingdom and bolstering the human race. In other words, I ask curiously. We can count on their support to protect the kingdom while we get stronger, from your memories a woman called Saintess. An identity that didn't exist in our old world foresaw the kingdom destruction. That's right. I was a baby when that happened. It surprised me and made me wonder how I could stop it, but I couldn't do anything in that body. Yes, but the kingdom hasn't been destroyed, from what I've learned so far from your memories and other adventurers. The north is sealed by very powerful monsters. The east is sealed by a sea where powerful monsters also reside deep down. The West has a race called Gillums living on top of it. They are neutral as long as we don't trespass their territories. The South has a forest where a small river goes through. The one that is west of our home. It goes all the way from west to southeast beyond the southern forest towards the sea at east. That forest is where the Goblin Kingdom forces reside, one of the factions that live to the south. There are other races, so other territories are expected. Aurora you actually gathered a lot of useful information. I'm truly amazed. There are useful books about races, and monsters at the guild. You should copy those at some point and learn about it. Sure. I reply happily. Above the powerful monsters territory there's the demon kingdom. We don't know if there are other demon kingdoms further north of it or in other places. So, what has our kingdom been doing till now? From what I know they have to protect themselves from any sea monsters and pirates from the east, the continuous invasions from the south factions, and any flying monsters that go across the mountains in the west along with many cave monsters in them. Sounds like a stalemate. It was at some point but I believe that depending on the Saintess vision if we manage to defeat the invasion, be them from the north or the south or by ship in the east, or even somehow from the mountains in the west, then we should be able to start expanding further south. If we're lucky and the goblins are the ones invading, then we could occupy their territory. So you want to help humans? I want to help you, a human, and the day you die or are about to die. I'll either live long enough to take my revenge on my past world and the gods or simply allow myself to die with you through our cursed soul bound. I understand, I reply softly yet seriously to match Aurora's mindset. Also I found out that slimes aren't evil. They're actually pretty neutral. What? Really? Yes, it seems like they only act if we attack them which happens a lot, since they are a source of experience. 
or get too close, or even have a higher ranked slime around guiding them. That's interesting. Indeed Iris. There are even a lot of farmers and people who don't do anything, and just ignore the slimes that wander through the territory. This also applies in the Southern Territory. I wonder if it's possible to tame a monster, maybe with a class that specializes in it, or a contract of some sort. If it's identical to our old world, it'd be with an item. We need to learn more about this world. Yes we should. I gave you most of my mana so I'm a shut down again. All right, sister rest well. I pat her hair as she accommodates herself once more. After a while, I go to dinner with my parents where I explain what I want to do and then I go back to read the book. It's great that parents allowed my potion production. Tomorrow Rowan should be coming to discuss terms, confidentiality, and prices. Dad said he'd talk with him, so I can just sell whatever I produce, and don't use, that Rowan is a very careful merchant and he already has regular adventurers who buy all kinds of things from him, even illegal ones. Of course, I did not mention to them all the possible options I could make, aside from sleep, paralysis, poison, and antidote potions. They weren't surprised by those, so my guess is that there are other witches who are making them out there, perhaps even alchemists who've figured out such recipes or herbalists or a different class altogether. There are too many classes, so no point overthinking about it, and worrying about the possible consequences as nothing may happen. And even if it does, my father has a strong bond to someone he works so he could get rid of such issues with little effort, which eased my heart a lot when I heard about it. What matters is that it's viable and thanks to that I'll be able to increase my sale title eventually having money to increase my purchase title. Parents even mentioned that some villages don't have potion shops, so I could make a shop in the future, and say that the potions are given by anonymous potion makers. But that's not the path I wish to take for now at least, so I declined the idea instantly, and I told them I wanted to become a strong magic user. Both of them already knew I'd say something like that, so they didn't protest or oppose it, it was a lost battle the moment they didn't deny my access to become an adventurer. I smile happily reminding myself of the duel with my mother. If anything they support me a lot and that makes me very happy due to that I also do my best to not cause problems to them, even though I'm not really sure what kind of problems I could possibly create. The majority of knowledge I possess is about the system, that there's more than one god, that there's a church with a saintess and a pope, that there are merchants, adventurers, peasants, and nobles. One thing I could try to also learn is about the nobles, since I have this white ring in my hand, there's certainly something about it that I probably should learn at the very least, the customs if I end up becoming one for Alicia. If I do one day become a knight, no matter how I think about it from the definition Aurora gave me, it sounds strange, a witch being a knight. It sounds funny as they normally use melee weapons with or without shields and heavy armor. At least the very few I've seen passing by the village, or even from the carriage that picks father from time to time. I place my adventurer card in Aurora's pocket where she has hers. This way she can update the points on both cards as well as get the money for both. I look at the bag with the soul stones under the bed. I take one of them out of it. I try to put mana into one of them. Nothing happens. I guess they can only be used for equipment crafting. Would be nice if they had more uses. But I'm sure I'll find more interesting things than these things. Not to forget I can just sell them to the guild. I sit on the bed and throw the soul stone to the floor and watch it rolling for a few seconds till it stops. I'll pick it when I wake up tomorrow, system library. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. System library. World of Atana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fishing 1, 2 baking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cooking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 farming 1, 2 lumberjack 1. 2 hunting 1, 2 made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 butler 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 minor 1, 2 tails of Atana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 herbalism 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10 gods of Adana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nobles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 world classes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 Tales of Adana I haven't bothered to read it. Let's see what they're all about. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Tales of Adana I Amidst the darkness there stood a knight drenched in red. In the middle of a mountain of corpses. There she stood silently, as her gaze crossed the battlefield where war had ended. Due to her pride and honor, she'd show no emotion. However, deep inside she was crying. Behind her were armies of thousands who waited silently for her command. This woman was considered a hero due to her achievements in war. She had conquered many battlefields like this one for her king. She'd always do her best to win with the least casualties. Even so, she'd still lose a lot of comrades whom she had bonded with. The woman wore a full red set of armor and a long blue sword with a black scabbard. In the sword, golden small letters could be read. The words Goddess Aria, the sword is said to be handed down in the royal family even to this day to the strongest swordsman in the kingdom. She had asked for the armor to be made in crimson in order to disguise the blood of all the beings she slew. Every time war would end, the words she'd say were. Yet so many had to die again, when will this war ever end? The woman picked the sword from the corpse she had slew last, waved it making the blood fall from its edge and stored it. With the utmost respect, she bowed her head and gave a prayer to Goddess Aria in the name of the dead. She raised her head and turned around as the wind blew the cape she had on. The woman raised her arm in the air, and an echo of victory chants was raised like a turbulent wave of sound shaking the floor. The hero walked through them while her men raised the flags and followed through. Amidst the darkness there stood a knight drenched in red, in the middle of a living army, a sword from Goddess Aria didn't know she summoned things other than humans. It makes me wonder what other things she could possibly summon to this world. She sounds like a very honorable person. One of the heroes that were summoned into this world perhaps. She also sounds very capable leading an army and having so many look up to her. If she was very strong then there's a big chance that she was pretty high level, and with a special sword I wonder what kind of flashy skills she had. Well let's read a bit more and see what else I can find out about these stories. On to the next chapter, Tales of Adana 2. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Tales of Adana 2. In the shadows, a ninja was hidden, waiting for its prey to let its guard down. One of many demon lords was going through this path. The ninja had memorized his daily routine. On that fateful evening, the demon lord walked with his wife and son through the path where the ninja had prepared a trap. When he did, spikes with latent poison and paralysis struck from the floor hitting him along with his family. The demon lord started chanting healing magic when suddenly blood starts dripping out of his throat. The ninja slew the wife's and the son's throat and then with both daggers, he sent their heads flying. Then he went to the demon lord from behind and stabbed his heart killing him. He had received a blessed skill that allowed him to be stealthy as long as the enemy didn't have a high level skill that detected enemies or the use of magic, but even if they did, the skill had to be higher level than his to work. After all the blessings that Goddess Arya gives to those she summons or reincarnates are always powerful or useful, but not once has she given immortality or some blessing that made the individual invincible. The ninja thought of himself as invincible after defeating the demon lord proclaiming himself as the strongest in the world, and so he decided to kill every beast lord and demon lord the world possessed so that humanity could prevail, expand and dominate the world. On his travels, he found a beast lord, and as he had done towards many others, he set a trap with his strongest skills, poison, and paralysis. When the beast lord finally stepped on the trap spikes pierced his legs inflicting him with poison and paralysis and as always the ninja waited a few seconds before moving in and then in a flash he attempted to slash the throat of his prey, however, his arm was caught and broke, ripped apart. He was pushed to the floor and skinned alive. It turned out the beast lord was immune to poison and paralysis. Can't seem to find an author for this book, however. Whoever wrote these tales must have been out of his mind, 
They don't sound like something a kid should read when they're young. Even in a violent world like this on, well, maybe it can't be helped, as it prepares the future generations for the many dangers of the world. Beast lords, demon lords they sound strong. I'm guessing that they're not invincible since he was able to kill one before, but this means there was at least a human reaching the demon kingdom unless he crossed the dangerous area and came here. I'm assuming that they both live longer than humans making them stronger by default. Since we humans receive one stamina per year we're alive if other races are stronger than us they should receive other things. Not only that since they live longer those things will stack further. If that's the case then those who live long will surely find a way to become the strongest as they can stack titles too. Truly troublesome. How could I possibly outgrow them? For now, collecting titles and leveling up. Increasing my knowledge and my skills the best I can, and then I'll hopefully find a way to become truly strong, since what I'm doing now is what they already did, so I'm just catching up with them. I'll still be behind no matter what I do. There must be a way. Somehow. Appraise the leftover skills of the class even if it makes me faint or consume some of my health without killing me, I'll sleep and have a good chance to recover it anyway. Hopefully. It'll even allow me to sleep easier. Notice, leftover mana and 300 health have been deducted. The following day I wake up after a long sleep possibly due to expending all that mana and even some health. I get up and head to the wooden wardrobe where after choosing some clothes I decide to wear, brown pants, and a white shirt with short sleeves. Then I place a pouch around my waist for the herbs that I'll most likely find. Seems like Aurora already left. I look on the room floor. Guess she picked the soul stone as well. I then look at myself in the mirror. I look cute like this. Brown pants will be good for herb gathering. It's easier to wash than dresses since I tend to place my knees on the ground, so parents shouldn't complain too much about cleaning them, as they help each other with chores often mentioning the state of my clothes in particular. I smile at the mirror feeling mischievous about it. Well then let's see where I should start with, status, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, status, level, 2, experience 150 200 fame, 60, disgrace, 5470 class, which, rank 1, experience 250 two thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 480 480, mana, 960 970 status points colon 0 strength, 151, stamina, 48, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 91, wisdom, 93 plus 4 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 3150 titles, Reincarnated plus S, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase E, wisdom F, reader series B, body training A, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon F, cheetah, S, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird F, cooking series, E, slayer series F, sail E, advanced readers, soul bounds, element F, Contracted, Peasant, F, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer D, Skill Mastery F, Tree Chopper E, Tree Types, Tree Series E, Log Maker E, Tree Planter C, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Reader F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 50 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 6 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 2 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 20 E, Sword Mastery Level 10 F, Mana Control Level 20 E, Ice Control Level 11 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 4 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 5 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 1. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 1 Unique, Appraisal Level 42 Cursed, Unidentified Skill Rare Element, Ice Cursed Soulbound Grimo I Rank F, 
20 for 100, s seems like my slime slayer title increased, and so did the kill count and experience I have, sister must be hard working once again, hope she's okay, hopefully not doing quests alone, maybe Elise is with her, I'll chop some more trees so my title improves along with my statuses, and since I've been storing the logs behind the house for the winter, we'll be able to have the house warm. My wisdom is catching up to sisters, I wish the titles would also work for her, but sadly they don't. I let out a sigh and head outside to chop wood. I have enough strength to do this without mana coating the axe, but by using the skill I get to level it up and my mana control tags along. I also get less tired overall. After chopping for a while a sound surges in my mind. Notice, the skill axe art has been acquired. Notice, the skill axe mastery has been acquired. Just like swordsmanship I received both at the same time, and despite this, the swordsmanship skill leveled up faster. Well I also had mother teaching me, so that helped a lot which means that having someone guide us through the mastery of the weapon and the art of wielding it. The experience the skills get must be a lot higher, after all, if they have levels then that's how they should work. I continue my morning by watering the fields and checking the strawberries, eating a few as they've become my favorite fruit. Once I'm done I rest for a while and then spend a bit more time chopping trees than cutting the branches off, turning them into logs storing them along with the rest, for the big trees I further divide them so I can carry lighter pieces at a time. I then collect the seeds and plant them all around. I'm making a wall around our home since the beasts live somewhere in the south. One day when I'm old enough, our little house will be camouflaged by a lot of beautiful tall trees. I remember the lumberjack got a title named Strong when he reached 200 strength which provided him with some fame which in my case might be a tad useless, but perhaps it may give me something else that may be useful. There's a chance that 200 strength isn't the only condition as well. I wonder if there's a meaning to keep receiving disgrace since I'm a witch. Disgrace is all I should need, no? I try to do an evil expression failing miserably then A start laughing childishly at it. I return home and take a bath relaxing my body. Nothing beats the melting in this water, truly the best. This time my body doesn't ache as much. It feels like it'll take a while to get the tree series completed, status, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, status, level, 2, experience 190 200 fame, 60, disgrace, 5470 class, witch, rank 1, experience 290 two thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 530 530, mana, 700 1040 status points colon 0 strength, 158, stamina, 53, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 91, wisdom, 100 plus 4 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 3150 titles, reincarnated plus s, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Begin Our Readers, Purchase E, Wisdom F, Reader Series B, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sale E, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer D, Skill Mastery E, Tree Chopper D, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker D, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Reader F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 1 Actives, Status Level 50 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 2 F Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 20 E, Sword Mastery Level 10 F, Mana Control Level 21 E, Ice Control Level 11 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 4 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 5 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, 
Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 1, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 1 Unique, Appraisal Level 42 Cursed, Unidentified Skill Rare Element, Ice Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 28 100 If there's a strong title, is there a unique one for every 200 of all the different statuses? If there are I'll do my best to collect them all. I wonder what kind of titles could help increasing stamina. As my eyes review the status screen I notice something. Wait, I have a skill point? I take a long look at the titles trying to find the source or, or at least a clue. Could it be skill mastery? I'm not sure how I got this one, but it ranked up. From the name it could be due to skills leveling up, or maybe the number of skills, not sure. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 3. Sister is truly amazing. Time to check class skills. List all of them please. Notice, loading screen with the witch class skills list with the help of appraisal. Witchcraft skill tree, actives, skills that consume mana to be cast. Dark alchemy, magically craft potions with limited effects and that only last for so long. Starts at 10%, 0, 5% per level. Mana shield. 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level. Drain HP, absorbs 1 horsepower per minute from enemies around healing itself, plus 1 per level. Decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle or the area itself, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Curses, it requires casting time, the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time, 0, 25 percent chance of success, 0, 25 percent per level. Delirium, this makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Mute. Makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Blind. Makes it so that the vision for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Deafen. Makes it so that the hearing for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Taste. Makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Smell. Makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Paralysis. Paralyzes a random part of the body. Half a percent chance of success. 0.7 percent per level. Fear. Induces fear towards the target. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Confusion. Causes confusion towards the target. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Rituals. Require spending mana to create a magical circle. Needs tremendous amounts of mana. Can accumulate every day. Memory loss. Makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories. 0.25 percent chance of success. 0.25 percent per level. X. Ritual. Sleep. Makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep. 0.25 percent chance of success. 0.25 percent per level. Snow falling. Due to ice element snow will fall. Everywhere that snows will be RS mana territory. 0. 25 percent chance of success. 0. 25 percent per level. Cursing objects. A random curse will be applied in an object, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Taint, it'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier. Defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier. Detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Passives. Witchcraft. 
increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1% per level, may affect personality. Curses mastery, increases curse chance to activate by 0.25% per level, may affect personality. Rituals mastery, increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25% per level, may affect personality. Dark alchemy mastery, Increases alchemy chance by 0.2% per level, may affect personality. Magic control, increases specified proficiency by 0.25% per level. Magic attack slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic defense slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic knowledge slight boost, increases intelligence by 1 per level. Charm, increases charm by 1. Attracts generally the opposite gender, 1 per level. MP absorption. If damaged by an enemy magical skill heal MP by 0.25% of its total mana cost, 0.25% per level. Fire mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Water mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Earth mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Air mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Nature mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Poison mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Acid mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Ice mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Explosion mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Lightning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Spirit mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Summoning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Light mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Dark mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Time mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Space mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Seems like the information persisted from the appraisal of yesterday. It completed the entire skill list. Thank you both. I want to learn witchcraft passive as it will boost the entire tree. If the max level is 100 it'll be 10% for everything including alchemy. It'll take a while to be useful but will prove to help in the long term. Notice. Skill successfully learned. Status updated. Notice. An extra skill point has been received. Was it from the title since I got a new skill? In that case. I want the curse and ritual mastery. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. Like this, I have what feels like the most important skills. Then when I level up again I'll get ice mastery and start learning curses and rituals. Once I have the ones that interest me the most I'll get the magic boosts and control. They sound useful too. Looking up at the entire list I just wish I could just get everything in one go. I head to my room and dress in the same pants and change into a blue shirt as the other one was too sweaty. I grab a bag and a book and head towards the library to deliver it. Once I do so, I move towards the west path of the village where I go through two guards. Usually, I'd need to show them my adventurer card but since they know me I go through without a problem. The guards rotate through the four entries of the village, north, west, south, east entrances. Luckily I haven't met the guy who annoys my mother with his lame seduction techniques. I'll turn him into a frog someday. I smile in a specific way without noticing. When I arrive at the forest I start looking for the herbs I saw at the library the other time. I put the ones I'll use in a pouch on my hip and the rest in a bag. I start looking for herbs. The guard warns everyone that comes to this forest about two important things. This is the forest where horn rabbits were discovered. They're not far in strength compared to the slimes. The very dangerous ones are the ones with more than one horn. The more they have the higher their threat level will be upon the guild rules. The other thing is that deep down of the forest there are some ruins that adventurers have tried to explore in the past, but they end up mostly dying there. Therefore no one goes there anymore. 
since it is truly dangerous, which makes me wonder what's inside of it. That curiosity is probably what killed the past explorers. I frown not wanting to die this early on. When I insist to get stronger I'll convince her to explore that place with me carefully. My expression changes to a determined one as my curiosity shall be satisfied one day with the proper measurements. I collect my first two herbs and the typical sound and voice pop out in my mind. System. The title Herbs Gathered has been received. System. The title Herbs Types has been received. The more things I do the more titles I get which sounds normal, but I think if I study every class from that Pope's book, I should be able to get myself a lot more titles by thinking what it suit each of the classes. From everything I've read so far from the system library, the hardest ones should be hunting certain animals. I look far away noticing a grey zone beyond the trees. Humans are very lucky having a race on those tall mountains, the golems, that in a way end up protecting themselves thus keeping humans from being invaded too, passively protecting us in a way. Surrounded by a sea, mountains and the north where the red dragon monster lives having to care mostly on one direction the south. Despite being in the middle it feels like the humans are placed in a pretty good spot, easy to defend from the enemies that may want to plunder our lives. Of course that at one day everything could change, like the dragon by some reason changing into a different territory, the golems race dying making the mountain path vulnerable or even the sea becoming a route to some ships deep down of those waters. It supposedly has similar monsters like the Red Dragon in terms of power, perhaps even stronger ones. I've heard that there are pirates and bandit groups out there, beyond the Lumen Kingdom West borders. Apparently exiled criminals over the time created them, leaving them with one of two choices, living overseas or in the south close to the beasts. I wonder if they still keep exiling people. I feel like it only makes it a future burden to the kingdom. They should just accept people as they are, even if they have this or that class. I'm sure they would do their best for the fellow humans. Suddenly as I gather herbs peacefully, a horned rabbit appears in front of me scaring me. Ah, he looks at me surprised while I look at him in equal feelings. We look at each other while I store the herb inside the pouch slowly. It is one horn so it shouldn't be too strong, can it just leave me be, so we don't have to fight? If it comes closer I'll have to defeat him. He opens its little mouth and starts screeching making my ears ringing. What's that noise? I start hearing brush rustling from many sides and realize something is coming. Eventually out of the brushes similar horned rabbits appear surrounding him. Ultimately all looking at me. An invader of their territory. Don't tell me it's a skill that cools its skin. I get up fast and start running to the exit of the forest while looking back from time to time to gauge the gap between us. I see the initial horned rabbit closing and opening his mouth fast like he's chewing something even though he isn't as he sees me giving me the creeps. They chase me while a few screeches, after 5 minutes of running I have around 10 rabbits chasing after me. I hide behind a tree and use a skill called Dark Alchemy. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Dark alchemy, weakness potion, it'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep potion, it'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love potion, the first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis potion, it'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison potion. It'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill that can lead to death. Corruption potion, person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote potion, depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. Paralysis potion fast, I think fast while sweating and nervous as the distance I gained from them was not a long enough one. Paralysis. Herbs required. 1x heartbreak herb, craft 2 with the herbs I have, notice, 100 mana has been deducted, system, the title potion brewer has been received, system, the title potion types has been received, notice, the potions will appear in the user's hand after 200 seconds, I'll have to fight the ones I can meanwhile, I hoped for them to be instantly, but it seems like that's expecting too much. 
As the group approaches, I look at it from behind the tree and use a large mana ice spine to cover the whole group system. The title element has been received. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. They let out noises as the ice damaged them and keeps on doing so by burning them with its coldness from below. All points on wisdom please. System. The title status mastery has been received. Notice, points successfully spent, status updated. Now that they're all frozen to the neck since they're very small if it was a human they'd be frozen to the knees. I look for a branch and upon taking one from the closest tree by breaking it from a bigger branch, I run and grab it tightly in their direction while mana coating it. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. I smile understanding that sister must be fighting either alone or together with Elise. Most likely on the east side beyond the village, giving me some extra courage for what's to come. As I approach I notice them opening their mouths and channeling mana, I run as fast as I can closing the distance before they finish, and slash widely at five of their heads cutting them gracefully. Yes, I did it. With the tension and blood going to my head making my adrenaline pump me up, and then voice repeats inside my mind. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. System, the title beast slayer has been received. System. The title Horned Rabbit Slayer has been received. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a Horned Rabbit. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a Horned Rabbit. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a Horned Rabbit. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a Horned Rabbit. I quickly turn as fast as I can to use the branch with the leftover mana on the rest of them and as I do, I get blasted 10 meters away by two fireballs, a water ball, and what looks like an air ball. The leftover fireball is directed towards the ice under them burning them in succession as it wasn't strong enough to melt the amount of ice I created. Notice, 200 health has been deducted. Ah, I shout in pain while falling on the floor from the blast harshly, rolling through the ground making two entire turns. Notice, 20 health has been deducted. As I start closing my eyes from the pain I hear another screech keeping me awake. I need to get up. I can't fall here. The moment I get up I walk towards a near tree as I hear the rabbits suffering from the leftover ice that's barely holding them and the fire burning their white and brown furs. I see mana enveloping my right hand and I turn the palm of it upwards and one potion appears on it. It looks brownish inside a transparent small flask. It looks made of glass. I poke it softly with my left hand index finger and then with the nail making a little clack sound. This is definitely glass, having an idea. I turn around to the rabbits throwing it at them. The flask hits the floor close to the fire breaking, and then a liquid comes out of it that starts spreading a cloud becoming bigger as the liquid gets burned by the fire. System. The title potion administered has been received. I laugh at the title name while enduring the pain from my body making it a bit more relaxed. This is an interesting usage, not only it helps the fire spread but it'll also paralyze them as they burn. I sit next to the tree resting recovering my breath. I stare at them as I watch them catching fire onto each other, and as it is propagating becoming stronger, it originated a roasted smell of burnt meat which approaches my nose slowly. The initial rabbit looking at me screeches angrily as it's dying trying to call for help from more of his horned rabbit friends, but unfortunately for him, none came, so he along with the rest would scream in agony and pain as the fire took over their lives. I rest for 30 minutes as they die in the first three, notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit, notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. The last one to die was the one who gave the most experience which coincidentally was the one who initiated everything. In a way, if it wasn't for him his friends and perhaps the family wouldn't have died. It's a good thing the water ball negated some of the damage from the fireballs and the air ball pushed me away from them creating a small safe distance.
Thanks to this I didn't end up burning like they did, even though I could use my eyes to negate the burning so I'd be safe, just with worse injuries. Due to the paralysis potion, they couldn't channel any more mana, so no more skills came out. Now I understand why the ninja from the Tales of Atana focused on using it along with poison. One will kill slowly while the other paralyzes the opponent making them unable to do anything but dying. Luckily for me, I can produce such potions, so in the future, I'll be sure to use them in times of need. I get up and collect the soul stones from the roasted horn bunnies as well as their horns. Sadly the fur got burnt so I can't do much about it. Notice. The skill corpse dismantler has been acquired. Somehow it sounds like a skiller which would have. I laugh lightly at my own silly thoughts. I wonder what kind of skill it is. Status. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 3. Experience 220. 300 fame. 70. Disgrace. 5470 class. Witch. Rank 1. Experience 522 thousandths race human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 360 530, mana, 281,140 status points colon 1 strength, 160, stamina, 53, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 93, wisdom, 109 plus 5 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 3160 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, Slayer Series F, Sale E, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer D, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper D, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker D, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered F, Herbs Types F, Potion Brewer F, Potion Types F, Status Mastery F, Beast Slayer F, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administer Def. Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 50D, System Library Level 50D, Mana Coat Level 7F, Mana Wave Level 1F, I Spine Level 4F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10F, Swordsmanship Level 20E. Sword Mastery Level 10F, Mana Control Level 21E, Ice Control Level 12F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 5F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 6F, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 3, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 2. Witchcraft Level 2, Curses Mastery Level 1, Rituals Mastery Level 1, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 39100, Seems like Status Mastery most likely gave me a free point, Spend it in Wisdom, Notice, Point Successfully Spent, Status Updated, Seems to be a Passive Skill, Meaning the more parts I collect the higher it'll increase at some point. I'm assuming the efficiency of doing so will cause an improvement. I look at the now hornless roasted rabbits. I coat my fingers with some mana and cut a part of its meat and taste it. Whoa, it almost tastes like a rabbit which makes me think that since fishes level up and possibly change, then maybe these would be the evolution of normal rabbits at a given time. We peasants eat beast and the monster meat since they're practically animals. It's a lot cheaper than normal meat but also less delicious than it. However, this one is pretty good. Mother usually makes it a stew that lasts longer not using many parts of the animal. It'd be a waste to leave all these rabbits here, but sadly can't carry them in the bags I brought. 
I store the ten soul stones I collected earlier together with the herbs in a bag, and resume my search for more herbs. Further told me Rowan should pass home today, so I'll gather what I can and head back there soon. My health and mana are low so I won't take unnecessary risks. After collecting a few more I start heading home. I was able to gather in total 12 herbs while I lost one that didn't become a potion since the dark alchemy is low level, and another did which I administrated to those rabbits. I laugh reminding myself about the title as I use the word from it. I get home safely and upon entering it, I notice two men talking on the sofa. They look at me and my ragged burnt clothes from the fireball impact. I head to my room and change into something else then return with the bag of the herbs I intend to sell. Hello, Dad, and Rowan I assume? Hi, daughter, Dad smiles happily from seeing me with a bag, and also without the burnt clothes. Hello, yes, that's me. Missy I believe you're one of the twins. Iris right? Yes. This bag has things that I'd like to sell in addition to the strawberries field. What things? Upon hearing his question I give him the bag which he then opens and starts looking at its contents. Item inspection, I see the blue mana being used by Rowan as he sees the herbs. I wonder what that skill does. These herbs are pretty nice. I can sell them to alchemists, herbalists, apprentices, and even adventurers. He smiles happily. He looks at me and notices the confusion in my face and says, The skill I just used is something that comes with the merchant class. It allows us to see the name and effect of the item. I guess it's like appraisal. I grab one of the herbs and appraise it. Notice, 150 mana has been deducted. Safi herb aromatic uses can craft perfumes. Medicinal uses can heal belly aches. Rank D material. I voice out the appraisal information. Safi herb aromatic uses can craft perfumes. Medicinal uses can heal belly aches. Rank D material. Upon hearing my words, Rowan's face becomes dumbfounded. How in the world do you know its rank? Don't tell me you have the merchant class and the evolution of my skill. I have a wizard class and a skill similar to item inspection. Upon hearing my words confusion spread through his face. What's the name of the skill? I look at dad. And he nods in agreement trusting Rowan. It's called appraisal a unique skill. A unique skill? He shouts so loud my ears start ringing. Ah, yes. So the difference between our skills is the rank information. What other things have you tried to use that skill in Iris? I've used it in a fish. I found out the fish was level 1, he had health, mana and was rank F. He grips his hands into each other and then places his head on top of them while looking serious. That's abnormal. My skill cannot inspect living beings. He says while looking at me. Really? I thought it was normal, I reply sincerely. It seems like the unique grade really is superior. Have you tried to appraise a human before? I haven't tried. And this skill is troublesome it costs too much mana to use every time, compared to my normal skills. There was one time that it consumed 500 mana in one go. Whoa. They replied in unison. Neither of us have any unique skills dear, is that the only one of that grade you own? Yes, father. Your daughter has truly been blessed. I wish I had a skill like that. It'd make my merchant life a bit easier. He starts laughing. I smile at Rowan feeling a little sorry for him. Iris you should totally marry my son Joan. In the future. Upon hearing his words my cheeks got rosy not expecting such a proposal. He'll have to go through me first. Dad shouts then they laugh together. Anyway, Missy is there any hub that you wish to keep? Your dad told me you were learning alchemy. I already took out the ones I'll be using. In fact. Wait here a moment please. I head to the room and take out the four herbs I stored in my pouch. Dark alchemy. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Dark alchemy. Weakness potion. It'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep potion. It'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love potion. The first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis potion. It'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison potion. It'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill that can lead to death. Corruption potion. Person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote potion. 
depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. I wish to make two paralysis potions and two antidote potions for paralysis. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, the potions will appear in the user's hand after 400 seconds. I return to them. Welcome back Iris, I hear a familiar voice. I turn to the right towards the door and see someone that looks like myself. Hello sister. How was the quest? Oh. They truly do look alike if it wasn't for the eye color difference I wouldn't have guessed it. I haven't seen many twins before but from the ones I saw. The two of you are the most identical pair. I smile and then say. This is my sister Aurora. And this is Rowan a merchant friend of dad. I understand. By the way. We have a new quest to the south. What's this talk about quests? He looks at Luke confused. We're both adventurers, I clarify it to him. What do we need to do? Goblin hunting in the south forest. All right, we'll do it tomorrow then. I'm completely out of mana. She passes behind me and whispers, good job on the horned rabbits. It surprised me when I saw the notices from my status skill. Upon hearing those words I smile happily. Thank you. Sister, have a good rest. Your daughters are amazing Luke, he said surprised in a light tone. They've been trained since they were seven years old by me and Rosalyn, swordsmanship and magic. Would your wife be interested in giving swordsmanship classes to my son? I'll pay for them. Now that he is in a good age and lacks some discipline it would be great. I can talk with her about it. She loves teaching, so should be happy about it. I can even tell him to come to these plains every morning to save some time from Rosalyn, plus he'd walk more that way to exercise further. That sounds perfect. I'll tell her to pass by your home. When she decides about it Rowan, he smiles from hearing those words. I'll be waiting. My son sure could use some vigorous training, see if he'd become as educated as your daughter Iris, he returns his eyes to me. How would you like to handle the field goods? I saw that you have seven different products in there and strawberries being the majority. Yes, I really like them. And you can buy all of them then resell them as you see fit. In that case, I'll take 90% of their value and you can have a 10% of the total value for yourself. What? That's so greedy. Rowan and Dad held their serious expressions and then started laughing not being able to hold it anymore. It was a joke Missy. I'll take a 10% commission and drop the money once a week on Sunday mornings. Sure, I reply happily. That's a deal then. I also sell equipment that you may find in your quests like weapons armor, accessories, and some corpse loots if you find anything interesting of the sort. Corpse loot, I think I have something like that. I head back to the room pick the 10 horns from the rabbits and return. Would these do? His eyes sparkle as he sees the materials. Certainly will. I'm surprised you have this many with you. The guild usually buys them too, even though they take a bigger commission. Same for the soul stones. I see. Sadly I need them as currency to rank up my card. That's fine. They still pay you for it. Plus having a good rank will open doors through the kingdom. Just having that card already makes it easier to travel, and you'll be able to try harder quests. But go about it slowly. It is a dangerous profession. I understand. Thank you. I smile kindly at him. Mana starts enveloping my hands, I turn the palm upwards. Two potions emerged from it, a brown and a white one. That is, item inspection. Potions I reply a paralysis and an antidote for it. Those would fetch a good price in the market if you're interested in selling them. I extend them to him. I'll take them gladly, he saves the potions, in a very small bag that he takes from his coat. He then starts placing everything I gave him into that tiny bag. I make a very dumbfounded expression and say, how does everything fit in there? They start laughing and then dad says, it's a magic bag it stores in a small dimension. The people from the magic institute call it pocket dimension for being very small. Small or not it can fit a lot of things inside. Rowan added then started smiling as he finished saving the things. It also makes carrying things super easier. It can carry anything. I want one too. Then you better sell a lot of things. The higher their rank the more expensive they are. Some blacksmiths make them. However, buying them from merchants is usually cheaper. I'll have to pay a visit to a blacksmith to see what kind of magic bag they can make. How much would they cost? 
The one I have is a rank D it can store 300 items, it's around 100 items per rank. It costs to make around 1 gold coin. 300 sounds enough, but 1 gold coin is around 100 silver coins Oregon 10000 copper coins. It'll take a long while to get one of that rank but maybe a lower graded one. I don't recommend one with a lower grade, it'll end up filling easily, and you'll regret not having bought a more expensive one later. Ah, I guess I'll save money slowly. Rowan laughed, slowly but surely you'll end up getting enough if you produce enough potions then it surely won't be as long as you may think. After all, alchemy is very profitable since not many people possess such knowledge. I understand. I'll do my best. To be honest, you being a wizard with an alchemist and appraisal skills already makes you pretty exceptional, so in the future, you'll surely become richer. Rowan smiles while imagining what he could do with such skills if he was in my shoes. Rowan heads to the door that leads outside the house and says, I'll be taking my leave now, in most likely five days. I'll let you know how much I made. I'll also collect the goods outside that I inspect being worthy. Sure. I smile happily, he then leaves closing the door softly. Well, that sure was fun. It sure was dad. You did a good job at hiding your real class, the unique skill you could have hidden it as well, but it's not a big problem. Dad looks at me with a serious expression, so I improve. All right, Rosalind should be home soon, I'll prepare the dinner meanwhile would you like to join me in cooking? Of course. We smile at each other. Earlier the day at the White Rose family dojo. The butler knocks twice on the door then opens it, and approaches Alicia's mother, bows in respect, and then speaks. I have a report to make my lady. Tell me, Robert. She places some honey and takes a sip of the lemon tea in front of her. A maid would usually do it. But due to her defined tastes which needs a lot of trial and error for the perfect sweetness, it had become like a habit for her. At once. I could not find Lady Iris in any of the noble families of the kingdom. Furthermore I did encounter her home. Oh? She circulates the spoon mixing the honey with the hot tea that was brought not that long ago. Right, she's from Astia village. In the outskirts to the southeast. So a true peasant that is superb etiquette, very young age, rare blonde hair, exquisite green eyes, and talented enough to join the adventurers guild. That is so my lady. I've had my network procure information on her parents, and it seems like her father works in a potion shop for an alchemist, but from time to time he goes on trips to the kingdom capital, inside the royal family mansion and sometimes the castle. The royal family? Why would a peasant be able to go there? She makes a slightly shocked expression as she hides it behind a yellow fan that she picks from the table opening it gently. Unfortunately information inside the royal family is off bounds even to myself. Well that is natural after all. It is protected by the royal guards. She closes the fan regaining her composure, and then taking a sip of the tea. As for her mother, she always stays behind to care for her daughters while also working in the potion shop. From the information I've gathered they're both adventurers, and they're also twins. The other one called Aurora didn't have much of an appearance in the early years due to long-term sickness, almost dying multiple times. What about that other sister is she useful in any way? She smiled while looking at the tea as she reached the desired sweetness of it. From the report I received she's called Aurora and his blue eyes, the assassin that saw her had cold feet, as she felt nominous aura in one of the walks she had with her sister in the village. Blue eyes? Didn't Alicia say Iris had green eyes? Yes, apparently her father has brown hair and eyes, and the mother has brown eyes with blonde hair, so at least the daughters took the hair after her as for the eyes. That's very strange, for both of them to have different eye colors. Since they're twins the mother didn't cheat. Even if she did it it'd be with only one man. But even if she did the man couldn't possibly have blue and green eyes at the same time. How odd. It is as my lady says. I believe it's just an exception to the lineage rule. Could be. But more importantly, what kind of aura did an assassin that is used to killing without blinking felt exactly from this sickly aurora? The word she used was. Death. She further described it as it felt like a monster lived inside an innocent young girl. Call that assassin here. She ordered coldly as she felt like an assassin working for this noble family being afraid of a child was a mockery. 
and could bring shame to the family whose prestige is immense. Excuse my loud voice my lady, Robert filled his lungs then shouted, Raven. His voice reverberated throughout the entire mansion eventually reaching the desired location. Shortly after a girl dressed in black with a mask appeared on the wooden floor of the dojo while kneeling. Girl. Alicia's mother lets out her bloodlust, shaking the table and the things around making the assassin gulp, while everyone shook from the pressure of the skill. Moments later she stops and says, comparing me to the girl you saw with blue eyes which is worse. Be honest Raven, there are no secrets towards the mistress and the lord. I understand leader, and my lady I am sorry to say, but, she looks at her in the eyes and speaks, that girl's aura was truly ominous. It truly felt like all the times I almost died during my missions, upon hearing that the woman took another sip and then smiled faintly. Mistress Aura is more like a fighting spirit that makes one show just how strong one is, clarifying the gap two people might have, Alfred who was quiet during the whole conversation, and has killed more than 100 humans during his lifetime spoke, more like this? He got up from the table and unsheathed his blue sword touching the tip on the ground releasing his killing intent, overwhelming those around him. Briefly afterward he stopped, and asked, So, it's fiercer than my lady's aura, however, I do not feel the ominous feeling in it, but it is of the same intensity. Alfred let out a small laugh and said, If that's right then Alicia choose the wrong twin. Shall I eliminate her my lord? Raven asked coldly as it sounded like the girl had become a target. I'll respect the successor choice, and since that girl is Iris's sister, one of the five white ring bearers, it wouldn't make sense. True, it'll be best to have someone with potential backing our young lady. Robert added while bowing as deep inside he didn't want to see the little lady friend sad. I'm even more intrigued in meeting them now, say what are their parents' names, Robert, the father is named Luke and the mother is named Rosalyn. Call Alicia it's training time, Alfred ordered. Then he looked at Raven, you're dismissed, my lord. They said in unison and left together. As soon as the door closed behind them the mistress looked at Alfred and said, what did you think of her words, my love, didn't look like she was lying, but for a child to have such a weird aura? especially being sick since her first years it doesn't add up. After thinking for a while he added, is it one of those, one in a million cases, where the goddess blesses one with such powers, that the body can't keep up thus being sick their entire lives? That'd be plausible Alfred, think there's a chance she has more potential than any of the nobles? I think it's possible especially with a weakly sick body like that. In the end, Every strong person at some point will face each other in the annual tournament, including Alicia's friend. He smiles eagerly to see what kind of talent do the twins have. I'm here father, were you talking about Tyris? Yes. It seems like she has an interesting twin sister. Iris has? I don't remember her having a sister though I do miss her. Hope she's doing well, from the looks of it. It seems like parents have been investigating their family most likely due to my choice on giving her the ring. I didn't know about her sister, I only spent so much time with her. Alicia replies calmly to not trigger any problem as her parents have too much influence and can be pretty dangerous to others. I'm thinking of meeting them soon. Would you like to tag along? Upon hearing that, Alicia's eyes sparkled while smiling, but then she remembered it was her mother who from the two was the nastiest. As such she replied like she didn't care hiding her emotions. Is there a need? Upon receiving a question contrary to her expectations she replied to Alicia, Very well, I'll send them an invitation or even a letter instead. Alicia, Alfred threw her a real sword which she caught in the air. Let's head to the dojo to resume your training. Yes, father. They headed to the dojo for yet another dose of torturous training that Alicia at this point was used to receiving almost daily. Their four seasons each lasting 90 days, their order is flowering, sun, decaying, and moon. On the following day, on the day 25th of the sun season, Iris wakes up early and does some lumberjacking work for her titles while Aurora waters the fields to rush the chores. Then she showers and changes into easy to move clothing. This is the new quest Leon or gave me, Aurora shows the paper to me. Quest rank, 
F reports of goblins being sighted have been received. They're located south of the Astia village. You'll be rewarded 4 points and 20 copper per goblin guild. The pay seems a lot better, and are goblins the green big-nosed creatures with strange faces like they're too old for their actual appearance? Yes, and usually also smaller than humans. She replies with a cold voice. What's wrong? I asked her confused about her cold tone. Just wondering if you'll be able to kill any. Why wouldn't I? Would you kill a human iris? I, if it was to protect you or my parents I think I would. Goblins have emotions even some monsters too. Honestly I believe even slimes do. After all, no one wants to die. Ah. She thinks my kind heart will get in the way. I'll do my best sister to support you. Aurora looks attentively at me. You'll have to prove that to me. She replies expressionlessly. I make a sad face. I've been trying hard you know, compared to the life I had before this world is a lot different. I shout my feelings out, is it? Nothing changed. Truly, humans continue greedy. They continue poor. They continue starving and dying. The social ranks remain. You continue powerless. It's truly the same dear Iris. If anything you're worse now that you're not a noble from a high-ranking house. I, no, you're right, I decided to become stronger so I can't be feeling down for something like that. Since it's the truth it's up to me to change it when the time comes I'll do what I must. I grip my hands behind my back nervously. Good, let's go. Yes, I shout with a bit of confidence boosting my own mood while releasing my hands from one another, and then picking a bag which contains, a bottle of water, and some bread, which I remove a piece that I eat while we walk to the southern forest. On our way there we talk a bit. I'm surprised you killed so many rabbits in one go, were they weak? Not at all, to be honest, I wasn't far from dying, but luckily I crafted a paralysis potion that mixed with the fire of one of the creatures, it allowed me to strive at the end. I see, I'm glad you didn't die, Aurora said with a faint smile, making me happy completely removing the mood I felt earlier, even though deep inside I know she was just worried about me. It's not a bad thing being able to get experience no matter where we are, we can even join different parties and get double the experience. Quite the cheat. True, it does make a difference. What's our contract counter like? Hum. Let me check, status. We look at the screen together as we walk since it stays in front of me as I move. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 3. Experience 220 300 fame, 70. Disgrace, 5470 class, which, rank 1, experience 522 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 530 slash 530, mana, 1200 1210 status points colon 0 strength, 162, stamina, 53, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 93, wisdom, 116 plus 5 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 3160 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom f, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, Intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon F, cheetah, S, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird F, cooking series, E, slayer series F, sail E, advanced readers, soul bounds, element F, contracteds, peasant, F, class C, monster slayer F, slime slayer D, skill mastery D, tree chopper C, tree types, tree series D, log maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered D, Herbs Types B, Potion Brewer Ref, Potion Type C, Status Mastery F, Beast Slayer F, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administer F. Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 50 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F. Mana Wave Level 1F, Eye Spine Level 4F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10F, 
Swordsmanship Level 20E, Sword Mastery Level 10F, Mana Control Level 21E, Ice Control Level 12F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 5F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 6F, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 1, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 1, Witchcraft Level 1, Curses Mastery Level 1, Rituals Mastery Level 1, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 39 100, we're currently at 39 out of 100, I wonder what'll happen to you once we reach 100, if anything happens, ah, you're right Aurora, but I do hope something does happen, after all, without the title system affecting your statuses, it would be necessary for you to become stronger somehow, in that book you read, it says the system is balanced, so we can only hope it'll be, we reach the forest entrance and a wooden signal with the word warning can be spotted, well this is it, let's go Aurora, as we start to explore the forest by going in the middle of two big trees I tell sister, seems like last night mother decided to accept to train Joe and the merchant's son, that's good, she asks without knowing what to say about it, mother loves teaching so she should be happy, perhaps she can get a lot of students, and in a way, she'd also earn some extra money from doing so, wouldn't that make our planes rather loud? Aurora questions me as she's grown used to having her home quiet. Don't think they'd have much time talking being trained round our mother. You suffered a lot for that one year. She says while looking around in search of green creatures. True, but it was worth it since it allowed me to get stronger and more proficient with the sword. After we walk inside the forest for a while we start hearing noises coming from the right side. Sounds? Animals? We sneak towards the voice source on the side closer to the bushes behind some trees so that we're not seen easily. Those are? Let's try to appraise the green one on the left. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Level 1 goblin is a green creature agile and generally dumb. Despite the low intelligence it learns very fast by doing mistakes. Higher reproduction rate. So those are the goblins. How about that big one on the other side? Appraise it please. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Level 5 orca brown creature slow, not very smart, but very strong in lots of stamina. Medium reproduction rate. I whisper the information from the appraisal to Aurora. She whispers back, that's too many, we should take the green ones first, and then we can slowly fight the big ones or wait for them to reduce their numbers. 10 goblins and 4 orcs. They're in total disadvantage there. I get up behind the tree and look around so that we're not attacked from behind or the flanks noticing something. I lightly pat Aurora's shoulder and point at the right side. Slimes? She asks quietly while looking back at the goblins fight. I think of a funny plan and tell her about it. Aurora smiles agreeing to it and goes into action. I see her climbing the slope of dirt, and then while on top of it Aurora starts yelling at them. Hey you stupid monsters ugly creatures. The monsters who were fighting each other, stop momentarily to look at her dumbfounded, and then at each other confused on what to do, and then a few of them start chasing after her. She runs towards some bushes jumping into them and as she falls from the small cliff, Aurora transforms into a grimo eye floating the rest of the way above the slimes who ignore her. She then transforms back and waits for the creatures that were chasing her to sight her. Four goblins jump over the bushes as she did falling on two of the four clear slimes that were casually wandering there. Noticing this the other two slimes start helping the slimes that got some prey. After all, free food came falling from the sky. The goblins start screaming while piercing the slimes with their daggers dealing barely any damage to them. As they don't know how to use mana coating neither have magical skills due to being very low level. One of them uses the skill screech alerting the ones near the orcs making two more leave the orcs to help them. Noticing this I I spined both of them so that Aurora doesn't get outnumbered ruining our little strategy. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. I tend to play around with my ice magic, and lately, I've been practicing something from time to time, at least. 
like parents taught me imagination is where every masterpiece starts. It is the absolute key to mastering the usage of mana. I extend my hands forwards and pour a great amount of energy, successfully creating an ice sword which once formed I grab it tightly, feeling its coldness from the handle. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Notice, the skill ice sword has been acquired. It actually became a skill. The rare ice element sure is interesting. I smile as I run at the frozen on the ground goblins, who are looking at me while attempting to move their bare feet, which must be hurting inside the ice. On top of having the ice element in my weapon naturally formed, I further enhance it by mana coating the ice sword, making it shine in a beautiful white. Notice, 150 mana has been deducted. I start running while wielding the sword towards the goblins I froze on the ground and then as I approach the closest one, the goblin looks at me half angry, half scared, and tries to stab me with the dagger that he was hiding behind him, thinking that I didn't notice him running with it. I parry it without much trouble forcing it to fly away landing on the ground out of reach for both of them, and then I stab him with my sword in the middle of his chest as it has a long enough reach without allowing him to grab me. He screams of pain and starts crying, as a certain type of blood pours out from the wound I made while the goblin grabs my sword with both hands. The ice starts being tainted by a green liquid from his palms while burning them. I look at him who starts crying in front of me desperately, and as I'm about to regret hurting it mother words that she'd repeat over and over again during my training came to mind, never hesitate in a battle it could cost your life. Almost as if controlled by a cold side of mine that I didn't know existed. I pull the sword out and slash him peerlessly, in a beautiful diagonal slash from his belly all the way towards the right shoulder, and then I kick him making the goblin fall on the one behind him who is also still frozen on the ground and making loud sounds at me. I run through the left flank, as the right side could make me fall on the small cliff, beyond the bushes towards the other goblins and slimes. I slash from left to right at the goblin who grabbed his friend, and also the one I kicked, sending their head flying towards the slimes, and green blood spat upwards eventually falling on their bodies and on the ground. System. The title Goblin Slayer has been received. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. One of the heads rolls down hitting the edge of the bushes then falling in the middle of the two goblins below on one of their hands, they who were already scared from being trapped inside the slimes, as such it caused them to panic more screaming. An ominous aura then started spreading from Aurora, as it gave her delight and excitement for seeing that Iris surpassed the first phase of becoming a real killer. I look at my left and see four goblins mostly evading the attacks of the four orcs, and then look at the right side watching the goblins struggling and screaming at the slimes who devour them slowly. My green eyes then match the blue eyes of my sister for a moment, feeling the eerie presence that was coming from her. How I love those cold eyes of yours, my little witch, Aurora coated her hands with a dark aura and rushed at the goblins. Meanwhile, I turned my back on her and headed towards the other group. As I started approaching them a voice pops into my mind, notice, the skill brainwash resistance has been acquired, almost as if waking up from a temporary trance my full senses return to me, brainwash resistance, what's that, does it wash my brain, was it dirty, what, I'm so confused, I see a goblin rushing at me, and I parry his dagger with my ice sword making it fall from his hands on the ground. Then I slash at his hip which he dodges to the side. These creatures are very fast. I use the skill I spined while holding my sword towards him. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 4. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Might as well grab this chance to spend all my points in wisdom. Notice, points successfully spent status updated, he shouts in pain while looking at his cold feet, they seem pretty susceptible to my ice element at least, I'm surprised I haven't seen them using any element of magic, is it due to their level being low? An orc smacks him with his club from behind as I'm lost in thought throwing him flying at me, without time for me to do anything, 
he gets impaled on my sword falling on top of me injuring me, and making me fall in progression due to the brute force the orc used. Notice, 20 health has been deducted, his mouth opens and blood starts falling on my face. I push him to the side as I turn my face to avoid the blood falling on my eyes. Notice, 20 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. What a crazy orc, that hurt. If it wasn't for my stamina I'd be feeling a lot more pain. Seems like Aurora fighting pretty hard too. I get up and realize that my ice sword stopped glowing. I feel my senses dissipating again while I see the earlier orc running at us. I get up as fast as I can while freezing the ground below his feet making him slip while I spinding his other foot. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. He slips forcing his other leg to be stuck in the ice, breaking its bone which makes it go out of his knee partially penetrating the meat. A loud scream is followed caused by pain echoing throughout the forest. A goblin grabs the chance and stabs the orc in the throat making red blood pour out as he laughs wickedly. The same creature is then blown towards me, by a different orc who didn't miss the chance of free hitting, and taking revenge on his fallen companion. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from an orc system. The title orc slayer has been received. While he's flying from the blow, I create a 10 cm thin and pointy icicle in the air while dodging to the side, which the goblin sees appearing in front of him. He then pierces it in the middle of his eyes. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, the skill icicle has been acquired. The green creature lets out a small moan and falls on the ground hitting it with the icicle piercing the brain further. Notice. 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. I ice bind the leftover two goblins minimally to take a share of experience. As I watch the three orcs kill them mercilessly by smacking them with their wooden clubs, while I let out a cold smile. Notice, 40 mana has been deducted. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. They look at me and start running at me. I run towards Aurora jumping over the bushes stepping on a goblin head as a footstep, and falling forward which my sister grabs me so I don't get hurt. The goblin shouts at me for stepping on him while the slime damages him and then three orcs in succession fall off on him, on top of each other making an orc pile with the poor goblin at the very bottom dying squashed. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin, what an amusing way to die. I laugh in a weird way that surprises Aurora, and then I say, with this all the filthy goblins are gone. I raise my hand and start creating a really big icicle 4 meters above them. Then I let it fall mercilessly before they have a chance to get up. Notice, 350 mana and 300 health have been deducted. I return to my senses and watch a large icicle falling from the sky. The icicle pierces them from their back to their belly all the way to the ground together with a slime that is glued to one of them. Notice, 60 experience has been rewarded from an orc. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from an orc. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 5. Notice, 60 experience has been rewarded from an orc. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Whoa sister, that was amazing. I knew the ice element truly matched you. She says while looking at me which I'm dumbfounded as to what just happened and then Aurora moves with her hands clad in a dark aura destroying the leftover two slimes. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. All points on my wisdom please, I say while breathing heavily from all the running, and usage of magic while feeling a headache. Notice, points successfully spent. Status updated. Status please. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 5. Experience 100 500 fame, 130. Disgrace, 5470 class, which, rank 1. Experience 1100 2000th race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 210 540, mana, 41,360 status points colon 0 strength, 162, stamina, 
54, Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 95, Wisdom, 130 plus 6 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 3160 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Health, Beginner Readers, Purchase E, Wisdom D, Reader Series B, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sale E, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element F, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class C, Monster Slayer F, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered D, Herbs Types B, Potion Brewer Ref, Potion Type C, Status Mastery F, Beast Slayer F, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 2 Actives, Status Level 50 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 5 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 3 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 21 E, Sword Mastery Level 12 F, Mana Control Level 22 E, Ice Control Level 14 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 6 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 7 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 6 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 6, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 3, Witchcraft Level 3, Curses Mastery Level 1, Rituals Mastery Level 1, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 57 100, S Aurora I'm lacking memories of certain parts of these fights. What is brainwashing? I received a brainwashing resistance passive skill. She looks at me with an unfamiliar expression. Brainwashing in our old world used to be a type of curse belonging to those who practiced witchcraft. As for its effects they're numerous like changing the person memories or emotions or even personality. I have a level 6 resistance to it, would that explain such attempts? I did notice you weren't acting like yourself like two times I think, even though I felt like you had accepted how things truly are and simply accepted your inner killer side. There are two or maybe three memories that feel like vivid dreams, I don't think I lost any that I know of and despite calling them dreams I do understand that it was no such thing. I haven't seen anyone around us that could cause a skill on you. From the behavior of the beasts they look kind of dumb to do that. Perhaps the high level monster could have something like that. But since it happened before he arrived that should not be the case. End of block 1.